Chapter 1201, Future Sister-in-Law While Lin Qiao was talking to the two kids in the room, Lin Qiu and Kulilai were in Lin Jing's place, talking to her. Their topic was also about those underground creatures. Lin Qiu sat on the couch and said, We saw those multiple-eyed creatures the first. A dark smoke came out together with them and killed the surrounding plants and animals. The dead animals soon rotted. Those multiple-eyed creatures seemed to like to eat rotten corpses. Both Kulilai and Lin Jing were looking at him with their shoulders shrinking. They didn't even want to imagine that kind of a creature. All right, all right. Stop talking about those multiple-eyed creatures. You described so detailedly that my head are full of those creatures now. Kulilai suddenly raised a hand to put Lin Qiu away, then turned her face and complained. Lin Qiu mildly smiled and said, You two asked me first. But, you didn't need to give us so many details. Kulilai turned back and pouted. Lin Jing smiled and said to her, Qiu can be a little too serious sometimes. She then said to Lin Qiu, didn't you say that you've seen some other creatures? What are they? Are they all monsters? Can they be mutated animals? Lin Qiu shook his head and said, I don't think they used to be any kind of animal we know. The current mutated animals don't look so different from the way they used to. They are larger than before many times over and have attained superpowers, but their appearances remain recognizable. Oh, we've also met a six-footed red, lion-faced big cat. It has a snake tail though. On hearing him mention the big cat, Kulilai instantly had her red eyes glowing. Is it the one that showed up near our base recently? She said with great interest. You saw it? Lin Kiwi looked at her and asked with surprise. Kulilai nodded and said, yeah, it's fast. It's much faster than I am. I heard from Chief that it followed you guys here. M. We were still in Xinjian province when we first met it. When it came out of the ground, all the plants near it turned into sand, but the animals in that area stayed unharmed. How weird Lin Q in nodded and said with confusion. But, Chief didn't kill it, said Kulilai. Didn't it attack you guys? It has followed you guys to our base. Why didn't Chief kill it? She could still sense the vibe of that cat coming from a long distance away. It didn't seem to threaten the safety of the base. But, she still felt that all the strange creatures were dangerous and hard to deal with. She felt that leaving them near the base might cause future problems. In fact, she felt the same about those underground gorillas. Lin Qiu shook his head. I'm not sure. Chief must have a good reason to do that. The cat walked away by itself. We don't know if it'll ever come back. Kulilai thought for a moment. Indeed, Lin Qiao might have a reason to do that. I read the reports about those creatures before the meeting. But, I feel weird picturing them in my head, as I didn't see them with my own eyes. Have you seen any other underground creatures? Lin Jing asked Lin Qiu with curiosity. Lin Qiu looked at her as he nodded and said, we also saw some huge worms. Each of them is as thick as a huge bucket, about one and a half meter wide. When we saw them, the lower parts of their bodies were still buried underground. The part above the ground was over ten meters long, so I don't know exactly how long they are. Oh, Chief and the others said those might be mutated earthworms. Can earthworms really grow so huge? They have teeth in their mouth. You so disgusting. Do they have mucus on their skin or anything like that? Lin Qiu shook his head, no mucus. Their skin is hard like stone. They like to bite their prey and spout saliva. On hearing that, Kulilai gave a slight sigh, oh, thank god. It would be so disgusting if they were as slimy as earthworms. Picturing huge, slimy earthworms, Kulilai felt extremely uncomfortable. Lin Qiu nodded in agreement, that would be disgusting indeed. Then, he looked at the time and stood up, it's quite late. We should be leaving. Sis, you can have an early rest. You need to work tomorrow, don't you? Lin Jing also looked at the time, then nodded and said, all right then. She stood up as well and walked the two to the door. With a gentle smile, she looked at them while sighing on the inside. It would be perfect if Kulilai were a little older than she was now. The two of them didn't look like a couple at all. Kulilai who had no idea that Lin Jing was already seeing her as her future sister-in-law, waved at her, then followed Lin Kui down the stairs. Do you think those creatures will attack our base? They only showed up in remote areas, right? Kulilai asked a question while walking, Lin Kui thought for a moment, they like to feed on human beings, 
so they might follow the human scent to our base. But, I think we still have plenty of time to prepare ourselves. They won't find the bases so soon. Also, they eat zombies too. There are a lot of zombies for them to eat outside. I think they won't come after human beings anytime soon. Large numbers of zombies existed in the world, but the numbers of those creatures were huge as well. Besides, they all had great appetites. The higher leveled ones among them might choose to give up on the second best food and seek delicious human beings. So, the time left for people to prepare themselves might not be very long. Aren't all those zombies enough to feed them? Kulil I walked to his side as she raised her head to look at him and asked. Linkui slightly turned and gave her a glance as he responded, If you were still a human being, would you like meat or flavorless steam buns? Meat. Kulilai answered the question without thinking, steam buns are just dry and dull. Linkui smiled at her mildly, so, the smarter, high level ones won't be satisfied with zombies. They'll follow the human scent and traces, and slowly approach the human bases to hunt. On hearing that, Kulilai dropped her head with her cheeks bulging, oh, when that happens, the human bases will be facing a huge disaster, right? Smart creatures like that won't come alone. They would bring armies. Chapter 1202, You Won't Be Alone Seeing Kulilai become a little worried and upset, Lin Kui slowed down on the stairs, he couldn't help but reach out and gently rub her hair, it's gonna be fine. I believe that Chief and Chief Wu will figure out something to protect our base. We won't lose our base. After all, they had all decided to settle down in the base. After such a long time, everyone in the base felt like they belonged there. Kulilai raised her head to give him a glance, then abruptly slapped his hand off her head and complained, Don't touch my head. You ruined my hairstyle. Did you touch my head because I'm shorter than you? After saying that, she turned her face away and hopped off the stairs, putting on her sunglasses before walking out of the building. Lin Kui looked around, then took out his sunglasses and put them on as he followed her out. Before long, some people who lived in the building came out. None of them realized that Kulilai and Lin Kui, who visited the building a lot, were actually zombies. Not long after she left the neighborhood, Kulilai leapt high and disappeared. About ten seconds later, she showed up on top of the building where she lived in, in base number two. Soon, she found her special spot and sat down. She didn't like staying in her own room. Instead, she preferred spending time on the roof. Up there, she could feel the wind and see things far away. Quite a while later, the door led to the roof was opened again. A large black panther walked out of the door with elegant pace. It turned and looked at Kulilai, then wagged its long tail. Kulilai whirled. Seeing the panther. She blinked her eyes happily. Her red eyes even glowed more brightly than usual. Come here. She waved at Lin Kui. The panther slowly walked to her, then nimbly hopped up to her side and sat down. His long tail constantly swayed from side to side. Kulilai reached out and stroked the panther's chest fur. It was so smooth and soft that she never got tired of rubbing it. The black panther flipped his tail quickly, then turned to say to her, in fact, I wanted to say this long ago. Even though we are not human beings anymore, this can still be considered as harassment. Is my chest muscular enough? Every time, the girl stroked him either on the chest or the head. That made him feel weirdly itchy in the heart. Hearing what he said, Kulilai paused briefly, then hurriedly retracted her hand. In the next second, she realized that she might have overreacted. She didn't need to take back her hand. Did she? So. She immediately raised her head to look at the Black Panther, who was taller than her even while sitting on the ground, and complained, What are you talking about? You're taller than me even sitting down. I can only reach your chest. Do you want me to touch your claws instead? Do you think that I'm too short? If you want to touch my paws, I'm okay with it. Lin Kui reached a paw toward her. Kulilai grumpily slapped off his large, black paw, then turned away slapping his face with her long ponytail in the process, then pouted while murmuring, No, your paws dread on the ground, they're so dirty. Besides, you could have stayed away from me if you really didn't want me to touch you. Sometimes, he just brought himself to her. Lin Kui looked at her side face. His panther face wore a small smile, and his round panther eyes were narrowed. Behind his body, 
his long tail flipped Kulili's hair from time to time. I heard you were the first to follow Chief. How did you two meet each other? Did you have a fight? I heard that she was weak back then, he said. Recalling her first time meeting Lin Kiao, Kulili smiled and said, she was weak indeed. She was only at level 3 or 4. We didn't fight though. She was passing by, and I sent out my zombies to bar her road. I wanted her to go the other way because that area was my territory. But, she didn't just turn and leave like the other zombies would. Instead, she stopped her car right there. I was wondering why there was the sound of a car. I didn't sense any human scent from that car, but only the scent of a zombie. So I went there to see and saw her in the driver's seat, looking at me quietly. Speaking of how she met Lin Kiao, Kulil I grew a little excited and carried on, then, we observed each other through a safe distance. Normal zombies can't drive, right? So, I felt that she was really weird. I gave her a few roars to ask her who she was, and then she opened the door and got off the car. She was wearing a clean camouflage suit. Her face was ugly, but her vibe was clean and pure. She took out a small notebook and wrote me a note. At that time, I realized that she was like me. She had memory and humanity. I felt like I had finally met someone who could be a family of mine. While speaking, Kulili smiled a bitter, sad smile while the red light in her eyes dimmed slightly. Before I met her, I felt so lost. I was all lonely, with no one to rely on. I was so scared. I turned into a zombie, but I still had my human memory. I felt as if I'm still a human being. But my body has become a zombie. I didn't dare to get close to humans. Neither did I want to be with the other zombies who ate people like brainless beasts. Lin Kyu had never seen Kulili like that. In his eyes, she was an unsophisticated, proud, and frank little girl. She was always happy. Except for Chief. She didn't seem to care about anyone else. He didn't know that she could be so sentimental. He couldn't help but raise a paw to pat her head. But before touching her, he recalled her complaint about his paws being dirty. So, he wiped his paw on his chest, then patted the girl's head with it. His movement woke Kulili up. She slapped on the paw that he hadn't retracted yet and yelled at him with a mad little face. How dare you touch my head with your paw. Your paw is dirty. I wiped it clean, Lin Kyu explained innocently while his paw froze in the air. Kulili snorted, then turned away and refused to say another word to him. But then, she looked into the distance and said, if I didn't meet Gyeo Kiao, I'd still be out there with those mindless zombies. I'm afraid of being alone. Lin Kyu looked at her and stayed silent for two seconds, then said, don't worry, you will never be alone again. I, we are all here with you. As long as we still have this space, you won't be alone. While the two of them were sitting there and chatting, a gray-haired head stuck out from the corner of the roof of another building. The zombie old man's face wrinkled in a smile when he looked at the pretty girl and the beast. Whoosh! A small figure showed up behind the old man and rolled his eyes, then walked over while holding the old man's arm and dragging him away. Eh? What are you doing? For, where are you taking me? Old Go gave a start as Four suddenly dragged him backward. Turning and seeing Four, he immediately talked to the boy with a low voice. Four raised a notebook and showed him a line. Are you so bored that you even need to eavesdrop on their conversation? Help me with the study if you have so much time. Chapter 1203, Should He Cry or Laugh? Reading Four's note, Old Go wore a bitter face. I'm so old. How can I still remember the classes they taught in elementary school? Besides, I was never a teacher. He was really a bad student when he was in school. Studying could kill him, not to mention teaching. Four wrote him another note. How about you teach me the basics? You're an adult. You must know more characters than I do. Old Go looked at him and stayed silent for a few seconds. He was not sure about that. For many words. He had even forgotten how to spell them. If the boy were still studying primary school classes, he might be able to help, but the boy was already reading the textbooks from junior high. He barely knew those rarely used characters on the textbooks. Ahem, um, maybe you should go and ask Lili to teach you. I'm too old. I have a really bad memory and I have poor eyes. I told go looked around, then turned and prepared to run away. Before leaving, 
He pointed at Quilila and Lin Q4 looked at him silently, bad memory, poor eyesight. Couldn't he come up with a slightly better excuse? Lin Giao spent an hour playing with the two kids in the living room, then put them on their bed. After that, she came down and sat in the living room, starting to do her work. Even though all beings base only had a small population currently, there was still a lot of work to do. After all, the base was newly constructed. She had just returned from the outside, so she needed to recheck the progress of all projects that were going on. As you aren't Anxing wasn't able to work at the moment, she had to fill in his place and take part in many small things. Wu Chengyu cleaned the kitchen, then came out and took a shower. After that, he sat down on the armchair near Lin Kiao and took out a stack of files which were from Sea City Base, starting to work as well. The two of them stayed quiet, without disturbing each other. Only the sounds of turning pages and writing were heard from the living room. About three hours later, Wu Chengyu finally gave a long sigh and closed the last file in his hands, then picked up all his files on the tea table and put them in a file folder. Then, he looked at Lin Qiao, who didn't seem to stop working at all. So, he stood up and put his file folder on a cabinet near the wall then sat down beside her. After that, he took away the file in her hand and threw it on the tea table. What? Lin Kiao, who was focusing on the file, gave a start, then turned and glared at him displeasedly. It's time to rest. Are you going to work the whole night? There are still so many files for you to read, Wu Chengyu said to her with a smile, then glanced at the stack of untouched files on the armchair nearby. Can't I work the whole night? I don't need to sleep. Lin Kiao gave him a glance, then picked up the file which was thrown onto the tea table and kept reading. She had tons of works to do now. She needed to finish all those files tonight, and she needed to go to their zombie army tomorrow to upgrade her zombie soldiers. At least, she needed to upgrade a few of the zombie leaders who followed her out of the base for the mission this time. As for Xidong. She needed to get him to level 7 as soon as possible. More level 7 zombies meant stronger the defense for the base. Once again, Wu Chengyu pulled the file out of her hand, then looked at her in the eyes with a bitter smile. Can you make some time for me? In your heart, Teng, Lin Feng, and your other families are number 1 important, the base number 2, their zombie army number 3 and those new underground creatures number four. What about me? Don't you find me too pitiful? I'm the one closest to you now. While speaking, he even found himself so woeful. Was it really like what Lin Feng said that the period before the relationship between him and his wife was established officially was the hardest? Lin Giao silently gave him a glance. He did sound pitiful, but what do you want? Her relationship with him wasn't determined yet. Deep down, she had started to accept him indeed, but she wasn't ready to act that way yet. Sleep with me, Wu Chengyu looked at her and said with a smile, you don't need to sleep, but I do. I'm still a human being. He didn't want to sleep on the bed alone while they were both at home. The bed was hers. Even if they weren't going to have sex, it would be nice if she could warm the bed for him. Well, the zombie lady's body was cold actually. He only felt her body temperature rise when he had sex with her. So, if he really wanted to warm the bed, he would still have to do that thing with her. But if he made that kind of attempt right now, she might throw him out of the window. Not long ago, the two of them were entrapped by Tang. That night was pretty long for her. Lin Giao squinted at him silently. Just sleep, Wu Chengyu continued. I won't do anything unnecessary. Okay? Lin Kiao looked around and said, If you want to sleep, just go and sleep. Why do you want me to do that with you? Even if I don't need to work or sleep, I still have to absorb energy nuclei to strengthen myself. Wu Chengyu looked at her, feeling speechless. So, was strengthening herself the fifth important thing to her? He ranked the last anyway. Didn't he? He turned and looked around, seeing the kid's room. He suddenly had an idea. Think it as my reward for taking care of the kids these days, he said with a grin. As a base leader, I'm here babysitting for you. Aren't you gonna pay me for that? Lin Giao stayed silent. It would seem heartless indeed if she said no to that. She hesitated for a moment, then said, Am you said that we're only going to sleep. I remember reading about that somewhere before. The lies of boys that girls always tend to believe. M, yeah? 
it was mentioned in that article. When a boy tells a girl that they would do nothing but purely sleep, 99% the chance it would turn out to be a lie. Wu Cheng Iu looked at her embarrassedly and didn't say anything. He felt being wronged for no reason. He was not that kind man. He did have that kind of thought just now, but he gave up because she might throw him out of the window. He raised both hands and said, I didn't lie, I promise. Ahem, at the very most, I might hold you in my arms. That'll be okay, right? Lin Kiao looked at him quietly. Don't push it, she said to him using her eyes, seeing which, Wu Cheng Iu's vibe immediately grew weak. Lin Kiao turned her eyes on the files on the tea table and said, All right, I'll be lying by your side, absorbing energy. If you do anything unnecessary to affect me, there will be consequences. Wu Cheng Iu wasn't sure if he should cry or laugh. Chapter 1204 Purely sleep. Letting him lying on the same bed with her was already the biggest concession that Lin Kiao could make. Some might say that she was too cold or heartless, but she didn't care. Wu Cheng Ayu had done a lot for her, and he wanted to be with her. However, that didn't mean he could change her way of living. They had a son together, so she allowed him to be the father of her son instead of keeping Teng for her own. That should be enough. She had the right to choose her own life. A man who pursued her really hard could not change her life. She was preparing to spend the rest of her life alone. At least before, she never planned to marry any man. She was able to survive in the post-apocalyptic era and protect the people she cared about. What did she need a man for? Hadn't she been living a perfect life without a man in her life? Besides, she wasn't like the animals that needed to mate in the mating seasons. It was nice to have no desires. She was never very into sex anyway. She could totally live without a sex life. Her principles for life hadn't changed. Even though she might have gradually accepted Wu Cheng Iu as a part of her life, it did not mean that he was allowed to do anything he wanted. Because of Teng, he had been in a special position in her heart. She had been keeping a balance in her relationship with the men in a complicated way. He was the only man so special to her. It required love for two people to build a family. Before there was love, they needed to like each other. To start liking each other, they had to have good feelings for each other. It sounded simple, but was hard to do. At first, she and Wu Cheng Iu did not even like each other, they even fought a few battles. After all that happened later on, Wu Cheng Iu's good feelings for her gradually turned into fondness, and then he fell in love with her and started to understand her. Lin Kiao could sense how his feelings toward her changed. But, she couldn't be like him. After all, not everyone would fall in love with the person who loved him or her. They were just strangers at the beginning. She knew that ever since Den was born, Wu Cheng Iu had been seeing that little boy as a very important part of his life, and that he really cared for her too. If she weren't as strong as he was already, her feelings for him might be more like gratitude. The harm she suffered before made her seal herself up. She no longer expected a relationship, but cared only about her family. But to her surprise, Wu Cheng Iu pursued her so persistently. Thankfully, he wasn't doing that in a sick way. After knowing him for such a long time, learning what kind of a man he was, and how he really felt about her, she couldn't say that she still had no feelings for him. She just didn't have the courage to invest too much hope in him. Therefore, letting him stay in her place and sleep on her bed was the biggest concession she could make at the moment. She could not offer him anything more than that. All right, I promise I won't do anything else. Is that okay? The best he could do was to hold her like holding a teddy bear to comfort himself. That part of his body would have to suffer some discomfort though. Wu Cheng Iu said to her smilingly, with his face twitching slightly. He was also crying on the inside, not sure if he were happy or unhappy. He was allowed to hold the woman he loved in his arms without doing anything else but purely sleeping. Well, any man would understand that faint kind of sadness. Lin Kiao seemed to have sensed his feelings. She turned and gave him a glance, and he immediately responded to her with a grin. His strong vibe was completely gone. Lin Kiao sorted the files on the tea table, then stood up and turned off the light in the living room before going into the bedroom. She went straight onto the bed and lay down, then took out a level 8 energy nucleus from her space and held it in her hand. After giving Wu Cheng Iu another glance, 
She closed her eyes and started to absorb the energy. She let him stay by her side while she was absorbing the energy, meaning that she trusted him hugely. Normally, people would find a quiet place to hide to absorb energy, so they wouldn't be disturbed. Hopefully, the man would be content with what he had. Wu Cheng Ai walked in. Finding that she was really absorbing energy as she had said, he sighed in his head. However, he did understand that letting him lie by her side while she was absorbing energy meant that she trusted him more than before now. He pulled up the blanket that covered her, then sat on the bed and turned off the light. After lying down, he did nothing but quietly looked at the ceiling as her aroma filled up his nose. The aroma wasn't as faint as before when he slept on that bed alone, it was fresh this time. He felt a strong stream of power flow into her body through her palm, travel through her entire body, and then flow into her heart. In her heart, the energy was purified, and then sent into her brain. It was not like how human beings absorbed energies. When a human absorbed energy, the energy wouldn't linger in his or her heart. Instead, it would go through all the internal organs and then flow into the brain. Wu Cheng Ai didn't fall asleep, but quietly felt the energy flowing inside Lin Qiao's body and also observed the change of her vibe. When her absorption of energy reached a stable state, he quietly moved his hand and held her hand that was near him. Lin Qiao was holding the nucleus with the other hand, so he managed to touch her free hand. Slowly, he put his hand into hers. Her hand was still cold. Her body was only slightly warmer than a corpse. His movement was very gentle and slow, so the zombie lady didn't react to it. However, before he could carefully feel her skin. A stream of power suddenly flowed out of her palm and into his. That was exactly the energy that she was absorbing. Eh, hey, what's happening? He only wanted to hold her hand, not share the energy that she was absorbing. What should he do? Should he let go of her hand? He had never heard about two people absorbing energy together. Would she be affected if he let go? Would that cause a sudden energy disorder? But, if he didn't let go, would she open her eyes and glare at him very fiercely in a few minutes? That was awkward. Wu Cheng Ai didn't move his hand. He was so unprepared for what was happening. He was hesitating. Should he let go or not? Normally, a superpowered person wouldn't react to anyone or anything else while he or she was absorbing energy, unless something was affecting that person strongly. It was like that back in the ancient times when the martial artists practiced their inner power, a gentle movement made by the others wouldn't affect them. Superpowered human beings should be the same. Was she different? Was it because she was a zombie? Right at that moment, Wu Cheng Ai felt that Lin Giao suddenly clenched her fingers and held his hand tightly. He gave a start and turned to look at her. But in the darkness, her facial expression didn't seem to have changed at all. Chapter 1205 Their hands couldn't be separated. At that time, the energy that had flowed into Wu Cheng Ai's body through his palm started to spread in his veins and muscles, then moved toward his head. Lin Giao was still absorbing the energy, but had spared a part of it for Wu Cheng Ai. I didn't mean this to happen. Please don't be mad. Wu Cheng Ai prayed in his head. He couldn't retract his hand now even if he wanted to, because she was holding it tightly. He had no idea if Lin Giao was holding him unwittingly or consciously. She should have sensed that he was absorbing the energy too, right? After all, she was able to feel the flow of energy. Did she hold his hand because letting go would cause a problem? Can't let go. At that moment, a voice was suddenly heard from his head. Wu Cheng Ai gave a start. That voice wasn't clear but he knew that it was Lin Giao's voice. What was happening? Telepathy? I know what you're thinking now. Lin Giao's voice was heard again, sounding a little displeased. She was trying to tell him not to think about anything that he should not be thinking about. Wu Cheng Ai immediately erased all the thoughts he had, then asked her in his mind, What should I do now? Stay like this. You can't let go even if you want to. Feel it. Try to cut off the energy. Lin Giao said. Wu Cheng Ai gave it a try and found that she was right. He wasn't able to cut off the energy that had connected the two of them together. So now, their hands couldn't be separated. What's going on? He asked. How am I supposed to know? Said Lin Giao. I told you not to do anything unnecessary. You wouldn't listen. Embarrassed, Wu Cheng Ai stayed silent for a few seconds, then said to her, So we have to wait until you absorb this whole nucleus? Probably, 
The level 8 beast nucleus contained a huge amount of energy. Based on their current absorption rate, it might take days for them to absorb it entirely. After all, the energy contained in a level 8 nucleus was greater than that in a level 7 1 by 10 times at least. As a zombie, Lin Giao was special. For a level 8 superpowered man like Wu Cheng Ayu, a couple of days wouldn't be enough for him to absorb a level 8 nucleus. Now, they had to stay together holding hands for day, and they couldn't fully wake up. Wu Cheng Ayu wondered if they could absorb 30% of the energy nucleus by the morning. Currently, the two of them were both thinking about one thing. The two kids would need to get up alone tomorrow morning. Thankfully, Du An Wan and Xiao Liking would both come in the morning to pick up the files that had been read and signed, and drop some new. So, those two would discover the awkward situation of their chiefs. As they thought, Tang woke up the first in the morning. He sensed the unusual energy wave in the room next door once he woke up. He leaned forward and twitched his tiny nose then wore a confused look. Eh? Hey, what are Mama and Daddy doing? Tang sat on the bed. He was still tiny, and the winter quilt was thick. He was buried in the quilt, so even after sitting up, he could only stick the top of his head out of the quilt. He raised his arms and struggled for a while, finally pulling off the quilt and exposing his face. Then, he spent a short while thinking. The energy waves that he had been feeling from his mama and daddy were similar to what happened when he made them make love the first time, but not exactly the same. Back then, the energy waves weren't so strong. Ling Ling, get up, get up. He turned and started shaking Wu Yuling, who was lying next to him. M Wu Yuling let out a small moan from under the quilt then moved slightly and fell asleep again. Tang started to shake her very hard, also uttered his deafening baby scream, Get up, it's morning, get up, get up, up. Finally, Wu Yuling reluctantly reached an arm out of the quilt. But in the next second, she shrank that arm back under the quilt once she felt the cold air outside. Then, she once again curled in the quilt and stopped moving. Get up. Don't sleep late. Get up. Tang pushed and yelled at her again. Wu Wu Yuling gave a weak complaint as she struggled to sit up. Her eyes were still closed though. Her messy hair covered her face, and some even stood up. As she sat on the bed, the quilt pulled up before her and buried her neck. She pushed away the quilt with one hand and rubbed her eyes with the other. Get off the bed. Get off the bed. Put on your clothes and shoes. Then, help me get dressed. Tang crawled out of the quilt and gave orders to Wu Yuling. Eh, daddy not here? After rubbing her eyes, Wu Yuling finally started waking up. She looked around, but she didn't see her daddy. Normally, daddy would come to wake her and Tang up. Tang crawled to the bedside and sat there as he said, just get off the bed and put on your clothes. Daddy and mama won't come here now. Let's get dressed and go to their rooms to see what's happening. Wu Yuling didn't really understand what he said. However, as the little boy kept urging her to get the clothes, she obediently got off the bed and put on her fluffy little slippers, then made a few steps toward the chair where the clothes were put on. She first picked up Tang's clothes and clumsily put them on the boy. Thankfully, Tang was cooperative. He raised his arms so she could put them into the sleeves. After the sweater, Wu Yuling put the coat on him. As she prepared to put the socks on the little boy, Tang stopped him. All right, all right, just put on your own clothes first then come to help me wear socks. It's cold. Don't catch a cold, Tang pushed her away and said to her while lowering his head to do his buttons. It was cold in the morning indeed. Wu Yuling found her own clothes and put them on. While doing that, she said word by word, I won't catch a cold. I am healthy. She had healing power. She didn't know much about the self-protection system yet, but she could feel that her body wouldn't become ill. Tang raised and gave her a glance, then said, Oh yeah, you have healing power. Wu Yuling put on her clothes, then turned to put socks on the boy. After that, she first opened the door. Then came back to lift Tang from the bed and walk out. She couldn't open the door while carrying Tang in her arms after all. Why didn't Daddy come? While carrying Tang toward the door, she asked the boy curiously. Tang rubbed his pink and tender cheeks and said, I don't know. Let's go and take a look first. Chapter 1206 They have to wait for two or three days. 
The two kids came out of their room and went to the door of Lin Giao's bedroom. Wu Yu Ling twirled the doorknob and slowly pushed the door open. Then, the two kids stuck their heads into the door to look at their parents. The two parents were both lying quietly and unharmed. However, a stream of energy was flowing inside their bodies. The kids couldn't see the energy, but were able to feel it. Wu Yu Ling had triggered her superpower so she could more or less sense the energy. Meanwhile, Teng was a special kid. Even though he hadn't triggered his superpower yet, he could still sense a lot of things, such as the presentiment that had been occurring recently in the energy inside his parents' bodies. Daddy? Wu Yu Ling looked at the two people on the bed, whose eyes were closed, and then at Teng. She wanted to go near them and wake them up, but the unusual energy coming from their body scared her. So, she stayed by the door and called her father gently. All right, don't call them, Teng said to her. They won't wake up now. Let's get closer to see how they're doing now. He couldn't even feel the spirit connection between his mama and himself, meaning that his parents couldn't hear Wu Yu Ling right now. Why? Wu Yu Ling looked at him confusedly. While speaking, she slowly moved toward Lin Giao's bed. Because they can't hear you. Teng held Wu Yuling's neck to prevent himself from falling, then turned to look at his parents while answering her question. While walking closer and closer to the bed, she gave him a glance without fully understanding what he said. As Wu Yuling stopped walking, Teng spent quite a while staring at the two on the bed, then sighed with relief, they're fine. But, I think it'll take about two days for them to wake up. All right, let's go. While speaking, he pointed at the door. With hesitation, Wu Yuling glanced at the two on the bed, then carried Teng out of the room, but, no one is going to boil the water for us to wash our faces. You don't need to worry about that, said Ten carelessly, Auntie Duan and Uncle Xiao will be here soon. We can ask them to boil the water for us. Let's just sit on the couch and wait for them. So, the two kids, who hadn't brushed their teeth yet cuddled in a blanket and curled on the couch to wait for the aunt and uncle to come. They had to wait there for two hours, because they got up too early. Teng sensed the two before they even came to the door. Hurry up, go, go, open the door. They're here. He hurriedly pushed Wu Yuling. Wu Yuling got off the couch and put on her shoes, then turned back to wrap Teng up with the blanket. Only after doing that did she run to the door and step onto a stool. The twirl the doorknob and open the door. Holding the door, she stuck her head out of the door and looked outside, seeing two people coming from the hallway near the stairs. After opening the door, she ran back to the couch and got onto it, cuddling with Ten to make herself warm. Du An Wan and Xiao Liking ran into each other on the stairs. Du An Wan lived in the building, and Xiao Liking was just coming up. As they arrived at Lin Giao's apartment, they found the door open already. Looking inside, they saw the two kids curling on the couch, looking at them with sparkling eyes. Hey, Lin Giao? Did you guys sleep late today? Seeing the two kids' messy hair, Xiao Liking came in and closed the door, then dropped his bag and asked the kids with surprise. Then, he turned to the door of Lin Giao's bedroom, as if he had suddenly sensed something. Something is happening in Chief's room. Du An Wan said to him seriously. She hadn't even dropped the things in her hands yet. Xiao Liking nodded, he had felt that too. The two of them walked to Lin Giao's bedroom together and knocked on the door, then opened it and looked inside. Lin Giao and Wu Cheng Ayu were lying on the bed quietly, without reacting to them at all. Du An Wan and Xiao Liking glanced at each other, then walked toward the bed. Uncle Wu Yuling stood by the door and held the door frame as she stuck her upper body in and looked at the two while calling Xiao Liking. The latter immediately twirled back to look at the girl with surprise. Ling Ling. Did you just call me? Wu Yuling nodded slightly. Xiao Liking walked to her happily and bent over, then scooped her up and said, Great. Call me again. The kid actually talked. When did she start to talk? Why didn't he know about that? Uncle. We haven't brushed teeth and washed faces yet. Wu Yuling looked at him and said carefully. Did you two get up by yourselves? Have they been like this the whole morning? Du An Wan made a few steps toward Xiao Liking and said to Wu Yuling with a soft voice. Wu Yuling nodded again. Xiao Liking was happy to know that the kid had started to talk so he instantly forgot about the two on the bed. After all, 
The little girl never had the courage to talk again since her father lost control of himself and scared her. It had been quite long. Xiao Liking thought it would take longer for her to recover from that trauma. It's okay, I'll boil the water for you guys and fix you to some breakfast. Just wait for a few minutes. Xiao Liking said. He didn't plan to ask the kids about what happened to their parents. After all, the kids might not know. The two on the bed seemed to be in a strange state. It looked like that they were absorbing energy together. Anyway, they seemed fine, so taking care of the two kids was more important. When will they wake up? Is that a level 8 beast nucleus in her hand? Based on the amount of energy left in that nucleus, they didn't absorb much last night. Can't they stop the absorption? Du An Wan turned to the two on the bed and said, Her chief had a full schedule today. She wouldn't possibly absorb energy at that time of the day. So, since she still didn't wake up, there must be an accident. She was definitely unable to wake herself up. She guessed the Wu Cheng Ayu was in the same situation. Xiao Liking had already walked out of the room. He didn't take Du An Wan's words seriously but said to her, I guess they won't wake up until they have absorbed that beast nucleus entirely. Come on, Ling Ling, you two sit on the couch. I'll go and boil the water for you. Du An Wan put her bag on a cabinet in the living room near the wall. On that cabinet was Wu Cheng Ayu's bag and a stack of files that he put the last night. After dropping her bag, she looked for a comb to brush Wu Yu Ling's hair. At that time, Teng sat up from the blanket and said, don't worry, Mama and Daddy will wake up in a few days. So, just pile their works up in the next few days. Du An Wan found the coom. Hearing Teng's words, she smiled as she sat down beside Wu Yuling. What else can we do? That's our only choice. Is your uncle Xiao good at cooking? She asked Wu Yuling while brushing the girl's hair. After a short silence, Wu Yuling turned to look at the kitchen then leaned toward Du An Wan and whispered to her with hesitation, not as good as daddy. She meant that Xiao Liking's food was edible, but not good. Chapter 1207, Complicated Relationship At that moment, in a research office in All Beings Base, Leng Tong read the file in his hands over and over again, then said sullenly, so, apart from those underground gorillas, so many new types of underground creatures have come out. Where the hell are those creatures from? Is there a portal leading from the comic world to here underground? Is the portal bringing all the imagined creatures to our world? He, of course, was only making a metaphor. Those creatures didn't seem to belong to this world indeed. They might not be from the comic world, but no one could tell for sure if there were an unknown world underground or not. On his left side, Lin Hao was sitting on a chair, leaning against the back of the chair as he sighed with a frown. He couldn't help but complain, at first, we thought zombies are the most terrifying things in the world, but it turned out that the shortage of food is a lot worse. Then, we found mutated plants and mutated animals. The whole world is mutating, including human beings. And then, the apocalypse happened again. And now, a bunch of strange and powerful creatures have shown up. Why on earth do they all love eating people? Can't they eat plants? Can't they eat anything else? Leng Tong gave him a glance and responded to him with a bitter smile. Otherwise, why are we calling this time the post-apocalyptic era? It's like we've gone back to the primitive time. Lin Hao looked at Leng Tong as he adjusted his expression and said, All right. Enough of the complaining. How's your research going? Aren't those underground gorillas afraid of the plant root? Will it work for the other underground creatures? No. Leng Tong shook his head and said, it's only effective on the underground gorillas. Lin Giao brought back three different types of underground creatures on her way back to the base for Leng Tong to do experiments. She brought two types of creatures alive and the other one type dead. That creature constantly released poisonous gas when it was alive, and the gas was highly harmful to all living beings near them. Therefore, to make Leng Xuantong's works easier, Lin Giao brought a few dead bodies back. Therefore, Leng Xuantong's lab had been very busy since Lin Giao came back. Lin Hao turned away with disappointment and looked at Yan Huiguang 
who had been sitting on the other side and staying silent all the time. Mr. Yan, haven't you been making any progress? His big sister brought the man back to the base and gave him an independent lab. His assistant was the other man who came to the base together with him. He remembered hearing from his sister that both the two men reacted strongly when she arranged them to work together. At last, she used violence to make them follow her order. Lin Hao didn't know about the relationship between the two men, but he believed that his sister made the arrangement for a good reason. Yan Huiguang had his head slightly dropped. His long hair covered a big half of his face, disabling the others from seeing his facial expression. However, one did not need to look at his face to feel the cold vibe coming from him. Hearing Lin Hao's question, he slightly raised his head and said with a cold smile, would human beings need to worry about those creatures if my research could make progress so easily? No progress was made, clearly. His tone of speaking just could not be friendly. Lin Hao looked at him, then turned to make eye contact with Leng Xiu and Tong. They both made no reaction to Yan Huiguang's tone, because Lin Giao had warned them about that. She told them he was a man with an eccentric personality. Thankfully, Lin Giao had warned them beforehand. If she didn't, the short-tempered Lin Hao could pick up a fight with that man in a minute when the man talked to him with that kind of tone. However, the man was a level 7, dual power being. The only outcome of Lin Hao fighting him would be him being tortured. If the man was in a bad mood, he might even take his life. Therefore, Lin Hao shrugged as he gave the man a fake smile and said, so work hard. As Yan Huiguang's assistant, Shui Mingjun was sitting on the side as well. Hearing what Lin Hao said, he couldn't help but glance at Yan Huiguang and say, you could have turned into a zombie and never worried about those creatures. On hearing that, Yan Huiguang's sullen face instantly grew even darker. Shui Mingjun was satirizing him, because he couldn't even become a zombie now. Last time, he drank the zombie drug, but the zombie lady stopped him from becoming a zombie. After that, he took the drug again and even got himself bitten by zombies but nothing ever happened to him. What on earth did that zombie lady do to him? Yesterday, he studied his own blood, and the result was bizarre. As for those underground creatures that Lin Hao and Leng Xiu Anton were worried about, he hadn't really started studying them actually. Hearing Shui Ming Jun's words, he snorted and responded quickly with, if it weren't for that zombie woman, I'd have become a zombie long ago. He sounded strongly unhappy about what Lin Kiao had done to him. Lin Hao and Leng Xiu Antong looked at him in a weird way. It was the first time they met a man who was so eager to become a zombie. Becoming a zombie meant death, and most human beings fear death. Leng Xiu Antong slightly dropped his eyelids. He didn't want to become a zombie. He was grateful for what Lin Kiao helped him to achieve in her base. He was allowed to let out his zombie wife and son, instead of freezing them like before. Unlike the other zombies outside, they didn't lose their humanity and soul. Because of Lin Kiao, both his wife and son were behaving well. He got along with them peacefully, and they could even help him with the work. Before, he couldn't even imagine that. To his surprise, someone would rather become a zombie than being a human being. Well in fact, after knowing all kinds of high-leveled zombies in Lin Giao's base, Leng Xiu Antong felt that being a zombie was not so bad. They were stronger than humans, and they weren't affected by either cold or heat. They didn't need food, because their energy nuclei kept them alive. Before Lin Hao and Leng Xiu Antong recovered from the shock caused by Yan Huiguang's zombie dream, Shui Ming Jun said coldly, Yeah, you are just so weak. You are a dual-powered level 7 being yet you still needed to strengthen yourself by turning into a zombie. Actually, the zombies that you created during your experiment could only keep their original power levels. That was not remarkable. Lin Hao and Leng Xiu and Tong both turned to Shui Ming Jun silently. The look on their faces was a little indescribable. The atmosphere between Shui Ming Jun and Yan Huiguang seemed to be a little complicated. They watched the look on Yan Huiguang's face grow sulkier and sulkier and felt his vibe became tenser and tenser. Somehow, they felt that something seemed to be happening between those two men. What was their relationship with each other? Chapter 1208, The Destruction of Sky Fire Base This time, Yan Huiguang didn't respond to Shui Ming Jun. Instead, 
he snorted coldly as he turned his eyes outside the window, then fell into silence. Leng Xuantong and Lin Hao glanced at each other. They had no idea where that weird atmosphere between the two men came from. They seemed to be enemies, but they had no intention of killing toward each other. Chief made the two of them work in the same lab, meaning that they had to work under each other's mean attitude every single day. How depressing would that be? It was like a war could be started in their lab at any moment. Would they blow the lab up in a few days? Shui Mingjun turned around, then shrugged and said to Lin Hao, he didn't need to ask him that question. He hadn't been studying those creatures in this couple of days at all. Lin Hao didn't know what to say. Was it really safe for his big sister to make that man work in the medical department? Wouldn't he turn humans into zombies? At last, the meeting became a conversation between Lin Hao, Leng Xuantong, and Shui Ming Jun, while Yan Huiguang wore a cold and grim face the whole time without joining the conversation. These roots were found in an underground cave near our base, which belonged to one type of underground creatures that showed up earlier. Our chief brought them back here. When you crush this fruit-like lump, a kind of gas will be released, which can kill those underground creatures. We thought it'd be harmful for the other underground creatures that chief brought back this time too, but it turned out that we were wrong. Leng Xuantong showed Shui Mingjun the roots. Shui Mingjun wasn't a researcher, but he was a man with keen eyes. With enough background information, he might be able to find out something. In Earth Dragon Base, which was almost empty, the last batch of residents were staying there, living a hard life. They didn't want to go anywhere else. After Lin Giao broke Hidden Cloud City Base, which was located in the southeast, Hidden Cloud City Base people gave up on Earth Dragon Base to protect themselves. Great numbers of survivors moved to Skyfire Base, Quexia base, Sea City base, All Beings base, and the other bases. At the end, less than a hundred people stayed in Earth Dragon base. At this moment, only some body parts of them were left in the base, along with the large blood stains on the ground and the walls. A series of chewing sounds were heard from all over the base. An SUV-sized monster slowly moved through a pile of bloody party parts and dropped its head to look for human arms or feet. As it located a target, it stuck out its tongue and rolled the body part into its mouth, which was filled with sharp teeth, then moved its jaw to chew it. That enormous creature had a black head and looked 30% like a pangolin. Not only one, but a herd of them had scattered in the base, searching for something. Earth Dragon Base was not the only place where the traces of living human beings were about to be erased completely. Skyfire Base was also under the attack of a giant herd of beetles. Every single one of those beetles was gigantic, looking like a huge helmet. They had strong shells, and their heads weren't visible. There was a breach on their shell, and from that breach, a series of tentacles reached out while shaking. Underneath their shell were countless iron hard feet. They were very slow, but there was a huge number of them. They were so strong that each of them was able to flatten a building. The super strong fence wall which was built after the apocalypse already had a few giant holes in it. Except for the hundreds of helmets like beetles which had been crushing the base like bulldozers. Some smaller creatures which had long legs had been hopping around on the backs of those beetles. GE, GE those flea-like creatures gave out a weird sound, which was shrill and could blur people's minds. Bang, bang, boom. Explosions and gunshots could be heard from all over the base. Ah, help me. A man was held by a human-sized flea in the mouth, screaming in despair. Bang, bang, bang. His friends immediately shot that flea. However, before the bullet touched it, it leapt high and disappeared. Ah. Only that man's shrill scream was left being heard. Captain, we've almost run out of ammo. What should we do? Someone shouted out loud in a panic. Hang in there. We can't leave until they have found us a way out. Running aimlessly would get us killed. A relatively calm voice was heard. Captain, what are they? Why can't our superpowers hurt them at all? Someone cried with despair. I don't know. You should feel lucky that these bugs are still afraid of bullets and bombs. Save your ammo. Try your best to hide. The captain yelled. God knew how those bugs came to the base. They were tens of miles away from the base yesterday, 
but in a couple of hours, they were at the base already, those beasts moved not even as fast as a human walking, how could they possibly cover tens of miles within a couple of hours, those fleas were super fast though, they could hop from one place to the other within a blink of an eye, and cover tens of meters, even a hundred meters with one single leap, however, they hardly left the backs of those beetles, even if they leapt off, they would soon hop back on, if they left the beetles backs, they would certainly be attacking humans, their way of attacking was simple, they jumped on people, bit them, held them in their mouth, and then leapt away, the beetles that crawled into the base first already had their backs covered in blood, those fleas gathered on their backs, ate the people they caught, then leapt out to hunt more, not long after they left, the second batch returned onto the beetles backs, they found it, they found a way out, come with me, someone gave a roar, arousing the hope of people, they all gathered toward that person, then moved together in one direction while fighting, where are we going now, a survivor who managed to run out of the base asked his friend, Quakesia base, of course, Quakesia base is near us, and has a strong defense system, said the captain, but their entrance requirement is too high, most of us might not get in, some people had doubts, I'll deal with that, you guys don't need to worry about it, I'll make you guys a way in when we get there, the captain said, he only wanted those people to go with him and be his human shields on his way to Huexia base, they might not even make it to Huexia base alive anyway, so, the group of people followed their leader toward Huexia base confusedly and blindly, Chapter 1209, Wu Chengai Wu's son, at that time, in Huexia base, Xi Kongjin was sitting in the office, reading a report with a poker face, Xi Longyun was sitting on the couch in his office, doing her manicure with her legs crossed, she fixed her pretty eyes on her own hands, then slightly moved her red lips and said, is it really necessary to trade our supplies with those foreign countries for these weapons, are they really so useful, I don't understand, are our own weapons not good enough, do you have to do the trade, Si Kong Jin slightly raised his eyes to give her a glance, then dropped his eyelids again as he said, why is it not useful, if we merge the features of their weapons into our own, our own weapons will become even better, look at those creatures that came out from the underground recently, you should be aware of how important weapons are, Xi Long Yun paused and said, but, I think our own weapons aren't worse than theirs, as long as the people in your research base use their brains, it won't be hard to improve our current weapons, don't you know serious our shortage of food is now, the crops cultivated without soil have low nutrition value, not to mention the pathetically poor harvest, we need to provide over a million people three meals a day, I wonder if you've ever thought about how many people might die of starvation, weapons were important indeed, however, they were able to produce good weapons by themselves, so, why trade the precious food for the weapons produced by the others, if people didn't have food to keep them alive and healthy and clothes to keep them warm, how could weapons help them, before true danger happened, they might die of starvation already, what's the matter, this world now follows the law of the jungle, the ones who can't adapt to this world will be sifted out eventually, why should we care so much about the others, we won't die of starvation, and that'll be enough, said Xi si Kong Jin blandly, don't forget that you're a base leader, said Xi Long Yun, you are responsible for the residents of your base, otherwise, why would they seek protection from you, without such a big population, where could you find so many technicians to strengthen this base, if you don't care about them, you might regret when they all leave, Si Kong Jin didn't seem to take her words seriously at all as he said expressionlessly, I didn't want so many people to join my base in the first place, the board decided to let them in, they can leave if they want to, the smart people know whether Huexia base is stronger or Sea City base, those people won't leave, they clearly know that dying here of starvation is better than being eaten by zombies or mutated animals out there, Xi Long Yun was aware that she wasn't able to talk any sense into the man, so, she changed the topic, oh, didn't you say that the robber will come to find you, why didn't he show up, Xi Kong Jin turned a page of the report and said, he won't come to me, I heard from his men that he was taken by the woman from all beings base, Xi Long Yun stopped short, then raised her head and looked at him with surprise, 
she has the courage to do that. She actually let a robber join her base. How ridiculous. Is she dumb? No base would accept robbers, because 90% of them met people. They had lost their humanity. Letting them into a base would lead to hidden trouble. This time, Si Kong Jin didn't say anything. Clearly, he did not want to continue that topic. Xi Yunlong dropped the nail file, then bent over and reached out to pick up the teacup on the tea table. Then, she took a sip of the tea elegantly and put the cup back on the table. Isn't that good? Release the news in her base. Let's see how she will try to save her small base that only has thousands of people. The result would certainly be her joining Sea City base, and then Sea City base would have two level 8 beings. What good would that do to us? said Si Kong Jin coldly. Xi Long Yun snorted, what's the difference? She's so close with Wu Cheng Ayu now, and their bases are only about a hundred miles apart. What difference would it make if she joined C City base? I wonder what that woman did to make Wu Cheng Ayu agree to let her build a base just a hundred miles away from his base. Has he changed? Has he decided not to be single anymore? As long as she stays in her own base, I can make her be unable to go to C City base for help said Si Kong Jin blandly. At that moment, Wai He Chow knocked on the door, then walked in with a file. He smiled at Xi Long Yun and said, Hey, the pretty lady is here too. Aren't you busy today? Xi Long Yun raised her eyes and gave him a charming smile, then winked at him and said, I am busy. Chief Si asked me to make some time to come here for tea, because he doesn't mean to get exhausted. Receiving that wink, why he Chow even had his heart leapt. He gave her a polite smile and said, Oh, then you have to thank our chief. He cares about you so much. While speaking, he walked towards Si Kong Jin and handed him the file. There's a funny news about Wu Cheng Ayu. Would you like to take a look? He said to Si Kong Jin. What? Si Kong Jin raised his head and looked at him while taking over the file. He has a son now. The boy is only about a month old. We don't know who's the mother yet said Wai He Chow with interest. What? Before Si Kong Jin said a word, Xi Long Yun had already exclaimed out loud, Wu Cheng Ayu has a son. Where did that boy come from? Wai He Chow turned to her as he spread his hands and raised his eyebrows. How am I supposed to know? We're still trying to find out. He's been acting weird lately though. He's been spending a lot of time in all beings base. Si Kong Jin started reading the file. He stayed expressionless when listening to Wai He Chow, but as he started to talk, his tone of speaking contained a slight trace of surprise. Where did that boy come from? Is this real? You didn't get false information, did you? As far as he knew, Wu Cheng Ayu had no interest in women at all. Last year, he was raped by the woman who now led all beings base. Some said that he had killed that woman, but she turned out to be perfectly alive. She had also built a new base. And apart from that, she reached a level 8 within a single year. Who said that woman used to rely on men to survive? If he guessed right, she must have had her superpower hidden. As for all those boyfriends of hers, they might be her cover. Plenty of evidence proved that she did sleep with all those men though. The more real it seemed, the more doubtful it became. How is that possible? I heard that some people have seen that boy. Many think the chief lady from all beings bases the boy's mother. However, no one had detected any trace of pregnancy on the woman in the past ten months, Wai He Chow folded his arms and said. Chapter 1210, Leng Xuantong's Family Si Kong Jin dropped the file, then leaned against the back of his chair as he folded his arms and thought for a moment before speaking. Hasn't he been pursuing that woman? Was there another woman who gave him a son? Or his son isn't adopted too, is he? He had already adopted a daughter. Adopting a son wouldn't be surprising for him. Why He Chow pondered upon his words and found them reasonable. So, he nodded and said, that's possible. But, I'm thinking maybe he found a surrogate mother from another air base. That's not possible. Xi Long Yun, who was sitting on the couch, denied that possibility. He has a daughter already. Does he still need a surrogate mother? He treasures his six-year-old daughter, doesn't he? In that case, he doesn't need a surrogate mother. I don't think that's something he would do. It's not like he has to have a son. That's not necessary at all. The two men glanced at her. Si Kong Jin stayed silent while Wai He Chow responded. Perhaps he wants a son to carry on his duty. After all, 
most men want to pass on their bloodline, that's nothing strange. Xi Longyun gave him a sideway glimpse, that sounds weird, Wu Chengai who already has his eyes on a woman, why didn't he let the woman he likes give him a son, why another woman, isn't that weird, are you a man like that? Do you prefer another woman to give birth to your son than the woman you like? After saying that, she looked at Wai He Chao from head to toe the way people would look at an irresponsible and dishonest man. Under her gaze, the latter instantly felt embarrassed. How is that possible? I'm not that kind of man. He denied without thinking. Who knows? I don't know you well. Xi Long Yun turned her eyes away from him and shrugged, raising her eyebrows. She picked up the teacup and took another sip, Wai He Chao felt being wronged. So, Wu Cheng Ayu has a one month old son, anything else? Si Kong Chin asked, Wai He Chao shook his head, they have been keeping the sources of their supplies strictly secret, our people haven't gathered any useful information yet, after the clues about those two diaries, nothing else was found. Si Kong Chin furrowed his brows. Hadn't those two diaries fallen into Wu Cheng Ayu's hands already? Do you want to take them from him? Wai He Chao dropped his head despondently and said, It was all because of that woman. A. Hey, Wu Cheng Ayu found out about it anyway. He has already gotten the diaries, so there's no chance for us to take them back, said Si Kong Chin with a peaceful look in his eyes and a bland tone. Wu Cheng Ayu is not stupid. He won't give us any chance to get something so important. Leng Tong had already been studying the two diaries. He hadn't dug out any useful information from it though. Someone found him and asked him for the two diaries. I heard from Chief that you have two diaries from Huexia Base about the research on plants. Can I read them? Are you done reading them? Shui Mingjun stood outside Leng Tong's lab and said to him, Yes. But I can only lend you one of them now. I'll lend you the second one when you are done reading the first one. Can you understand the contents of those diaries? Those have a pretty high academic quality. Leng Tong nodded, but looked at him with hesitation. It's okay. Shui Mingjun smiled and said, I'll memorize them after reading them once. That knowledge might be useless to me now, but after I learn more about those plants, I might be able to give it a try. It's better than doing nothing. Right? Leng Tong thought for a moment and felt that Xiui Mingjun was actually right. He himself had now been focusing on the energy and matters inside the bodies of the underground creatures, so he didn't need those diaries for the time being. Xiui Mingjun could read them if he wanted to. Perhaps, he could really discover something that he had missed. Sometimes, people with little professional knowledge might have surprising discoveries when they read academic articles. After giving the first diary to Shui Ming Jun, Leng Tong went back to his lab. Apart from his zombie wife and son, Bao Xiaogo and his little sister were also in that lab. Leng Tong's wife was at level 3 already. In the past year, she drank the lake water that Lin Qiao left her almost every single day. Therefore, her appearance had changed quite a lot. Her hair were already shiny. Apart from her black eyes and dark purple lips, she looked almost like a healthy human being. His son was healing relatively slowly, but the cause was undetermined. It was definitely not because of his young age. After all, Four Under Chief's direct command was already a zombie king now. Bauxiogo was guarding the lab diligently. From time to time, he turned to look into the lab. Most of the time, the zombie boy was outside the door, playing with Bao Xiogo. Leng Tong would ask the boy to go outside when he hindered the adults in the lab from doing their work. Well, the boy never listened to him anyway. Every time, he would bare his teeth and roar at his father fiercely. However, his mother would then slap on the back of his head and drive him out of the lab. Leng Tong's wife was named Chi Lanxing. She was a short-tempered violent zombie lady who beat her son all the time. Director, was your wife like this when she was still a human? The shorted-haired Bao Xi Oying, who looked like a boy, sneakily poked Leng Tong and asked him when he watched Chi Lanxing kick her son out of the lab like always. Leng Tong was bending over to look into the microscope. Hearing the question, he stayed motionless and responded. She wasn't so violent before. The worst thing she could do was yell at us. Now, she's a zombie, so maybe she's become wilder than before, or her true nature is revealed. Thankfully, he was at level 5, 
and was totally able to suppress his level 3 wife. Also, fortunately, Chi Lanqing had restored some of her memory. She had been quite nice to Leng Xiu and Tong. Leng Xiu and Tong's lab was located in base number 2, so he hardly limited the freedom of his wife and son, as long as the two of them didn't go too far away. The zombie boy started staring at Bao Xiogo again once he ran out of the lab. He stood about a meter away from the latter and raised his pale little face to look at him with his dark eyes, struggling. Bao Xiogo smelt so good. He wanted so strongly to eat him. However, his mother wouldn't let him eat the man. Also, the man sometimes released the horrible black fire to scare him. Xiu, you'll get hungry standing near me. Move. Like always. Bauxiogo said to the little zombie with an unfriendly tone when the boy stood before him. The zombie boy had failed to resist the temptation and bitten him a few times. He didn't turn into a zombie though. Recently, he attained a dark fire power, as same as what his chief had. Once he released a tiny wisp of dark fire, the zombie boy would run away. Chapter 1211, They Woke Up On hearing what Bauxiogo said, the little zombie raised a hand to pull the lower eyelid of one eye, then stuck his tongue out and made a face toward Bauxiogo. Then, he turned and ran away. At that very moment, a boom was heard from the lab next door. The people on the scene gave a start and turned to where the explosion happened, then all ran toward the door of the lab next door. They ran into the lab and found a glass container that contained the test subject exploded. The liquid in the container splashed everywhere and glass pieces scattered all over the lab, even breaking some containers nearby. Thankfully, not all test subjects had exploded, but, the experiment table was obviously in a mess. Only one test subject had exploded. What happened? What's going on? Bauxiogo and Bauxioying came in and looked at the messy lab in shock. Stay away. Leng Xiu and Tong raised an arm to stop them approaching the test subjects then walked closer alone and searched through the messy scene with his eyes. Soon, he fixed his eyes on a corner and slowly moved toward that area, then squatted. Watching his movement, Bauxiogo and his sister figured that he might have discovered something. They both landed their eyes on that corner and carefully moved that way with curiosity. Lying in that corner was a baby palm-sized, black, rotten piece of flesh. The color has changed. Let me see. Eh? Wasn't this soaked in the juice mix of mutated cat mint and the weird root? At the sight of the black flesh piece, Bauxioying had something cross her mind. She thought for a moment, then raised her head and looked around. After that, she walked to the experiment table and checked the label. As she thought, she found the label of the mixed juice of cat mint and the roots. Earlier on, they soaked the flesh in the juice to see if anything would happen. The table and the cabinet nearby were both filled with the body parts of underground creatures mixed with the body tissues that came from different kinds of plants or animals. Leng Xiu and Tong stood up and found a container and tweezers, then picked up the black meat piece and put it in. Then, he turned and walked out of the lab. Xioying, clean up, replace the broken containers and renew the fluids he said while walking out, okay. Bauxioing responded. Then, she turned around and tell the others to leave. All right, all right, you guys, get out. This place is full of glass pieces now. You might get hurt. Leng Xiu and Tong brought the black meat piece back to the other lab, then started finding out what caused it to change and explode. Three days later, Lin Qiao woke up. She let go of Wu Cheng Yu's hand the moment she opened his eyes, then got up from the bed. Mama and Daddy woke up. Outside the room, Tang immediately sensed the changes in his parents' energies and told that to the others. Xiao Liking, who was sitting on the couch reading some files, heard Tang's words and hurriedly raised his head to look at the bedroom door. Lin Qiao poured the ashes of the beast nucleus into the trash can, then dusted off her hands and walked out of the room. At that moment, Wu Cheng Yu opened his eyes as well. He didn't sit up immediately, but turned to look at Lin Qiao, seeing her open the door and walk out. How many days we lay in there for? Lin Qiao came out and asked the man and the two kids in the living room while brushing her long hair with her fingers. Three days. Three days. Xiao Liking and Ten answered her question with one voice while Wu Yuling showed her three fingers. Lin Qiao helplessly raised a hand and rubbed her temples with her thumb and forefinger, 
then walked to the bathroom sullenly. It was Wu Chengyu's fault. Because of him, all her plans were postponed for three days, and she wasted three whole days. She freshened up and changed her clothes, then came out of the bathroom and scooped up her son. She put the boy on her knees, then lowered her head and asked, Who's been feeding you two these days? Is it Uncle Xiao or Auntie Duan? Auntie Duan. Auntie. Teng and Wu Yuoling both answered that question. Hearing Lin Qiao ask about feeding the children, Xiao Liking turned his head to the window with a complicated look on his face. However, Teng pointed a finger at him and complained, Uncle Xiao's food was awful. Wu Yuoling covered her mouth and tittered secretly. What? I'm not good at cooking indeed, but my food wasn't awful. Xiao Liking couldn't stay calm. He immediately turned back and argued with Teng. At that moment, Wu Chengyu came out of the bedroom and joined the conversation. It is awful, compared with mine. After saying that, he quietly walked into the bathroom. Xiao Liking didn't know what to say. That man and Teng were really father and son. They even shared the same thought. Why are you guys so picky? My food is edible, and that's enough, as long as you don't starve to death. The taste of the food isn't important. We live on dried food when we're outside carrying missions. Who'd care about the taste? Xiao Liking was not happy to hear what Wu Chengyu and his son said. Lin Qiao rubbed Teng's head. The boy's head now had some short hair grown out. He was only about a month old, so his hair was still very soft and fluffy. She rubbed the boy's head, feeling like rubbing a cat. Who gave you showers and washed your clothes? Still auntie Juan? Lin Qiao asked Teng. She's only responsible for food. I'm the one taking care of these two little problems. Before Teng answered the question, Xiao Liking said with a roll of his eyes, Clap. Wu Yuling didn't like him calling her little problem, so she slapped him on his thigh. Oh, I mean, little baby, okay? Xiao Liking changed his words immediately when he saw the little girl's bulging cheeks. Then, he turned around and handed Lin Qiao an envelope. The invitation for the grand meeting from Huixia Base arrived this morning. In the envelope was an invitation. Lin Qiao took it over and opened the envelope, leafing through the invitation before throwing it onto the tea table. The number of people has dropped this year. Last year, seven base leaders attended the meeting. This year, there are only five. She pulled Ten's sleeve inside. Hem, it might not be a bad thing. Xiao Liking glanced at her with a weird look. What he really wanted to say was, you are exactly the reason why there are fewer people now. When will we go? Wu Chengyu got changed and came out of the bathroom. He walked to the tea table and picked up the invitation, glancing at the date of the meeting, the middle of December. It was about the same time as last year. Chapter 1212, The Cat Mints Effect Du An Wan was happy to find Lin Qiao and Wu Chengyu awake when she arrived at Lin Qiao's apartment. However, what made her happier was the report held in her hand. Look, Leng Tong said that this kind of catmint is highly effective against those creatures. He has run experiments with the catmint in different mutation degrees. According to the results, less mutated catmint is more effective. The uninfected catmint would definitely lead to a better result. On hearing what she said, Lin Qiao quickly reached out and took over the report, then opened it and started reading carefully. Wu Chengyu walked to her and took Teng out of her arms, then stood by her side and lowered his head to read the report. So, the purer the catmint, the more effective it is. But, over 99% of the plants out there have mutated after the second eruption of the virus. Where can we find uninfected catmint? Wu Chengyu knitted his brows and asked. That result was meaningless. There was one thing he cared about though. What's the best result of Leng Xiuantong's experiments so far? At that point, Du An Wan dropped her eyes and gave a sigh. He has run out of living test subjects. He's going to ask Chief to send a squad out to capture some of those creatures alive. So far, the best result is that the mixture of catmint and the strange root can cause a small range paralysis. Paralysis? Wu Chengyu heard her and then read the report again. It causes paralysis, but the efficacy is short. The juice of the current catmint can lead to about 10 seconds of paralysis. The less infected catmint delivers a longer efficacy. 
that was written in the report. That was why Leng Xiuantong believed an infected cat mint would probably be able to kill those creatures. Can't we purify it? Lin Qiao furrowed her eyebrows slightly but soon relaxed them. It was good news anyway. Why don't we just go there and take a look now? Xiao Liking joined the conversation impatiently. Good idea. Lin Qiao immediately stood up. She glanced at Wu Cheng Ayu and Teng, then reached out and took Teng back from his father's arms. Putting her hand under the boy's little butt and the other on his back, she walked outside quickly while the others quickly followed her out. Xiu Ming Jun arrived at Leng Xiu and Tong's lab together with them. He was there to return the first diary. He heard about the cat mint once he arrived. What? We need uninfected, fresh cat mint. Where are we supposed to find that now? Shui Ming Jun looked at Leng Xiuantong with confusion. But, only the scent of fresh cat mint can keep them away. And only that is effective on those creatures when it's mixed together with the roots, said Leng Xiuantong to him. Shui Ming Jun was a master of intelligence work. He might be slightly better at finding things than the others. All plants out there are infected. There is no way we can find uninfected cat mint. They are not cats. Why is cat mint effective on them? They would be thrilled to smell cat mint if they were cats. But in fact, they are afraid of cat mint. You can't paralyze a cat by injecting it with cat mint, Leng Xiuantong said with a smile. Shui Ming Jun pondered upon his words and found them making sense. You're right. But, I don't think it's possible for us to find uninfected cat mint. We can try to find some less infected ones. This kind of plant existed in many areas. Let me think. The nearest place where that kind of plant grows is Minan Province. At that moment, Chi Lanxing, who had been quiet all the time, abruptly turned and gave Leng Xiuantong a deep roar, then pointed outside the door. Hearing her voice and watching her movement, Leng Xiuantong figured out her meaning and quickly walked toward the door. What's wrong? Shui Ming Jun followed behind him confusedly. He didn't understand why the zombie lady gave a roar and pointed outside. Chief and some others are here, Leng Xiuantong said. Then, he paused and said to Bao Xioying. Xioying, go and get the most recent experiment report from my desk. Sure. Leng Xiuantong and Shui Ming Jun walked out of the lab and stood in the hallway, looking at the gate. Before long, a few people walked in. I have a few living underground creatures. Can you do an experiment with those and show us? Lin Giao said to Leng Xiuantong at the sight of him. Oh, you have more? Great. That's exactly what I need. Leng Xiuantong had his eyes glowing. As Lin Qiao and the kids showed up, the people in the lab all curiously looked at Tang. Leng Xiuantong's zombie son hid behind his mother's legs and stuck his head out to curiously look at Wu Yuling. He looked at her, not because he sensed her aroma and that made him hungry. Instead, it was because he finally saw someone shorter than him. There was always a magical attraction between the kids at about the same age. Wu Yuling became even quieter than before when she saw the strangers. She followed closely behind Lin Qiao, even forgetting about her father. On hearing Leng Xiuantong's response, Lin Qiao handed her son to Wu Cheng Ayu without saying a word. Teng would understand her meaning anyway. Take me where you kept them. I'll let them out. She said to Leng Xiuantong, then walked toward the lab. She asked him to take her, but in fact, she had been there before and knew where it was. The floor, ceiling, and walls of the room where the underground creatures were kept were all covered in the diluted juice of the fruits on the roots that Lin Giao brought back from the cave. In the middle of the room was a large cage which was covered with the diluted juice as well. Those creatures would roar agitatedly when they were put in that cage but they wouldn't dare to get near it. After spending some time roaring, they would force themselves to quiet down. Lin Gia walked to the cage side, and then entered the woods in her space to bring out an underground gorilla which was passed out with starvation, before throwing it into the cage. Roar the boar-sized underground gorilla gave a weak roar when Lin Gia brought it out of the space. But soon, it was irritated by the smell of the roots. Roar it was agitated but it could barely stand. It shambled for a short while before it found a steady foothold. Chapter 1213 Try it with you Aunt Anxing. Leng Xiuantong injected the mixed juice of catmint and the roots into the underground gorilla from Lin Giao's space. The gorilla, 
which was roaring ragingly a minute ago, instantly fell to the ground and stopped moving. I wonder if this kind of mutated cat mint can help you aunt Anxing with his condition. Give me some of it, I'll give it a try. Lin Giao stood outside and looked into the room. You aunt Anxing's condition crossed her mind, so she asked Leng Xuantong for a tube full of mutated cat mint juice. Leng Xuantong nodded and asked Bao Xioying to bring a tube of pure cat mint juice and give it to her. Are you guys going with me? Shouldn't you be going back to Sea City? Lin Kiao turned to say to Wu Cheng Ayu and Xiao liking once she walked out of Leng Xuantong's lab. She had a lot to do for the rest of the day, and she would, of course, not do them together with Wu Cheng Ayu. He should be leaving. He had stayed in her base for such a long time. Was this place his home? All right then. I should be heading back indeed. As she had told him to leave so straightforwardly, Wu Cheng Ayu had no choice but to obediently give her son back to her, then ask Xiao Likings prepare the vehicle. Lin Giao sat into his car and said to Juan Wan, Let's go to Mount Wu first. Aren't we gonna try the drug on Deputy Chief Yuan first? Du An Wan asked with confusion. Lin Giao held Tang and rubbed his head. Tang didn't like that, so he slapped off his mother's hand over and over again. Number. We're going to put Lutani and his people into the space first. The vegetables in the space are going bad. Lin Giao said to Du An Wan while playing with Tang. Oh, I see. Du An Yuan responded and drove the car out of base number two to Mount Wu Farm. Yu Jun and Xi Dong were already waiting for them on the road. Where's Lu Tani? Lin Kiao carried Tang off the car, then asked Liu Jun. On the mountain, Liu Jun turned and pointed in one direction. Lin Kiao nodded and walked toward the cabin, sent someone to tell him and his people to come here. Liu Jun nodded and waved a hand. Following her move, a male zombie leader came to her. As she gave her order, their zombie immediately flashed toward the area that she pointed at earlier. While Lin Kiao and the others went to the clearing before the cabin, Tong Tong ran out of the cabin. He stopped short and fell into silence when he saw Lin Kiao, Auntie Lin. The boy stood by the door and called Lin Kiao, then carefully glanced at his mother. Lin Kiao looked at Tong Tong and nodded at him smilingly. Tong Tong has grown taller. The kid is growing fast. On hearing her words. Tong Tong gathered his courage to slowly move toward Xi Dong. His eyes were fixed on Teng all the time though. Do you want to play with Teng? Come here and hold him. Detecting the expectant look in the boy's eyes, Lin Giao said to him. Teng held his mother's neck and said worriedly, Tong Tong isn't strong enough to carry me, is he? He didn't want to fall on the ground. How can you know without trying? Lin Kiao looked at him and said, receiving her invitation. Tong Tong excitedly walked to her. However, when he heard Tang's words, he stopped and started struggling. He had never held Tang before. Lin Xiaolu and Wu Yueling had been the ones holding the baby. They were both older and stronger than he was. However, Tong Tong looked at Tang's tiny body and felt that he should be able to carry the baby boy. Still, he was a little worried, as Tang didn't seem to want to be held by him. Lin Kiao didn't give him any time for hesitation. She put Tang directly before him and encouraged, It's okay. This boy is weightless. You can hold him. Give him to us when you feel tired. While speaking, she put Tang into Tong Tong's arms. Tang was growing faster than normal children indeed, but he wasn't heavy. He was about 4 kilograms when he was born and around five as of now, Tong Tong should be able to hold him. As Lin Kiao suddenly put Teng into his arms, Tong Tong automatically reached out to catch him. Put a hand under his butt and hold his back with the other hand, so he won't fall. Lin Kiao taught Tong Tong how to hold the baby boy, then left her son to him. At that time, Lu Tani came over with a group of zombies. A couple of days ago, Long Kinying kicked Kong King Meng back to Sea City base. So, Lu Tani dropped his work and came back to all being base. He had to continue doing Kong King Meng's works for him though, so the latter could spend time with his girlfriend. Come on, pack your things. The strawberries in my space are about to go bad, and so are the vegetables. Lin Giao said once she saw him. Liu Jun and Xi Dong started to prepare some empty baskets for her. She put all the baskets into her space then brought Lu Dani and the group of level 4 zombies all into the space and told them to harvest the vegetables and strawberries. 
I'm gonna try solving you Aunt Anxing's problem first. When I come out, Xidong, summon all level 5 and 6 zombies among the ones who carried out the most recent mission with us and are ready to upgrade. Gather them where the troop is stationed, the others will wait for the next time. I'll bring them into my space to help with the upgrade. Tell them to get their nuclei ready. Before entering the space, Lin Kiao gave Xidong an order. Yes, mom. Xidong immediately responded to her, then turned and left. Lin Kiao turned and glanced at Teng, who was still held in Tong Tong's arms, and said to the boy, You stay here playing with Tong Tong, I'll come pick you up when I'm done. Oh, okay. Teng looked at her and nodded. Du An Wan had found a stool for Tong Tong to sit down, so he could put Teng on his knees and the baby boy wouldn't fall. Du An Wan and Liu Jun had both been keeping a close eye on the two boys, in case any accident happened. Lin Giao entered the space to find Lutani and his zombies had already scattered in the fields, picking beans, melons, strawberries, and all other kinds of vegetables. Lin Giao's strawberry fields had grown much larger than before. Without being harvested for about two weeks, those big and juicy strawberries were already perfectly ripe. There were no seasons in her space. Both the air and the soil in the space contained a special type of energy. Therefore, the plants in the space had been growing and fruiting constantly. The zombies only turned and gave her a glance when she showed up, then continued doing their work. Lin Kiao released a cloud of dark mist to cover herself, then took off her clothes and put them on the chair, which had been standing there all the time by the lakeside. After that, she dove into the water along with the dark mist and soon dragged you Aunt Tanxing out of the water. She put on her clothes, then covered the sensitive part of you Aunt Tanxing's body with a shirt. Next, she took out the tube of catmint juice that Leng Xuan Tong gave her. Chapter 1214 Lutani's Doubt Lin Kiao threw you Aunt Tanxing on the lawn by the lakeside then forced open his mouth and poured the cat mint juice in. Then, she squatted aside and narrowed her eyes to look inside his body. Lutani slowly came to her with curiosity and said, I've been feeling that you're a little too close with you Aunt Anxing and Lin Feng's family. Why? Have you known them for a long time? He had been wondering about that all the time. The way his sister treated Lin family people was strange. She and those people seemed bizarrely familiar with each other. What was the reason? He never heard Lu Tani U making any contact with Lin family people. He had been paying attention to her since the apocalypse and protecting her. He knew about most of the things she did. However, he never found her in contact with the Lin family people. Did she know them before the apocalypse? Lin Giao saw the mutated cat mint juice flow into Yu An Tang Sing's body, transform into a green stream of energy, and spread from his stomach. Hearing what Lu Tani said, she stopped short, then turned to look at him silently. Seeing the look on her face, Lutani knew that she wanted to say something. He waited for a short while, but she still stayed silent. She clearly had something to say to him, but she wasn't saying a word yet. What did she want? What's wrong? Is it hard to say? Lutani was even more curious. No, Lin Kiao immediately turned around and kept observing you aren't dancing. How was she supposed to tell the boy that she was no longer his sister, and that she was only someone wearing his sister's skin? Lin Kiao didn't have the heart to tell him that. She felt that Lutani might be heartbroken when he knew that Lutani U was gone. After all, she was family to him, and he had been trying very hard protecting her. Lutani U never saw him as family, but he did care a lot about her. However, he would know sooner or later. After all, Everyone else already knew about it but him. Lutani was such a poor young man. At least, he had the right to know that the person he had been protecting was gone. Her body remained, but her soul was gone. Lin Gia was still hesitating. She wasn't sure if she should tell him the truth herself or let someone else do it. You haven't answered my question yet. Lutani looked at her and said, as he wouldn't give up, Lin Kiao gave a sigh. She stood up as she looked at him and said, do you want to know? Perhaps, you don't want to know the truth about that. Lutani looked at her peacefully. His handsome face wore no expressions. He simply looked at Lin Kiao, his eyes as peaceful as a quiet lake. Despite his peaceful look, his tone of speaking wasn't as calm as before. Your words give me a bad feeling, 
he said, while looking at you Aunt Tank Sing, who was lying on the ground, Lin Kiao responded to him with, what's in your mind? She saw the green energy linger in you Aunt Tank Sing's body for a few minutes, then be devoured by the black energy which was sparkling with a red light. I think you should tell me about it yourself. After all, the real Lutani U would never look after anyone, especially one who has nothing to do with her, Lutani said. After saying that, he glanced at you Aunt Tank Sing before turning and leaving. He was saying that if she were the real Lutani U, even if she managed to build a base of her own, she would never try so hard to take care of the people in her base. At the very least, she wouldn't care so much about you Aunt Ang Xing's current condition. Lin Kiao didn't know what to say. Lu Tani had discovered that something was not right long ago. He asked her about the truth, because he wanted to hear it from her personally. It seemed that she had to tell him about the truth herself. She wondered how he would react. However, since he already had doubts, it was probably going to be easier for him to accept the truth. Lin Kiao watched him walk into the vegetable field and sighed then turned and kept observing you aunt Anxing. the dark energy devoured the green energy quickly, but, if she were right, the energy from the mutated catmint did tend to neutralize the dark energy before being devoured, due to the small amount of the green energy, it was eventually devoured by the dark energy, which was 10 million times stronger, it was the juice of the least mutated catmint that Ling Zhu and Tong could find, meaning that only pure catmint had a chance to cure you Aunt Anxing and defeat the underground creatures out there. Where in the world could she find any completely uninfected plant? It was probably impossible, but Lin Giao still had hope. What if a miracle happened? People should believe in miracles. As the catmint energy disappeared, the dark energy became active again, because the energy from the lake was no longer suppressing it. So, Lin Giao hurriedly threw the naked Yu Aunt dancing back into the lake. She wondered how the man would feel if he knew that he was thrown from here to the nakedly by her. Once again, Lin Giao came out of the lake and put on her clothes. The picked up a towel that someone put on the chair for her earlier and walked to her house while wiping her hair. Come in if you want to know. Walking near Lutani, she paused and said a few words to him, then kept walking toward the house. Lutani who was picking lettuce leaves, raised his head and looked at her back as he stood up. He handed the basket in his hand to one of his subordinates, and then followed her toward the house. In the living room, he found Lin Giao sitting on the couch with her head tilted, rubbing her wet hair with a towel. Sit down. Seeing Lu Tani standing before the tea table motionlessly, Lin Kiao couldn't help but give a glance at the armchair near him. After spending a short while looking at her quietly, he walked to the chair and sat down, straightening his back, he rested his hands on his knees and said to her, tell me, Lin Kiao looked at him and stopped short, then continued rubbing her hair and started talking, it's been quite long, I guess you found out long ago, you already have the answer, don't you, do you really want to hear me say it, I'm afraid that you might be sad, Lutani slightly lowered his head and landed his eyes on the tea table, on hearing what she said, he gave a bitter smile that was full of sadness. But, I'll know the truth sooner or later, right? I'll know eventually. You think I'll feel better being the only one who doesn't know the truth yet? Lin Kiao looked at him, but didn't know how to start talking. So, she stayed silent while Lu Dani stared at the tea table, and the two of them suddenly fell into a weird silence. About ten seconds later, he asked her a question, Who are you? Chapter 1215, Bring Underwear. I'm your sister, be it before or now. Lin Kiao looked at him and answered his question, then continued with, Of course, if you don't want to accept that, there's nothing I can do to make you feel better. Lutani U looked at her with sharp, sad eyes. I want to know who you are. You are not Lutani U, so what is your real name? Since a long time ago, he had been doubting that zombie lady's identity. At first, he thought the experience of death changed her personality, but, the longer time he spent with her, the weirder he found her to be. Over time, he started failing to think of her as Lutani U. He felt the two of them were completely different people. Before he died, he even had a dream. In his dream, he witnessed Lutani U's death. As same as what he heard, she was killed by a crowd of zombies. Her scream was filled with despair. Based on what he knew about her, 
She certainly cursed some people before she died. Then, he woke up with a start, his face covered in sweat. He sat on the bed and gasped for hair. Spending the whole night thinking, he finally figured out something. Why did Latani U become so different after she turned into a zombie? Her behavior, her personality, her way of doing things, and the vibe she gave out, everything about her was different. It was because the real Lutani U had died long ago. The one who turned into a zombie was not his sister. But, who was it? With that doubt, he started to find clues from his zombie sister. Why did she care so much about Lin Wenwin, Lin Feng, and the other Lin family people? She went all the way to Hades base to look for them first. Why was she able to communicate with you Aunt Anxing and the others with merely a look in the eye or a hand gesture? Why was she so persistent about building her own base? Feeing his mood swings, Lin Giao sighed and said, You've guessed out, haven't you? I want to hear you say it, said Lutani stubbornly. Without hearing her say it personally, he felt what he had found out was not true. He didn't want to believe it. However, Having false hope for too long made him feel not right. All the others had known about the truth but him. Wasn't that making him seem silly? Was he too weak to even find out the truth? He knew that the current Lutani U was keeping the truth from him out of goodwill. She was so powerful, she didn't need to worry that he might want to hurt her for occupying his sister's body. She didn't tell him the truth only because she didn't want him to be sad. However, he should wake up. No matter how great the false reality seemed like, it wasn't true. It would be gone sooner or later. The truth would always be the truth. Why? Lin Kiao looked at him and asked, isn't it nice to think of me as your sister? At least, I now think of you as one of my brothers. You are my sister, but not that sister. I can't think of you two as the same person. You are not my real sister, so at least, you should tell me who you really are. Is it necessary to keep lying to me? Not everyone wants to hear white lies. I only know that it's time for me to see the truth. Lutani erased the sadness from his face and wore that strangely peaceful look again. All right, if that's what you want. You are right. I'm not Lutani U. She had died indeed. I am Lin Kiao, the sister of Lin Wendwin, Lin Hao, and Lin Feng, the leader of Hades base. Lin Kiao died as well. But for some reason, she woke up in Lutani U's body, Lin Kiao had no choice but to tell the truth. She put the hair near her forehead to the back of her head and exposed her entire face. Lutani immediately raised his head to look straight at her. His eyes were unfocused, containing confusion, helplessness, and sadness. See, you wanted me to tell you. Now I've told you, and you're crying. Lin Kiao looked at him. Lutani automatically dropped his head to wipe his eyes. However, nothing was on his face, so he said grumpily, I'm not crying. Do zombies have tears? Lin Kiao rolled her eyes, then pointed a finger at his heart and said, Who said only tears mean you're crying? Your heart is shedding tears. Do you know that? Lutani lowered his head to look at his heart, then pressed his right hand in that area. I'm not crying. He still refused to admit. Lin Giao stood up and walked to his side, then patted him on the shoulder and said, You wanted the truth, I've told you what you wanted to know. As I've said, I'm still your sister. I see you as my second little brother. Well, having one more little brother isn't a problem for me at all. As for if you can see me as your sister, that's up to you. My body belonged to your sister, after all. You and me, we share the same blood. We are zombies with blood relations. Having finished talking, she retracted her hand and walked to the other side of the living room before disappearing, leaving Lutani sitting there alone, quietly. Lin Kiao came out of her space and felt relieved. She then looked at Xidong and the others who were standing before the cabin. A group of zombies was standing behind Xidong in a straight line. Mo was the only level 6 zombie among them. The rest were four zombie leaders, Jinyan. Yan Xiao, Liu Mingsong, and Liu Lai, the zombie number 5. Are they the only ones ready to upgrade? Lin Kiao looked at Xidong and asked. They're the ones who followed us out for the mission. There are some more among the ones who stayed to guard the base, and troop number 2 stationed outside. Lin Kiao nodded and said, M, I'll first help the five of them. It's 4 p.m. already. It's gonna be Teng's lunchtime in one hour. Mo will go first. Wait for a second. Something crossed her mind while she was speaking. She disappeared for a few minutes, 
and when she showed up again, a small bucket of milk was carried in her hand. Teng will be hungry at five. Warm this milk and feed him with it, Lin Giao said. After all, she didn't know how long she would be staying in the space helping Mo with the upgrade. Oh, sure. I get it, don't worry. He won't starve. Liu Jun smilingly took over the bucket from her hand. She needed to feed her own son anyway. Since Lin Giao was going to leave Ten in her place, she would, of course, feed that baby boy too. After hearing Liu Jun's response, Lin Giao walked to Mo and the others, Have you prepared your nuclei yet? The zombies nodded. Then, Lin Giao turned and said to Xi Dong, Maybe you should go first. Oh, ahem. Did you bring underwear? Apart from nuclei, you guys should prepare yourself some underwear as well because my lake is a bit lascivious. After saying that, she smilingly looked at the other zombies, who stayed silent. Meanwhile, Xi Dong didn't know what to say either, and Liu Jun couldn't help but cover her mouth and chuckle. Chapter 1216 they don't understand human language. While Lin Giao was busy upgrading her subordinates, Lin Wenwin, who had traveled to seven years ago, spent a night at the seaside and got up early the next morning for jogging. By the time she returned to the hotel, the sun had risen already. She walked through the lobby and took the elevator to her room, where she took a nice shower. After that, she put on a comfortable suit, picked up her phone and key and went downstairs to the restaurant for breakfast. Sinks in, over here. Someone called her name once she went in. She raised her head to find Qin Zhao waving at her. Seeing her, she slowly walked to the table and pulled out the only empty chair to sit down. We've eaten these, and they're cold. Order something new for yourself, Dong Liji said to her as she sat down, then turned to call the waiter. Lin Wenwin ordered something she liked and then started eating. Seeing the leftover food on the table and how lazy those people all were, she knew that they already had had breakfast. Eh? Xing Xin, didn't you bring your bag? Lin Yui looked at her up and down, then asked her a question. No, Lin Wenwin gave her a short answer. Aren't you bringing your clothes to the yacht? We're going out after breakfast. Do you plan to go upstairs to pick up your clothes after breakfast? Lin Yui said, I'm not going upstairs later, and I won't bring any clothes with me. Lin Wenwin took a sip of the delicious prawn porridge, then said with a bland tone, Why should she bring any clothes? She can wear what she's wearing now. Hearing Lin Yui ask Lin Wenwin about her clothes repeatedly, Dong Liji said with confusion, Oh, I'm just asking Xinxin if she wants to wear her swimsuit, because we girls have all brought our swimsuits. Didn't you guys bring your swim trunks? Kin Zhao explained for Lin Yui. She can wear anything she wants to wear. We aren't going to swim on the yacht anyway. We're just gonna do some barbecue, fishing, and enjoy the sea wind. What's so important about the swimsuit? Dong Lijia carelessly waved a hand. Kin Zhao and Lin Yui glanced at each other. They knew that they couldn't say too much at the moment or the others might detect their true purpose. They two of them also gave Lin Wenwin a glance with a fake smile, both seeming displeased. They gave her the fat girl swimsuit last night and spent a lot of time trying to talk her into wearing it. But unexpectedly, she didn't even bring it out of her room today. Since when did Dong Xin start to make decisions on her own? She used to do whatever they said. Had she found the problem with the swimsuit? That shouldn't be possible. No one would easily find out about that. Not to mention Dong Xin, who was sillier than normal people. Yeah, I wasn't planning on wearing a swimsuit today. It's so hot and sunny out there. Why should anyone be wearing a swimsuit? While speaking, Lin Wenwin reached out her chopsticks to pick a small steamed bun and put it into her mouth. Her words successfully darkened the faces of Qin Zhao and Lin Yui. The two girls soon hid their true expressions though. With an awkward smile, Qin Zhao looked at her and said, But didn't you agree to wear it last night? Lin Wenwin turned and looked at her as she said with confusion, When did I agree to wear it? I didn't even want that swimsuit, but you guys insisted on giving it to me. Right? That swimsuit is suitable for me indeed, but I don't like wearing clothes with poor quality. I like my clothes to be at least not so easy to break. Also, there's one thing I don't understand. Why do I have to wear a swimsuit as you said? I don't like wearing a swimsuit, 
and I'm not going to wear one. What's the problem with that? The fake smile on the two girls' faces faded as she said those words. The others all turned their eyes to the two girls. Lin Wenwin made it pretty clear that the two girls seemed to have some secret scheme against her. However, she didn't seem to care about those girls' little trick at all. In addition to that, she even tore that swimsuit apart. She said she wanted her clothes to at least be not so easy to break. That proved the fact that the swimsuit was already broken. It also indicated that someone might have done something to that swimsuit to make it break easily. The people who managed to figure out the truth instantly had a bad impression of Kin Zhao and Lin Yui. They were pretty but people didn't like girls who were too scheming. Dong Liji spent a short while looking at the two girls while thinking about something. He knew that they liked to give Dong Xinks in advice, but never thought about why they liked to do that. He thought they really saw her as their friend, a normal friend at least. But now, it turned out that he was wrong. No wonder they always tried to put some weird aesthetic standards in Dong Xinks's mind. Because of them, she grew fond of wearing tight dresses and heels. He never noticed what was wrong before. Under people's gazes, Kin Zhao and Lin Yui panicked a little. It's not like that. We were worried that you might be too shy to wear a swimsuit, also that you might have trouble finding one suitable for you. That's why we picked one for you. He he. You accidentally tore the swimsuit that we bought you? It's fine. We can always get you a new one. Kin Zhao tried to explain. Do you even understand human language? I've said that I won't wear one. Didn't you understand it? Get me a new one. Why would I want a new swimsuit since I'm not gonna wear it? To decorate my room? Lin Wenwin glanced at them disdainfully and said to them as if talking to two retarded people. Then, Lin Wenwin abruptly turned to Dong Lijia and the others as she said, Be careful when making friends especially girlfriends. Don't have your hearts and feet softened when you see just any pretty girl. At least, make sure your friends have brains. Clap. Kin Zhao exploded upon hearing what Lin Wenwin said to the others. She couldn't help but pound the table as she glared at Lin Wenwin and yelled, Donk sinks in. What do you mean? Are you saying that we have no brains? We've been seeing you as our friend and helping you all the time. Is that how you treat us now? SHHH. Easy, easy. Don't yell. People gave a start on hearing the noise Kin Zhao made. Luo Yuan Jun reached an arm toward her and tried to make her calm down. If you really saw me as your friend, you wouldn't be trying to turn me into a joke every day. Like I'd believe you, I'm full. You guys carry on. Dong Lijia, where is the yacht? Lin Wenwin said to Kin Zhao scornfully, then turned to Dong Lijia. I'm full too. I'll go with you. What about you guys? Dong Lijia stood up and glanced at the others, not including Kin Zhao and Lin Yui. The others all stood up and left the table. Only Kin Zhao and Lin Yui were left sitting there, their faces black as thunder. Chapter 1217, Get on the Yacht and Go Out to Sea After walking out of the restaurant together with Dong Lijia, Lin Wenwin moved closer to him and said, those two girls were only pretending to be friends with Dong Xinxin. Couldn't you see that? Dong Lijia first looked at her with surprise, then nodded knowingly and said, I didn't notice it before. But, Xinxin was really happy playing with them. She seemed to have become more outgoing too. That was why he accepted her playing with those girls. In fact, he wouldn't be meeting with those girls at all if it wasn't for her. He really couldn't tell that they were only pretending to be friends with Xinxin, and that they were probably doing that for some reason. But, why? They pretended to be friends with Xinxin, not out of goodwill. Did Xinxin ever displease them? Dong Lijia didn't understand. What else could it be? They just want to get close to you and me. Xinxin was used by them. She's your little sister after all. Deng Chenfei's bland voice was heard from behind. Dong Lijia turned and looked at Deng Chenfei, who was right behind him already. He then looked further behind and saw that the others had come out of the hotel as well. To get close to us? Hearing what Deng Chenfei said, Dong Lijia blinked his eyes. He thought for a moment and then found that the latter was right. Kin Zhao did like to talk to him, and Lin Yui always showed up around Deng Chenfei. They had seen a lot of girls like them. If the girls targeted them at the beginning, 
They would know since long ago. But, those two girls were quite smart. Instead of getting straight to them, they went to Dong Lijia's sister indeed. No wonder Kin Zhao seemed quite surprised when he first met her. She asked him if he had a sister named Dong Xingxin. He was surprised too back then, so he had a short chat with her. They didn't come out. Liu Yuan Jun looked back. He and the others had gone quite far away from the building, but the two girls were still in there. Do they still have the guts to come out? Didn't you see the look on their faces just now? I saw it. There was an obvious hatred on their faces when their scheme was exposed. Dong Lijia gave him a glare and said. Liu Yuan Jun shrugged and said, Women can really have some strange thoughts. Your thoughts are no less strange than theirs. By his side, Lin Wenwin rolled her eyes and said to him, Oi, what did I do to you this time? Why are you so mean to me? Liu Yuan Jun wasn't happy to hear that. Lin Wenwin gave him a cold glance. He immediately sensed a faint sting from his eyes, so he immediately shrank back. All right, do whatever you want. I'm a man. I don't fight girls, he said and turned his face away. They're not shameless enough to follow us this time, are they? Oh. What's about the swimsuit that you talked about earlier? Dong Lijia glanced back again, then turned and asked Lin Wenwin. Last night, they brought a swimsuit to my room and spent a long time trying to talk me into wearing it today on the yacht. The gauze dress on the swimsuit was glued, not waterproof. It looked fine when it was dry, but once it got wet, the gauze might fall off. I guess they planned to pour some water on me or shove me into the water and make it look like an accident when I'd be wearing it. The gauze would fall, and you guys would all see my fat belly, Lin Wenwin said as she turned her mouth corners down. They'd do something like that? Dong Lijia looked at her and asked, how would that benefit themselves? It seemed that they tried to find an excuse just now. Weren't they making use of Donk Sinksin? They had already gotten close to Donk Sinksin. They were pretending to be friends with her. What could they possibly gain by embarrassing her? Lin Wenwin glanced at him, but didn't say another word. They obviously just wanted to give vent to their dislike toward Donk Sinksin. They always looked at her the way people looked at a trash can. They didn't like Donk Sinksin. However, in order to get to know Dong Lijia and eventually become his wife, Qin Zhao forced herself to be friends with her, but in fact, she despised her. So, behind others' backs, she came up with some small tricks to embarrass her all the time. After all, she and Lin Yui felt happy watching her being embarrassed. The girl who was always quiet showed up beside Lin Wenwin and asked, you didn't see through their prank before. Why did you suddenly find out about it now? The girl came with the group yesterday, but she barely talked to Kin Zhao and Lin Yui. It seemed that she didn't know them well. She was more familiar with Xiao Hanfeng, the oil prince. Xiao Hanfeng invited her, after all. Hearing that question, Dong Lijia, Deng Chenfei, and Liu Yuan Jun immediately looked at Lin Wenwin with a complicated look on their faces. But in the next second, they all turned away. Lin Wenwin looked at the girl as she smiled and said, Someone has been giving me advice lately. I've woken up. Dong Xingxin, who had survived in the post-apocalyptic era for seven years, had woken up of course. If she didn't, all the pain she suffered in those seven years would be meaningless. The group of people found the rental company and rented a luxurious yacht that had a small swimming pool on it. After everything was prepared, they got onto the yacht. But before they all got onto the yacht, those two thick-skinned girls showed up again. Have you guys forgotten about us? Why didn't you call us? I'm so sad. Holding a beach umbrella, Lin Yui pouted as she looked at Dong Lijia and the other boys and complained. Lin Wenwin had gotten onto the yacht long ago. Hearing her voice, she turned back and gave the girl a glance, then couldn't help but roll her eyes. Those two girls were so cheeky. They actually showed up back in the restaurant. The atmosphere was so weird. Wouldn't it be weirder if they showed up on the yacht? Lin Wenwin ignored them and sat down in a corner, then took out her phone and started searching catmint online. She needed the fresh plants, so she had to find a plantation base. Purchasing fresh plants could be a little troublesome, and shipping would be a problem. Perhaps, she would need to go to the plantation base in person to purchase them. She searched online and found some contact information then started contacting the sellers through phone calls and online chatting software. 
Another thing was that she needed to borrow money from Dong Lijia again. She wouldn't pay him back, of course. With that thought, she quickly stood up and found Dong Lijia. He was standing by the guardrail on the deck together with Liu Yuan Jun. She walked to him and dragged him to the side. Lend me some more money, she whispered to him. What for? Dong Lijia asked her. I need the money to buy something. What else could it be? Lin Wenwin couldn't help but give him a glare. I know you need the money to buy things. I was asking you what are you going to buy? Dong Lijia was used to her unfriendly tone, so he responded to her in an unfriendly way as well. Chapter 1218, Purchase Catmint You don't need to know, Lin Wenwin refused to answer that question straightforwardly. Just give me the money as soon as you can. This is urgent. How much do you want? Dong Lijia lowered his head to look at her reluctantly. A million. I'll give you a refund if I don't spend it all, said Lin Wenwin. The boy was rich anyway, a million was nothing to him. Recently, he and his family had sold some of their properties and stocks at low prices. In the next two months, they would sell off everything they had and turn the money into all sorts of supplies. There was a long shopping list. Lin Wenwin told them to seal up the food and store it on or above the fifth floor instead of the ground floor and the basement. Dong Lijia took out his phone and transferred the money to Lin Wenwin through two different banks, then asked her with curiosity, what on earth do you need the money for? Thank you. You don't need to know. Lin Wenwin said to him, then went back into the cabin and started making calls. She contacted the owners of many plantation bases. Some of them had already taken orders. There wasn't too much left for her, and she wanted the plants to be fresh. Therefore, she placed orders on several bases. In a few days, she would need to go to those places to collect her goods. After what happened during the breakfast, Qin Zhao and Lin Yui had been avoiding Lin Wenwin all day but continued creating opportunities cheekily to talk to Dong Lijia and Deng Chenfei. As men, Dong Lijia and Deng Chenfei couldn't allow themselves to be too rude to the two girls. They rolled their eyes again and again while enduring those two tedious girls. In fact, only Dong Lijia's attitude had changed obviously. Deng Chenfei was never interested in those two girls, and he was always cold. So, his attitude didn't change much. The others were either playing with each other or watching the show that the two girls were staging. Lin Wenwin went fishing together with the other girl. At last, the girl actually fished an octopus while Lin Wenwin had caught quite some fishes as well. Seeing the two of them having a rich harvest, the others grew interested in fishing too. They each picked up a fishing pole, then sat together on the edge of the yacht. The yacht quietly floated in the sea hundreds of meters away from the beach. While fishing, they started a barbecue on the yacht. The fishes they caught were put directly on the grill. They showered in the sunlight for the whole morning. They had applied sun oil, but their skins were still tanned a little. After enjoying fishing and barbecue, they returned to the beach in the afternoon and had another seafood meal in the restaurant. On the third day, they took flights back home. Lin Wenwin didn't go home with them but flew to another province. Where is she going? Luo Yuanjun walked to Dong Lijia and asked him a question after watching her hop onto the plane without them. I don't know, Dong Lijia was looking at his computer. He didn't even raise his head when answering the question. Come on, you seem to have known what's going on since long ago. Tell me, what on earth is going on with her? Luo Yuanjun rubbed his eye sockets and said to Dong Lijia. He still remembered the conversation that happened between Lin Wenwin, Deng Chenfei, and himself that night. Dong Lijia's fingers, which were moving on the touchpad, paused briefly. He looked at Liu Yuan Jun, then at Deng Chenfei, who sat in front of him. After thinking for a moment, he said, I'm afraid that you wouldn't believe me. Just forget about it. Deng Chenfei looked at him and pondered briefly then turned and made eye contact with Liu Yuan Jun. Dong Lijia and his sister had really been weird lately. Lin Wenwin landed at the airport, then took a taxi to her destination. About an hour later, she arrived in a town, where a middle-aged man was expecting her. The man was a little surprised when he saw her. He wasn't expecting such a young client, are you, Miss Dong? The middle-aged man stood before his store as he watched Dong Xingxin get off the car. With hesitation, he walked up to her and asked. Lin Wenwin nodded and said, Yes, I am. Are you Mr. Huang? Yes. 
Mr. Huang nodded. Only when Lin Wenwin said his family name did Mr. Huang confirm that she was really the client. So, he politely shook hands with her. Can you please show me your nursery garden? Have you prepared what I ordered? Lin Wenwin asked straightforwardly. Mr. Huang looked at her with surprise. The girl looked only about 17, but her tone of speaking sounded rather mature. He nodded quickly and said, Yes, please follow me. I'll drive you there. It's just a few miles away. Lin Wenwin sat into the back seat of Mr. Huang's SUV. After about 10 minutes of driving, they arrived at a large nursery garden in the suburban area, with many ornamental plants planted there. Mr. Huang's plantation base was large. His business was going quite well, and he had a lot of loyal customers. Lin Wenwin held her bag as she followed Mr. Huang into the garden. After a few minutes of walking, she saw a series of single-story buildings. Mr. Huang pointed at one of the buildings and said with a smile, We were going to sell this batch of cat mint to a pharmaceutical factory. But, the factory closed down recently. So, we planned to provide the batch to another factory. Unexpectedly, you placed the order before them. Thank you. I am in urgent need of cat mint. I'll keep purchasing cat mint in the next few days. If you can spare a certain amount from your next batch. Please let me know. I'll take it. Lin Wenwin said to him with a smile. Walking to the building, Mr. Huang opened the door. Behind the door were over ten bags of well packed cat mint. Mr. Huang opened each bag to show Lin Wenwin the cat mint in it, then told his people to seal the bags again. After placing the final payment, Lin Wenwin put the cat mint bags on Mr. Huang's car, who drove a car to the town, where she asked him to send her to a remote crossroad on the way to the city and then drop her and the catmint there. After that, she told Mr. Huang, who was very worried about the safety of the little girl and the catmint, to leave. Next, she put the catmint into her space while nobody was around. In her mind, Dong Xingxin finally couldn't help but ask her the question, What do you need so much catmint for? Lin Wenwin walked toward the city which was only miles away. While walking, she answered Dong Xingxin's question, I'm bringing them back to the post-apocalyptic era. Is there a special effect of the catmint? Donk Sinkson asked. Otherwise, why would she want to bring so much catmint from the past to the future? Yeah, said Lin Wendwin, the catmint might be mankind's last hope for survival. How do you know that? Donk Sinkson was even more confused. You might know the answer in seven years, said Lin Wendwin. I think we'll see each other again when I get back to the future. Perhaps, Donk Sinkson said. Chapter 1219, Donk Sinkson woke up. Lin Wenwin traveled to a few places in a row and purchased over a thousand kilograms of catmint. Every time, she asked someone to drive her and the catmint to a remote area, then secretly put it into her space. Apart from the catmint, she had also bought quite some seeds to plant in her sister's space when she got back to the future. Her own space was only able to store things, as there was no water and soil for plants to grow. As she asked, Dong Lijia didn't let the bodyguards follow her. It would be inconvenient for her to put things into her space with the bodyguards following her everywhere. Therefore, the guards were all sent back to the family's mansion. A few days later, Lin Wenwin returned to Dong family. The apocalypse would come in less than 70 days. After coming home, she continued losing weight for Dong Xingxin's body. After the training that she had done in the past tens of days, she now felt that her body had grown some muscles. Her body was no longer as soft and weak as the first day. Recently, she had dreams every night. What she saw in her dreams were mostly the post-apocalyptic scenes. She saw sands all over the sky, deserted, empty cities, dark, cloudy sky, broken, messy buildings and streets. She also saw zombies with twisted faces and rotten skins slowly wandering all over the world, and the mutated beasts flashing across mutated woods by the roadsides. Countless images that were familiar and strange to her at the same time overlapped in her mind. Because of those, she woke up upset every single morning. Normally, only in the afternoon would she feel slightly better. What's happening to you lately? You seem more and more upset since you came back during lunch. Dong Lijia looked at Lin Wenwin and couldn't help but ask her. Yeah? You look sallow these days. I something wrong with Xing Xin's body? Hearing Dong Lijia's question, 
Mrs. Dong dropped her chopsticks and looked at her daughter too. Earlier, Mr. and Mrs. Dong were told that another soul was existing in Dong Xing Xin's body. After spending so many days processing that, they finally managed to accept it. Facing a totally strange person who wore their daughter's skin, Mr. and Mrs. Dong felt utterly weird. However, they still cared for her. That was their daughter's body after all. To them, Lin Wenwin was like another personality of their daughter. They could not ignore her completely. M, I am fine. I haven't been sleeping well lately. Xingxin is fine. She's healthy. Oh, she asked me to tell you guys that she's much better now. She might be able to take turns with me to control this body soon. Your daughter will come back to you, Lin Wenwin who was eating in a daze, spend a few seconds to realize that the questions were for her. So, are you going to leave soon? Mr. Dong looked at her and asked. I'm not sure. Lin Wenwin shook her head and said, I haven't even figured out what happened to me yet. Maybe I'll have to wait longer. Dong Lijia and his parents looked at each other, then nodded and continued eating their food. After lunch, Lin Wenwin spent a short while strolling in the backyard. While she was walking, everything suddenly turned black, and then she felt the world turning upside down. The two bodyguards who were following not far away behind her both rushed up to her when she fell. Miss Dong. They found Dong Xingxin passed out with her eyes closed tight. Lin Wenwin felt being dazzled, and then she saw a room. The room had no window or door. The walls, floor, and ceiling all had a weird texture not like something often seen at all. The room was only tens of meters square, completely empty. A woman was lying in the middle of the room. The moment Lin Wenwin saw the woman, she felt a suction force coming from her. In the next second, she was pulled into the woman's body. It was her own body, that was the first thought that popped in her mind. However, after entering her own body, she still couldn't wake up. She sensed energy waves from her brain, then felt as if something was trying to surge out of her head. Only letting that something out might make her feel better. A. Eh? Was she upgrading? That feeling wasn't strange to her, that was a sign of upgrading. However, in order to make the breakthrough, she needed a good amount of energy coming from the outside. Therefore, she immediately took a level 3 beast nucleus out of her space and held it to absorb it. Dong Xingxin woke up to find the ceiling that she was looking different from before. It was no longer blurry, but so clear. Before, she saw the world like how people saw a 3D movie without the glasses. The things she saw were flat, blurry, unreal. But now, everything she saw was so clear and real. What did that mean? Dong Xingxin's eyes instantly glowed. In the next second, she felt her body and limbs. She turned and looked at her parents and brother, then hurriedly sat up. The three were looking at her nervously. Seeing her wake up, they said to her with concern, How are you feeling? Are you all right? Before they could finish, Dong Ligia suddenly sat up and put her arms around Dong Ligia, who was right by the bedside, and burst in tears. Brother, I am back. Ah. Dong Ligia was startled by her sudden movement and loud cry. But then, Upon hearing her words and sensing her tone, he stopped short and lowered his head to look at Dong Xingxin with surprise. Zyke Xingxin. Dong Xingxin raised her head to look at him with tearful eyes as she bit her lip and nodded quickly. Seeing that look on her face which couldn't be more familiar to him, Dong Lijia got a little choked up as well. Mr. and Mrs. Dong glanced at each other with surprise, then realized what had happened. After giving Dong Lijia a hug, Dong Xingxin pushed him away then lifted the blanket and got off the bed to hug her mother. Mom, it's me. I am back. This is so great. I can finally hold you guys. You are all alive. Mrs. Dong automatically held her. She had been affected by Dong Xingxin's strong emotions. She patted her daughter's back and comforted her. There, there, don't cry. What do you mean that we're all alive? Haven't we all been fine? At that point, Dong sinks and finally calmed down a little. She realized that she was a little too emotional. She adjusted herself and wiped the tears off her face, then sobbed and said, M, no, you, you died after the apocalypse. Everyone else died. Only Luo Yu and Jun and I survived at last. Chapter 1220 Wake up in turns. Lin Wenwin absorbed one level 3 nucleus and two level 4 nuclei in a row then suddenly felt relieved as the surging energy inside her brain all shrank back into her nucleus. Then, 
she suddenly opened her eyes and sat up on the ground, she stood up and looked around, then walked to the wall nearby and touched it, the wall is had a strange texture, it was as cold and hard as glass, there was no window, or even a door, the room had no air vent at all, but she could still breathe, what was happening, was that room Donk Sinks in's space, Donk Sinks in had told Lin Wen Win that her body was in her space, now, since Lin Wen Win had returned to her own body, had the same thing happened to Donk Sinks in, what should she do now, could she go back to the future already, she didn't think so, Donk Sinks in didn't seem to have fully recovered, Lin Wen Win assumed that Donk Sinks in had returned to her own body, but didn't know how long she could stay there, perhaps, Lin Wen Win needed to stay in her space so she could take over the latter's body when she was exhausted, after figuring that out, Lin Wen Win sat down and took a book as well as a pack of sunflower seeds, along with a small flashlight out of her own space, she decided to spend some time reading, Donk Sink Sin's space was very dark, so Lin Wen Win could only read under the light of the flashlight, at that time, Donk Sink Sin had calmed down under her parents comforting and sat back on the bed, she was so thrilled just now, which had consumed her energy largely, so now, she looked a little tired, Donk Sink Sin sat on the bed and said to her family peacefully, the one who was in my body before is another girl from the future, there might be some kind of connection between her and me that caused me to bring her back from the future, when I fully recover, I'll have to send her back to seven years from now, her parents and brother looked at her in shock, Dong Liji stared at her the way he would stare at an alien and said, you can send people to seven years from now, are you a time machine, you're a machine, Donk Sinkson picked up a pillow to hit him, but then, she weakly dropped her shoulders and said, it'll happen in about 70 days, brother, get me a pen and paper, I'll write you a name list, bring those people to our place in any way, you can lie to them or kidnap them, and, there are some people in our family we can't allow to stay, Donk Sinkson had a sad look on her face when she said the last few words, those people couldn't stay in the family because they would turn into zombies, the old butler was one of them, on hearing her words, the other three figured something out, they glanced at each other, then grew sad as well, they understood that the people on Dong Sink Sin's name list were all trustworthy who would survive the apocalypse day, Dong Ligia found a notebook and a pen from Dong Sink Sin's desk, then let her write, Mr and Mrs Dong made eye contact with each other, they wanted to ask Dong Sink Sin about what would happen in the future, however, Recalling what she said earlier and how emotional she was, they gave up on that idea. Since their daughter was from the future, she surely knew what would happen in the next seven years. As her parents, they only needed to follow her instructions. While writing, Donk sinks and said to them, There are some other people. I will try to help you guys avoid them in the future. If one day you guys meet any of them, you should try your best to stay away from them for your own safety. Don't we still have two months? Dong Ligia finally asked a question, isn't it too early to find these people now? In the last half a month, we need to leave this place for Sea City, said Dong Sink Sin, because there will be a base for survivors. We need to get there in advance. Also, we need to separate the supplies that we now have and hide them in different places. We can't take them all with us. Then, she raised her head and looked at Dong Lijiu as she said to him, brother, you do that first, divide those supplies into small batches, the smaller the better, hide them anywhere you can find, the hiding spots can't be more than 300 miles away from Sea City though, hiding supplies in separate places was a good thing, after all, if the supplies were hidden in just one place, one accident could ruin it all, sure, I'll do it, Dong Lijiu nodded and said, remember, hide them in high buildings and seal them up, Donk sinks in thought for a moment and added, she finished the name list and tore the page off, handing it to her family as she said, this is the name list, the ones on top are relatively far away from us, go for them first, however, while she was handing the piece of paper to Dong Ligia, she suddenly tilted her head and fell into silence even without finishing her words, the name list drifted off her hand and fell on the bed, sinks in, the three gave a start and hurriedly came closer to the Donk Sinksin, they held her and found that she had passed out again, at the same time, Lin Wendwin, who was eating sunflower seeds while reading a book under the flashlight, 
froze for a moment and then fell to the ground. The flashlight rolled away on the ground, and the book fell on her chest. She woke up to feel bright light, then saw the ceiling in Dong Xinxin's bedroom again. Xinxin? Dong Lijia's voice was heard. Lin Wenwin turned and saw Dong Lijia and his parents standing at the bedside, looking at her. I'm not her she sat up and said to the three, then pressed her temples with her fingers, feeling dizzy. On hearing what she said, the three instantly wore disappointment on their faces. Lin Wenwin understood what had happened. Dong Xinxin was back. Wasn't she? How long did she stay for? She remembered reading the big half of the book in that small space. She spent at least one and a half hour. Less than ten minutes, Dong Lijia said. At the same time, he felt relieved. Thankfully, the other person in Dong Xinxin's body wasn't a man. Earlier, Dong Xinxin told him that she was a girl, which made him feel relieved. Eh? Less than ten minutes? Lin Wenwin was surprised. Is something wrong? Mrs. Dong couldn't help but ask the question with a mild tone. Lin Wenwin looked at Mrs. Dong as she shook her head and said, Oh, nothing. I guess we are both in a special condition. We have different time perception. Chapter 1221, One Month Left. How are you feeling now? Are you feeling any discomfort? Mrs. Dong sat on the end of the bed and looked at her. Lin Wenwin shook her head and said, I am fine. I'm just a little tired. Take some rest then. We'll leave. Mr. Dong glanced at Dong Lijia and Mrs. Dong, then said to Lin Wenwin with a smile. Mrs. Dong stood up and walked out of the room together with Dong Lijia before closing the door from outside. Lin Wenwin sighed as she lay down and closed her eyes to rest. This time, she didn't have a dream. She slept for a few nice hours and woke up at dinner time. Then, she energetically got off the bed to look for food. Dong Xinxin hadn't written down the names of the people needed to be avoided in the future. Her family decided to ask the soul who was in Dong Xinxin's body now. She might be able to ask her about it and help her write down the name list. Oh and Helip, um, we don't know your name yet. After all, you're not Xinxin. Since Dong Xinxin's family learned what had happened to her, the atmosphere between Lin Wenwin and them had been a little weird. They had been trying their best to avoid talking to each other. They ate at the same table, but rarely talked to each other, and hardly called each other. Only Dong Lijia would call Lin Wenwin Oi or Xinxin sometimes. But, he felt as if he was calling another girl whose name was also Xinxin instead of his little sister when he did that. Lin Wenwin looked at Mrs. Dong who was looking at her and said with a grin, Call me when. I'm only a few years older than Xinxin. Oh, okay. When, A and Helip, we heard that Xinxin sometimes talks to you. Can you ask her for a name list? She might tell it to you. She fell asleep before she could give us the name list. With a humble smile, Mrs. Dong asked for Lin Wenwin's help. Sure, but I think she's resting now. I think she'll give me the name list once she wakes up, if it's important. Lin Wenwin nodded. In the next few days, Dong Liji started dividing the supplies up and shipping them out of the city to store in different places. Meanwhile, Mr. Dong sent out his men to look for the people who had their names and features and home addresses on the list that Dong Liji provided. Lin Wenwin continued exercising Dong Xinxin's body. Many clothes which were tight before had now become loose as she was losing weight. This time, Dong Xinxin rested for a few days. When she woke up, she asked Lin Wenwin to write down a name list for her father. I guess these people were meant to bring bad luck to you and your family. After learning about the name list, Lin Wenwin gave a sigh. Being able to foresee the future was great. Dong Xinxin at least knew what would happen to her and her family in the next seven years, and was able to avoid ending up like she did the last time. I can only say that without the law, the world would be ruled by the primitive jungle law again. Nature doesn't restrain the desires of living beings. Humans have the strongest desires among all. For survival, no one would care about morality anymore, said Dong Xinxin with a cold voice. Another month later, when there was only one month left, Lin Wenwin managed to lose 10 kilograms for Dong Xinxin. She was still short, but no longer looking like a ball. She looked much smaller in size than before. She was much healthier than before, and her muscles had grown strong. During the past month, Dong Xinxin woke up in her own body three times, 
and the span of time that she could stay awake grew longer every time. However, every time she fell asleep again, she would sleep for days before waking up in Lin Wenwin's mind. That day, Lin Wenwin ran into Dong Lijia when she came out of the gym. Seeing the speechless look on his face, she couldn't help but say to him, Did you visit those people again? Why did you make yourself unhappy? Are you dumb? She was talking about the people who had been forcibly brought to Dong family by Mr. Dong. Those people would, of course, not treat Dong family people friendly as they kidnapped them without telling them anything. They would figure it out when the apocalypse happened. By that time, they would thank Dong family people for kidnapping them. Those people were the ones who helped. Dong sinks in after the apocalypse but didn't end well. There were only about ten of them. The number was small, so Dong sinks in decided to gather them before the apocalypse. First, those people could be protected in that way, and second, they would become helpful. I just wanted to comfort them. I don't want them to get too emotional. But, none of them listened to me. Apart from limiting their freedom, I'm actually quite nice to them, right? Dong Lijia complained. Lin Wenwin looked at him, prepared to turn and leave. But suddenly, a picture with Dong Lijia in it flashed across her mind. In the picture, he was shooting a herd of weird creatures with a strange gun. She stood walking and looked at Dong Lijia's back as she fell into deep thoughts. Those weird creatures looked very much like the ones that she had seen before in her mind. What kind of gun was he holding? Why wasn't he using his superpower? She had no idea when would that happen. In the picture, he looked rather practiced with the gun, unlike a young man who newly survived in the post-apocalyptic era. Was that an image from seven years later? At least, that kind of gun didn't emerge within the seven years that Lin Wenwin had experienced. What's wrong? While walking, Dong Lijia noticed that Lin Wenwin wasn't moving, but was staring at the back of his head. When? Oi, stop staring at me. Aren't we going for the meal or not? As Lin Wenwin didn't react, Dong Lijia called her again. Lin Wenwin heard him, so she turned down her mouth corners and said, You are not calling me when. I'm three years older than you are. Do you know that? Who cares? Stay here if you want. Dong Lijia carelessly waved at her, then turned and left. Lin Wenwin was irritated. She felt so annoyed and she wanted to punch somebody so much. And Helip, while she was waiting for the apocalypse to happen, and for Dong Xinxin to recover fully and send her back to the future, Lin Giao in all beings base made Xidong and the other zombies go into the lake nakedly one after another and then upgraded them. Xidong successfully entered level 7, while Jinyan, Yan Xiao, Liu Lai, and the others broke into level 6. During the daytime, Lin Giao needed up upgrade the high-leveled zombies and also deal with the work in the base, because Lin Feng had already gone to see city base. Apart from those, she also needed to spare some energy to look after her son and suppress the dark energy inside Yu Dan Xing's body. Without Yu Dan Xing's help, she was as busy as a bee. Chapter 1222, Going to Huexia Base or Not After returning to Sea City, Wu Cheng Ayu had been paying close attention to the underground creatures that had shown up near Sea City Base. He had been sending out his men to collect information about those creatures, while trying to figure out their features and weaknesses, he had also been trying to find out about Huexia Base's recent movements. Huexia Base had called for a grand meeting and invited all base leaders to talk about the underground creatures, who knew if they would play some other tricks under the cover of the meeting. Mankind needed to unite to win the war. But, judging by Si Kongjin's previous behavior, he might grasp the opportunity to stab Sea City Base in the back while everyone else was fighting against the underground creatures and destroy Sea City base. After all, Si Kongjin's true purpose would only be keeping Huexia base safe, he wouldn't want to help anyone else. He called for the grand meeting and invited the other base leaders to talk about those enormous, dangerous underground creatures, because he was seeking to find out if those creatures had anything in common, or if the others knew something crucial that he didn't know yet. At the moment, Wu Cheng Ayu, Xiao Yunlong, Zhu Xiyui, and a few deputy chiefs were having a meeting. Si Kong Chen called for the meeting and said that the leaders of all bases should get together to see if there's any way to defeat those creatures. However, he didn't give a specific time when the meeting will take place. It's not gonna be a simple meeting, is it? 
Xiao Yunlong furrowed his brows and said while reading a copy of the invitation. Zhu Xiyui nodded in agreement. That's what I'm thinking. I think we shouldn't go. If we went for the meeting, either the ones who attended the meeting or our base might be facing danger. Si Kongjin won't be able to do anything to us if we refuse to go. But, all the other bases will attend the meeting, right? Besides, Si Kongjin only invited us to talk about underground creature crisis. It's a perfectly reasonable excuse to call for the meeting. Wouldn't it seem a little inappropriate if we don't attend to the meeting? Xiao Yanlong was going to agree with Zhu Xiyui, but he thought for a moment, and then found it to be a little inappropriate. At that moment, Wu Chengai Wu joined the conversation. Today, I heard the news that the last batch of Earth Dragon base residents were attacked by some unknown creatures. None of them survived. Also, Sky Fire Base was under the attack of two different types of enormous insects which were never seen before. Currently, Great numbers of Sky Firebase people are fleeing toward Quexia Base. This proves that the underground creature crisis has reached a new level. Which base will be attacked the next? I'm not saying that Zoo is wrong. If we go for the meeting, Sea City Base might be in danger, but the meeting might also provide us with a gleam of hope. After all, the discussion that Sea Kong Jin mentioned will happen for real. More people greater power. The research about underground creatures that they had been doing in their own base wasn't making great progresses. Exchanging information with the other bases might create a better chance. If they didn't go to the meeting, they might miss some important information. In the post-apocalyptic era, any piece of information could lead to a chance of survival. Si Kong Jin was not a good guy for sure but they still needed to attend to the meeting. So soon, a big half of Sky Firebase people survived earlier, right? There were at least 200,000 people Zhu Xiyui looked at Wu Cheng Ayu and said with surprise. All the others were surprised to hear what Wu Cheng Ayu said about Sky Firebase as well. Wu Cheng Ayu nodded and said, Yes, I believe small numbers of survivors from the West will join our base or All Beings base in a few days. Most of them are heading to Huexia base, but Huexia base's entry requirement didn't drop because of the change of environment. For that reason, only a few people could afford to enter Huexia base. Most of the commoners had no way to provide Huexia base with the nuclei or supplies required for their entrance. .com. The others soon thought of the same thing. After all, that had happened many times before. See, are we going to Huexia base this time? Who's gonna go? Said Xiao Yunlong. The journey to Huexia base would be dangerous, so whoever would be attending the meeting could not be weak. Me, of course, said Wu Cheng Ayu, who's better than me for the job. People found that reasonable. But in the next second, Wu Cheng Ayu turned to ask Xiao Liking, the woman from all beings base will go too, won't she? On hearing that, the others wore complicated expressions. So, did he ask to go because his future wife would go too? With his eye corners twitching slightly, Xiao Liking looked at Wu Cheng Ayu and said, I heard she's planning to go. She'll also bring your son with her. Oh, said Wu Cheng Ayu blandly and smilingly, see, she's going to be there. So we don't need to worry about any trick that Si Kong Jin might play. Except for Xiao Yunlong and Kong Kingming, the other few guys who were all single grew super jealous. Seeing that sweet smile on his face. All right, all right, we get it. Go. Zhu Xiyui waved at him and said, bring your wife and son back home safely. Currently, no underground creatures are found very close to our base. So we are luckier than the other bases. Those creatures from Lake Tai and those weird fire beasts from Minan province are quite far away from us. We should still pay attention to the seaside area though. I don't think the sea is gonna stay peaceful, Wu Cheng Ayu said while holding another report. Thankfully, those blind creatures near All Beings base had all gone to the West Lake area. Otherwise, we'd have something more to worry about. However, the underground cave could still be a problem. We don't know what's in there yet. Xiao Yunlong read the report and sighed with relief. But soon, he continued with a worried look, I wonder when will you Yuan get better? Wu Cheng Ayu nodded and said, based on the information provided by all beings base, there are some aquatic creatures in the underground lake in the cave. We don't know if those things will come to the surface. Yu Aunt and Xing had sealed that place off but he didn't check the other side of the lake. Hopefully, those creatures will stay in the lake. Oh, 
a red creature showed up near all beings base lately, right? I heard it's from the underground too. How come Miss Lu doesn't seem to do anything about it? Xiao Yunlong thought of the red cat, so he looked at Wu Cheng Ayu with curiosity, and then at Xiao Liking. Among all in the room, the two of them had spent the longest time in all beings base, and learned the most about those underground creatures. Coincidentally, just as he mentioned the red cat, the red cat visited all beings base once again. Chapter 1223 The big cat is here again. In the zombie military base, Kulilai rushed in while Lin Giao was having a meeting with the high leveled zombies who were newly upgraded. Giao 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 The big red cat is here again. She excitedly stormed into the conference room and shouted at Lin Giao completely ignoring the other zombies on the scene as her long pigtails fluttered in the air. Lin Kiao turned to her and said, it's here, okay. Why are you so excited? Did it attack you? No. Kulila shook her head. Did it attack anyone else? Lin Kiao asked. No. Kulila shook her head again. It didn't attack the base either. Did it? Lin Kiao said. Once again, Kulila shook her head and said, no, it didn't. Why are you so excited then? Lin Kiao looked at her, feeling a little confused. Tell me, what did it do? It brought a large bird to the gate. Now, it's sitting beside the bird, looking at the wall of our base. It's not leaving, said Kulilai bewilderedly. Huh? How large is the bird? said Lin Kiao. It put a bird by the base gate and then looked at the gate without showing a sign of leaving. That really sounded like something that a house cat would do. Kulilai folded her arms and raised a hand to scratch her chin with her fingers, then thought for a moment and said, It's a mutated bird, larger than the six-footed cat. It's still alive, but the cat was pressing it with two paws so it couldn't fly. Lin Kiao turned to look at the others. The others looked as confused as she was. She then looked at the report held in his hand. There was still a small part left to be talked about. She thought for a moment, then turned to say to Kulilai, go and keep an eye on it, and see what it wants. If it keeps sitting there, just let it. Let's see how long it'll be sitting there. Maybe it'll leave if we don't respond to it. Last time, she observed the weird cat. It didn't show any intention of attacking people, and it only ate fruits. Lin Kiao had no idea why it brought a bird to sit in front of the base gate, but she figured it wouldn't launch an attack, as it hadn't even been moving. Are we going to close that gate? Everyone is freaked out by that cat, Kulilai thought briefly and asked. Lin Kiao turned and said to Ju An Wan, who was standing behind her. Go and seal that gate. Tell the people who need to exit the base to go through the other gates. Yes, ma'am. Du An Wan answered quickly and then left. I'm going to keep an eye on it. Kulilai turned and ran out of the room. Lin Giao glanced at Kulilai's back, then turned to Xidong and the others and said, All right, let's continue. So everyone, remember this. Choose the ones who give out relatively light blood scent when you recruit new soldiers. As you all know, their zombies with strong blood scent aren't suitable for joining us. Yes, ma'am. The others responded in one voice. Another thing, I'll bring some other people to Huexia base this time. You guys have just come back. You will be staying in the base, stabilizing your power levels, and also watching the surrounding area for any new underground creatures. If new underground creatures show up, Jinyan, go and ask Leng Tong for the drug. Currently, we can't turn the drug into weapons because we are short-handed. We have to ask Sea City Base for help. It still needs time. Hopefully, our base will stay safe until the first batch of weapon arrives. The last part of Lin Giao's speech was simply a good wish. Clear, Jin Yun nodded. This time, Xidong and Mo were the only two zombies who broke into level 7 from level 6. The other level 6 zombies weren't ready for an upgrade yet. So they had to wait. Except for Jin Yun, Liu Mingsong, Yang Xiao and Liu Lai, some more had entered level 6 from level 5. That included the zombie guy and zombie girl who followed Kulilai the earliest, and were now Jin Jiu Yang, zombie number 1, and Yu Xioxian, zombie number 2 respectively. Finally, Lin Kiao managed to bring her earliest zombie followers all into level 6 which was not easy. The other three zombies who were brought into the level of kings and queens were Elvi Feng, He Jie Yun, 
and Su Fangfen, they had all restored their memories fully, apart from them, one of the zombies under Xidong's command had also upgraded, that was the one who discovered those mutated rats, and was super afraid of them, Lin Kiao didn't upgrade all level 4 zombies, because their credits weren't enough and she didn't have so much time, therefore, she only, conveniently upgraded the wind powered level 4 zombie, who was scared of rats, that one was so shy when he was required to take off his clothes and get into the water, at last, Xidong kicked him into the lake, one last thing, we need to guard the farm more strictly, don't pay all attention on those underground creatures and forget about the farm, the farm is one key protected project in our base, Xidong, sent some earth powered zombies to guard the farm and keep an eye on the underground area, we need to be prepared for anything that might happen, Lin Kiao knocked on the table and said, yes, mom, Xidong responded, he was fully responsible for the farm, after another half hour, Lin Kiao finally ended the meeting, she came out of the conference room and walked into the room next door, scooped up Tang, who was sleeping tight, then got into her car, let's go to the gate, to see what's that weird cat is doing, with a gentle voice, she said to Ju An Wan, who was driving the car, Du An Wan raised her eyes and glanced at the rear view mirror, she didn't make a sound to respond to Lin Kiao, but the latter knew that she had heard the order, she just didn't want to wake Tang up, knowing that, she turned to look outside the window, at that moment, a huge, red cat was sitting tight on the clearing outside the west gate, under the cat's paws was a bird that was even larger than the cat, the gate was already closed, a group of people was standing on top of the fence wall, looking at the two creatures, the bird had been flatting its enormous wings and struggling, however, no matter how hard it tried, it was not able to free itself from under the cat's paws, when it struggled too hard, the cat would pop its sharp claws and poke them into the bird's body, those claws couldn't kill that level 5 mutated bird, therefore, the bird was still alive when Lin Kiao arrived, raw, sensing Lin Kiao's scent coming closer and closer, the big cat instantly grew excited, it quickly stood up, behind its body, the over 10 meter long, whip like tail was wagging from side to side. Chapter 1224, it brought a bird as a gift, Lin Kiao held Tang and slowly walked up to the wall top through the stairs, then went to the edge to look at the weird cat, raw goo -oo as Lin Kiao showed up on the wall top, the cat raised its head and made a strange sound toward her, then, it lowered its head and bit on the bird under it, dragging the desperately struggling bird, it made two steps forward, and then put the bird down, it might have bitten too deep, the bird struggled on the ground, trying to fly up, but couldn't, it's really like a real cat, and, it only likes you, watching the cat's weird behavior, Kulilai moved to Lin Kiao and said to her, she had spent half an hour observing the cat, it sat there motionlessly until Lin Kiao showed up, at that time, Teng, who was in Lin Kiao's arms, sensed a strange scent, he woke up and opened his eyes, finding himself in his mother's arms, he looked around, realizing that he was somewhere high, with a wide view, he turned to the source of the weird scent and saw a fire red beast, a woo -oo -oo -goo -oo -oo -goo. at that point, the weird cat roared at Lin Kiao again, it also pushed the bird slightly forward, after that, it abruptly turned around and flipped its tail, bending its six legs before springing up and disappearing, only the bird was left lying on the ground dying, twitching its wings from time to time, ah, it left, Kulilai exclaimed out loud, she popped her eyes and slightly opened her mouth, gazing where the cat disappeared, then, she looked at the bird on the ground, it left the bird to us and then ran away, is that bird a gift for us, is it, while speaking, she turned to look at Lin Kiao questioningly, Lin Kiao glanced at her uncertainly, then looked outside the base and said, I think so, Teng noticed some strangers nearby, so he didn't say anything, all he did was rub his own eyes, then put his arms around Lin Kiao's neck, following his movement, Lin Kiao adjusted her posture, then gave him a glance and asked, have you rested well, Tang held her neck and buried his head back into his chest without answering her question, what should we do with that bird, Kulilai asked Lin Kiao, Lin Kiao handed Tang to her as she said, Tang, 
Sister Lilai will hold you, I'll go down to bring the bird in. Kulilai reached out and took the soft baby over without thinking. Then she watched Lin Kiao leap off the wall and land beside the bird. As she touched the bird, it disappeared. All right, you can open the gate now. Du An Wan turned and shouted at the gate. Yes, mom. The leader of the guards responded, then sent his men to open the gate. Lin Kiao came back onto the wall top and held Teng. Let's head home. Did it come here just to deliver the bird? Kulilai followed behind Lin Kiao as she asked curiously. Perhaps, Lin Kiao responded to her without thinking. However, she was actually wondering why the cat brought a bird to her. Was that a gift? Why did it give her a gift? The cat didn't eat meat, did it? Why did it bring her meat then? Soon, the news that the weird cat brought a huge bird to the west gate spread in the base. People were all so surprised to hear about it and curious why the cat did that. Have you guys heard about it yet? A six-footed, blood-red, hairless cat brought a huge bird to our base. If only the bird weren't mutated. It's like the house cats that we had in our homes before. They brought home little birds or rats occasionally. What does that weird cat want? Who knows? But, I heard it didn't show any intention of attacking our base. It's the first time I heard about such a friendly mutated beast. But, I also heard it's very ugly. How do you know that? I know a guy who's guarding the gate. He said the cat is enormous, with no hair, dark red in color. That sounds super ugly. Oh, it also has a pair of horns and extra long teeth. As Lin Kiao went back home, Teng said to her, Mama, I think that cat likes you. How do you know? Lin Kiao looked at him and asked with surprise. Can you read its mind? Lin Kiao sat down on the couch. After that, Ten crawled to the other side of the couch and sat down, leaning against the back of the couch. No, he said to his mother, I can't read its mind, but I can feel its vibe. It was trying to make you happy. Do you know why it did that? Lin Kiao smiled and asked. She herself could also tell that the cat was acting like a normal house cat that was trying to make its owner happy. She just didn't know why. She thought for a moment. She didn't remember doing anything for the cat. What made it follow her? Teng rolled his eyes and said, How am I supposed to know that? I'm hungry. Mama, go and make me some food. Lin Kiao responded to him helplessly, All right. I get it. Wrap yourself up with the blanket. It's cold. I'm not afraid of the coldness, said Ten carelessly. I won't catch a cold. After leaving the gate, the cat didn't go far away from all beings base. Instead, it found somewhere to hide hundreds of meters from the base, and looked at the base. Only after watching Lin Kiao leap off the wall and put the bird into her space did the cat turn and look at the area where Mount Wu Farm and the military base were located. It only glanced at that area, though. After making that glance, it finally turned around and left for real. In the area where the cat looked at before leaving, a snake, a dog, a mushroom, and a young tiger were looking at the cat quietly and vigilantly. The glance that the cat made before leaving made the hair and scales on the necks of the four creatures stand straight up. Only after the cat left did the four relax. A woo woo woo. Once the cat disappeared, the young tiger ran up behind Boa, bit the dog's tail, and dragged the dog backward. Oh woo. Boa immediately turned and barked at the tiger and started spinning. Of course, the little tiger was hanging on his tail, flying round and round. At last, the young tiger gave a howl and relaxed its spite, making a few rolls on the ground. Oh wow wow! Boa rushed up to the young tiger and lowered his upper body while raising his butt and barking at the tiger. The little tiger wasn't afraid of the dog. It quickly struggled up and spread its legs, then roared at the dog, seemingly ready for a great battle. Seeing the two start a game once the cat, which was much stronger than themselves, left, the snake gave a cold glance to his friends then turned around and wriggled away. Chapter 1225 Go and spend some time with him. Lin Kiao prepared Teng's food, then talked while feeding him, Son, I want to talk to you about something. What? Teng raised his eyes to look at his mother. Lin Kiao put a spoonful of milk porridge near his mouth and said, After this meal, I want you to go into my space to spend some time with your Uncle Lu. Why do you want me to spend time with him? Teng didn't understand, because he's in a bad mood now, 
said Lin Kiao, I think he likes you, he might feel better if you are there to keep him company. Why is he in a bad mood? Teng was even more confused, did he break up with his girlfriend? Lin Kiao gave the boy a glare and said, he doesn't even have a girlfriend, whom could he possibly break up with now? What happened then? Teng glanced at his mother, then opened his mouth to eat the porridge, because he already knows who I really am. He's been caring about Lutani U a lot. After learning that I'm not her, I guess he's a little upset, recalling the look that Lutani had on his face when she last time saw him. Lin Kiao couldn't help but sigh. He was like a poor, abandoned puppy. What? You told him? Well, I guess you are right. He's been working with you for a long time. He must have had doubts. After all, you and the previous owner of your current body are different. Teng paused briefly and then said. He's been really low spirited these days, said Lin Kiao. That was why she wanted Teng to go into the space to spend some time with Lutani. In the recent couple of days, Lutani had been sitting quietly on the stairs before Lin Kiao's house all the time motionlessly. He wasn't even taking care of the crops in the fields, and only let the other zombies do it. Only when the other zombies asked him questions did he come back to his senses briefly. Lin Kiao knew what he was thinking about. She could read his mind by paying a little attention to him. Currently, Lutani was feeling empty. After all, the sister that he had been caring about all the time was suddenly gone. Before, he lied to himself that he was overthinking, but, when Lin Kiao told him the truth herself, he realized it was real. Like everyone who had lost family members, he was sad and feeling empty. Lin Kiao figured that trying to comfort him herself might lead to the opposite effect. She was wearing Lutani U's skin after all. His close friends weren't around. So she had no other choice but to let Teng give a dry. After the meal, Lin Kiao gave Teng a shower with warm water and put some clean clothes on him, then brought him into the space. Lutani was sitting on the stairs, resting one side of his jaw on his palm. Suddenly, a figure showed up before his eyes. Whom he saw the first was the little person in Lin Kiao's arms. Uncle. Ten quickly turned and reached out asking for Lutani to hold him. Lutani hadn't seen Teng since his one-month-old party. Seeing the boy, he was stunned a little, and then his lustreless eyes started to shine. He stood up and held Teng in his arms, then said with a smile, Did you miss your uncle? Teng lay down in his arms as he nodded and said seriously, Yes. Lutani felt warm in the heart. Then, he raised his head to look at Lin Kiao but soon turned away with a complicated look on his face. Ahem, I'm too busy to look after him. He doesn't like Du An Wan holding him, so I want you to take care of him for a while. Lin Kiao came up with an excuse. On hearing that, Lu Tani stopped short, then seemed to figure something out. I get it, he nodded and said. Lin Kiao turned and left the space before preparing some daily supplies and clothes for Teng then bringing them in and putting them in the living room in her house. She had also prepared some rice and mutated eggs as the boy's food, as well as a clay pot. The pot and the food were put in the kitchen. Currently, Lin Kiao didn't only have roe deers and goats in her space, but also quite some chicken, ducks, geese, and even pigs. Earlier, she asked Lin Feng to bring some of those animals back to her alive to keep in her space. She didn't put the domestic fowl on the grassland together with the roe deers and goats. Instead, she put them on the clearing behind her house. She asked someone with metal power to build a few huge metal cages, and then put those low-level mutated chicken, ducks, and geese in those hundreds of meters square cages. Normally. Lutani would feed those birds with unhusked rice and dried sweet potatoes. Those birds ate meat too, but they didn't hate rice and sweet potatoes either. They were omnivores. After the apocalypse, the chicken were able to fly. The ducks couldn't fly, but they learned to burrow holes. The geese, which were already fierce, had grown much stronger and more aggressive than before. They fought all day long. In the cages, goose feathers were always flying in the air. Earlier, when Lutani wasn't in the space, no one was feeding those birds. They were so noisy back then that Lin Kiao couldn't stand them. So, she sometimes came in to throw some food to them to make them quiet. She felt as if Lutani was now the manager of the farm in her space. Without him, the place couldn't run well. Without him, 
No one would be taking care of the crops in the fields and those animals. She threw the pigs on the grassland on the other side of the lake, letting them live with the roe deers and goats. The pigs ate grass, so they wouldn't starve to death. But from time to time, they fought with the roe deers and goats. Thankfully, Lin Giao had gotten those chicken, ducks, and geese into her space. Otherwise, she wouldn't have eggs to feed Teng. Those eggs weren't edible for humans though. Only Teng could eat them. That was why Wu Cheng Iu always cooked for the boy with a special pot. He wasn't worried about himself, as he had even had sex with the zombie lady herself. However, Ling Ling was still a healthy human being. He wouldn't neglect her health. After preparing everything that she could think of, Lin Kiao thought for a moment, then said to Lu Tani, let me know if you need anything else. Lu Tani nodded. Teng's appearance finally made him a little spirited. But still, he wasn't willing to look at Lin Kiao. Intentionally or not, he had always been trying to avoid looking at her face. After seeing him nod, Lin Kiao turned and left the space. Teng looked at Lu Tani and asked, Uncle, are you still sad? Lu Tani held him and sat down on the couch, then looked at him and said with a smile, how do you know that I'm sad? Teng looked at him with his large pair of eyes and said, You are sad because you know who Mama really is, right? It's the second time you feel sad for your sister. Last year, Lu Tani had certainly had a hard time when he heard about Lu Tani U's death. After that, he met Lin Giao the zombie and thought Lu Tani U had come back to life. Unexpectedly, it turned out that he was wrong. His sister, who was known as a purely evil woman, died long ago. More importantly, she never saw him as family. Chapter 1226 Talk to Lutani Lutani was a little surprised to hear Teng's words. He looked at the boy and said, Teng, did you always know that? Teng nodded. He knew that before he was born. Lutani felt a little sad and sighed, yeah? Even you know that already. No wonder you've been calling me little uncle. It turns out you have another uncle. Teng raised his hands and touched Lu Tani's chin as he said, What does it matter? You are my uncle. My mama now owns your sister's body, so she's taken up a lot of things from your sister, such as the mess she left behind and her bad reputation, as well as you as her little brother. For my mama, having one more little brother is not a big deal anyway. While speaking, he dropped his hands and sat up in Lutani's arms. Then, he folded his own arms and continued with a mature look, Besides, Mama has been nice to you. She never treated you as an outsider. Am I right? On hearing that, Lutani lowered his head to glance at the boy and ended up being humored by the look on the boy's face. Yes, you are right, Teng. Teng spread his arms and said, What has happened has already happened. What can we do to change it? Even though my Mama isn't your sister, but her body is still your sister's body. And you also have me, right? I am your real nephew, am I not? Maybe my mama will give me a little brother or sister, and by that time, you'll have one more family member, right? You've really been thinking a lot, said Lutani to the boy with a smile. You actually want your mama to give you a little brother or sister. Will your little brother or sister be as lucky as you are? Besides, don't you have Ling Ling as your sister already? Teng spread his arms and said, I was joking, of course, I just wanted to make you happy. You're a little baby who has an old soul, aren't you? Lutani said to him. Taking to the kid did make him feel better. He was now less depressed than before. He understood all that Teng had said. There was nothing he could do to change what had already happened. He was aware of that, but he still felt sad because of that. He couldn't control his feelings. After all, Lutani U was his only family member. She was evil and had done a lot of bad deeds, but she was still his sister. He had been feeling that Lin Giao was wildly different from his sister, but after knowing the truth, he still had difficulty accepting it. He had been thinking a lot lately, and what he suspected now turned out to be true. Only the body of his sister remained. The soul in it was no longer his sister. Was she still his sister? Lutani U never saw him as a little brother. He had no idea if he should accept Lin Kiao as his sister. Teng was right, though. Lin Kiao had been so nice to him. She found him before he turned into a zombie. He turned into a zombie anyway but she did try to save him. Thanks to her, he managed to keep his human appearance. As a zombie, he couldn't possibly return to Sea City Base, nor go to any other base. However, staying in All Being Base, 
he could not ignore Lin Kiao's presence. He had been thinking all these days about how should he see the zombie lady who wore his sister's skin. There wasn't a result yet. He looked at Tang and asked helplessly, did your mother send you here to comfort me? Tang nodded and said, yeah, she's been paying attention to you these days. You aren't happy, so she sent me here to talk to you. And you can cheer me up. Lutani tapped the boy's forehead with a finger and said, How old are you? Do you think you can solve my problem? After saying that, he rubbed the boy's head with his palm. Clap. Teng slapped off his hand. How come the adults always like to rub his head? Wouldn't his hair fall off because of that? Who else can talk to you? Do you want my mama to come here and talk to you herself? You don't want to see her now, do you? Tang crossed his little arms before his chest, then lay down in Lutani's arms and looked at his face confidently, as if he knew what he was thinking. His adorable look softened Lutani's heart. So many thoughts are going on in my head. Seeing her will only make me think even more. She is special. I don't know what to do. Tang nodded and said, if you don't know what to do. Stop thinking about it and let things happen naturally. If you can forget about the fact that my mama is now wearing your sister's skin, you can simply pretend that she doesn't exist. If you can't forget about it, you can just see her as your other sister, like how my mama sees you as her other little brother. Sometimes, you don't have to be genetically related to be family. Anyone who is nice to you sincerely can be your family. The last sentence he said made Lutani stop short. Seeing the serious look on the little boy's face, he suddenly felt that all he had been struggling about earlier actually didn't matter. The boy was right. Sometimes, families didn't need to be related genetically. What was important was the way they treated each other. The one who cared about him with as true heart was always better than the ones who never truly cared. The post-apocalyptic era was not like the peaceful time before. Currently, fewer and fewer people cared about other people. Lutani U was indeed cold to Lutani. She never cared about him, not even a little bit. All right, all right, your heartless sister is gone, but you still have us. You have the smart and adorable little Teng. Teng reached out a hand and patted the back of Lutani's hand as he said. Lutani found the boy's behavior amusing. He felt much better indeed. He gave a sigh as he rubbed Teng's fluffy head again and said, all right. For your sake, I'll let things happen naturally. The life here is not bad after all. After saying that, he carried Teng out of the house and stood on the stairs, looking at the fields. The space didn't belong to him, but many things in there were built by him single handedly the vegetable field, the melon field, the rice and wheat fields, and those birds behind the house. He had spent a lot of time and effort on them. If he left and let some other people do his job, would the farm be ruined? Maybe you should find me an auntie to distract yourself, Teng added. So, you wouldn't be having unnecessary thoughts every day. Uncle Kong and Auntie Long are doing well. They'll soon get together. You should find yourself someone too. What do you think? It's a good idea, isn't it? While speaking, he looked at Lutani with a grin. Lutani wasn't expecting to hear the boy mention the fact that he was still single. He looked at the boy and said, I'm a zombie. How can a zombie find himself a wife? You can get yourself a zombie wife. Many girls in my mama's army are nice. Tang answered his question quickly, then continued with, And you see, Uncle Xi is going to become Tong Tong's father. Lutani didn't know what to say. Chapter 1227, Mo Yan's Request Lin Gia was listening to the conversation between Lu Dani and Tang. At last, she couldn't help but laugh. The boy was good at it. He mentioned the fact that Lu Tani was single. It was harmless, but it diverted his attention. That was good. After coming out of the space, Lin Gia made some time to cut and clean the bird that the big cat brought to her soaking the meat in buckets full of water. In a few hours, the bird meat would be served to her zombie soldiers as a great meal. The oldest roe deers and goats had been living in Lin Giao's space for a year. The youngest baby roe deers and goats had been purified. Their bodies no longer contained the zombie virus, and only the energy from Lin Giao's lake. After all, the air in the space was generated from the lake. At first, there were only around 10 roe deers and tens of mutated goats. But now, a huge herd of roe deers lived in the space, and a crowd of baby goats had merged from the goat herd. Those baby goats and roe deers were already edible for human beings. Sadly, 
goats didn't produce wool, so they would only be eaten. A few days later, Lin Feng returned to the base. Lin Qiao left him the work in the base and then drove to Huixia base with her people. This time, she didn't go to find Wu Cheng Ayu. Instead, she headed straight to Huixia base with her own people. She was in no rush. On the way, she stopped from time to time to observe the underground creatures she saw, and also to gather energy nuclei. This time, half of her team were zombies and the other half were humans. Du An Wan and Xidong still followed her while Lin Qiu and Kulili stayed in the base this time. Long Qin Ying was summoned by Lin Qiao as well, separated from Kong King Ming when their relationship had just started to grow better. However, Kong King Ming would probably go to Huixia base with Wu Cheng Ayu, so they would see each other again soon. Du An and Xing was still in a coma. Therefore, Lin Qiao brought Li Zheng and his squad under her command for the time being. Apart from Xidong, LV Feng, He Jie Yun, Su Fang Feng also followed her out of the base this time. Four and Old Go were also in the team. Old Go said that the area where Yun Meng's troop was stationed no longer needed to be guarded. He was bored over there, so he decided to follow Lin Qiao to Huixia base. After restoring his memory, Old Go had been acting even more freely than before. But thankfully, he would always ask for Lin Qiao's permission before he made any move, to show his respect toward his chief. Lin Qiao believed that if she were not a zombie emperor, the old man wouldn't be so polite to her. Apart from the five level six zombies, Lin Qiao had also brought ten level five ones. They were the ones who didn't carry the last mission with her. She had, of course, brought her three pets as well. Although there were four of them now, the proud little tiger had joined the team recently. Not long after they left the base, Mo Yan and his zombie girl showed up. Mo Yan first looked at Lin Qiao's team, then gave Lin Qiao a glance. Lin Qiao understood his meaning, so she said straightforwardly, Yeah, these are new. The ones you saw the last time aren't my exclusive squad. I was only creating a chance for them to grow strong. Are you going to Huixia base with us to kill that man? It's not time yet, right? You're still weak. Mo Yan had just recovered to the level of zombie kings, and his energy wasn't stable yet. Mo Yan pointed at his own throat. Lin Qiao blinked and said, Oh, I thought you'd like to stay mute. Mo Yan rolled his eyes in response. All right. Lin Qiao nodded and said, if you want to talk, I'll help you. But, you need to take a shower before getting into my lake. The fact that the lake was able to vanish clothes made Lin Qiao quite speechless. Every time she upgraded her zombies, she needed to ask them to take off their clothes first. Each one of those zombies looked at her as if she were a lascivious person for the first time. Thankfully, Mo Yan had spent quite a long time in her space. He was used to watching her taking off her clothes before she went down into the lake every time. So, he felt nothing about it. But suddenly, the zombie girl stepped before Mo Yan and stared at Lin Qiao vigilantly, showing no fear under the emperor's vibe from Lin Qiao. The look on her face made Lin Qiao feel a little speechless though. What? Is he your husband? Are you afraid that I might steal him away from you? I just want him to take a shower. Nothing will happen after I see his body. Would I ever get horny for him? Hearing what Lin Qiao said, the others looking at her couldn't help but cover their mouths and laugh. Meanwhile, Mo Yan looked at Lin Qiao with disbelief. He seemed to believe that he was handsome enough to seduce her. Why am I gonna help this bastard? Lin Qiao thought. You? Forget about it. You look like a girl. You are really not my type. Lin Qiao rolled her eyes scornfully. Mo Yan had a delicate face. His chin was a little too slim, and that made him look not masculine enough. However, he was tall and had this wicked, strong vibe, so no one would really feel that he was like a girl. By staring at his face, one would find him super handsome and beautiful. The dark marks on his face were gone, so he looked much prettier than before now. Mo Yan pulled a long face on hearing what Lin Qiao said while he zombie girl also glared at her unhappily. Lin Qiao impatiently tilted her head to look at Mo Yan, who was behind their zombie girl, and said, are you going to discipline your subordinate or not? If you want me to fix your throat, just move. Don't waste my time. Hearing that, Mo Yan had no choice but to pretend not to hear what Lin Qiao said earlier as he raised a hand and patted the zombie girl's shoulder. With that, 
The pretty zombie girl reluctantly made a step sideways. You don't need to see me as your enemy. It's pointless. He'll come to me anyway, Lin Giao said to the zombie girl helplessly, then brought Mo Yan into her space. She was planning to bring him in alone, as it wouldn't take a long time. However, the zombie girl suddenly grasped Mo Yan's hand and followed him into the space. So stubborn. Lin Kiao thought. After entering the space, Mo Yan returned to the room that he lived in and took a long shower. He hadn't taken a good shower while he was outside, so he happily did what Lin Kiao asked. After the shower, he came downstairs in underpants and shocked Lu Tani and Tang who were sitting on the stairs before the house nearby. Lu Tani automatically covered Teng's eyes, then couldn't help but walk to Mo Yan and say to him, Can you at least put on some shorts? Mo Yan only turned and gave him a wicked grin before walking toward Lin Kiao. Teng pulled Lu Tani's hand off his eyes, then snorted scornfully and said with a small voice, You're not as well shaped as my daddy. You have nothing to show off. The looks on the faces of the others instantly grew complicated. Lu Tani didn't know what to say. Mo Yan stayed silent. Lin Kiao didn't know what to say either. The zombie girl was also quiet. Chapter 1228 What are they doing? Lu Tani covered Teng's eyes again and whispered, Kid. Don't look. On hearing what Tang said, Lin Kiao looked at Mo Yan from head to toe, then said, Not bad. All right, get down. While speaking, she released a cloud of black mist to cover herself, then took off her own clothes. Meanwhile, she gave a sigh and wondered when she would be able to bring the energy from the lake bottom up to the air, so she wouldn't need to go down to the bottom every time. She was able to control the energy in the air but not bring the energy in the water out of the lake. She had already entered the level of zombie emperors, but still couldn't do that. Mo Yan didn't care people staring at his nudity as he walked down into the lake with composure. Lin Kiao had gone into the water before him to control the energy in the lake, so he felt no repulsion toward the lake. The zombie girl in a white dress was left by the lakeside, quietly staring into the lake. Outside the space, people were doing what they wanted, waiting for Lin Kiao to come out. Lin Kiao's pets were darting about in the forest nearby, chasing all kinds of mutated animals. Oh wow woo 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 was chasing a level 4 mutated cat all over the area. Meow woo woo The cat screamed shrilly and fled desperately. Its hair had all stood up. The dog didn't want to kill the cat just yet. He was bored, so he wanted to play with the cat before killing it. However, Someone else didn't want him to keep playing the game. A huge, black snake suddenly darted out and caught the over 50 kilograms cat that was running like hell with his jaws. Meow the cat uttered another shrill howl and then fell into silence. Oh oh. Boa was stunned when Black rushed out and killed his prey. Before the dog could react, the snake threw the dead cat before him and left. The dog was still confused. The mushroom passed by with the young tiger sitting on its head. As the dog showed no interest in the dead cat, the mushroom slowly moved toward the cat and reached a few tentacles toward it. The young tiger seemed to be aware that the mushroom was doing something bad. It lay on top of the mushroom quietly and looked at the mushroom's tentacles, then at Boa's face. The tiger was wondering if the dog would let the mushroom take the dead cat. As the mushroom got closer and closer, the dog finally turned and barked at it impatiently. Just take it if you want. Why are you wasting time? Hearing the dog bark, the mushroom immediately hopped to the cat and swiftly wrapped it up with its tentacles before fleeing away. Watching the mushroom disappear within a blink, the dog wagged his tail, feeling so bored. Why did the mushroom run away? He wouldn't fight it over the dead cat anyway. Finding that the dog wasn't coming behind the mushroom, the young tiger patted its head with its paw. Oh, oh. He's not chasing us. Why are you running? The mushroom was running excitedly, dragging that 50 kilograms dead cat. As the young tiger patted its head, it stopped, then turned and looked behind. Finding that the dog wasn't chasing behind, it threw the dead cat on the ground without eating it. The young tiger leapt down from the mushroom's head and sniffed at the dead cat. Sensing the scent of the snake venom, the tiger turned and left with dislike. In fact, he wanted the meat slices soaked in his owner's lake water. He didn't want dead animals which weren't even skinned yet. As the young tiger didn't seem to be interested in the dead cat, the mushroom poked it with its tentacles and turned it over, then pushed it toward the tiger. Oh, oh. 
The tiger didn't accept its kindness. The tiger gave the mushroom a roar, then sat down and started to lick its own paws. It seemed that the young tiger really didn't want the dead cat. The mushroom hesitated briefly, then dragged the dead cat back to itself and inserted the tips of its tentacles into the cat's body, which wasn't stiff yet. Next, it started to absorb the cat's flesh and blood. Soon, the dead cat shrank, and its fur became lusterless like straw. Before long, the cat became a dried dead body. After finishing the cat, the mushroom retracted its tentacles and wagged them from side to side. It didn't care about the venom at all. It was able to digest even the venom. The young tiger hadn't eaten any meat given by its owner for a long time. It had been eating raw meat, which tasted awful. Why wasn't the owner feeding the tiger? Was it because she hadn't been hunting? So, the tiger decided to do the hunting itself. As the mushroom finished its meal, the young tiger stood up and looked around, then climbed onto a tree nearby. Normal tigers didn't know how to climb trees, but the mutated tigers did. The mutation made them nimbler than before, and their claws sharper. On the tree, the tiger sniffed around, then leapt back down and quietly lunged toward one direction. The mushroom had no idea what the tiger was doing, but it quietly followed behind the other. Before long, Xi Dong and the others saw the tiger and the mushroom come out of the forest together. The tiger was holding a large rat alive in its mouth, and the mushroom had a few mutated animals struggling while being wrapped in its tentacles. Eh? What are they doing? Du An Wan curiously looked at the two and said to the others, Normally, they would feed themselves well before coming back to the team. How come they brought Prey's back alive today? I don't know. Are these for us? Xi Dong thought for a moment and said. Du An Wan gave him a glance and said, For us, I don't think so. These might be for chief. These are for chief then, Xi Dong shrugged and said carelessly. By the time Lin Qiao came out of her space together with Mo Yan, whose throat was already fixed, people all turned to look at her. What? She looked glanced at them with confusion. The people turned and pointed at the other side together. Lin Gye outworld and saw her four pets sitting on the ground in a straight line, and lying before them were some dying prey. What is going on here? Lin Gye said, What are they doing? The others shook their heads and spread their hands. Lin Gye didn't know what to say. She looked at her four pets with confusion. What did they want? Wow! Boa barked at her, wagging his tail. Lin Gia walked to them confusedly and stood before the dozen prey, then looked at them. The four had caught quite a lot of preys, and all of them were alive. Most of them were at level 4 or 5, but the two rats before the young tiger hadn't even reached level 2 yet. Chapter 1229 they want meat. Lin Gia observed those dying animals. The ones before black weren't bitten but strangled. Their bodies were twisted, but they were still alive. The animals lying before Boa all had broken legs. A woo oo The young tiger abruptly howled at Lin Gia, then patted the big rat in front of it with a paw. It found two rats that had relatively pure vibes. It wasn't able to catch larger prey as it was still weak. Catching the rats at level 2 was the best it could do at the moment. What do you want? Lin Gia walked up to the little tiger and lowered her head to look at it. Oh oh! The tiger pushed the rats which were at their last breath toward her feet. Are these for me? Lin Gia watched its movement and asked with confusion. Oh oh! The young tiger raised its head and howled again. I don't speak your language, said Lin Giao helplessly, how am I supposed to know what you mean? Since you're giving them to me, I'll just take them. After saying that, she put the rats into her space. Oh oh! Once she made the rats disappear, the young tiger immediately sprung up and roared at her agitatedly. It circled around Lin Kiao's feet and patted her shanks with its paws. What did that mean? Lin Kiao was confused again. She saved the little tiger's life, but hadn't spent much time trying to communicate with it. She didn't understand its meaning. Did the tiger not want her to put the rats into her space? With that thought, she took the rats back out. As she thought, the little tiger immediately quieted down. It sat down by the rats and patted them again with its paw, and then pushed them toward Lin Kiao. Lin Kiao was utterly confused. At last, she turned to ask the others, what on earth does it mean? Does it want to give me those rats or not? We don't know. Du An Wan laughed, 
we are not its feeders. How are we supposed to know what it means? It doesn't even let us get close. Earlier, someone passed by and the four pets of Lin Kiao bared their teeth and roared at that person together. Lin Kiao turned to Xi Dong, who said helplessly, if these aren't for you, maybe it wants you to feed it. Feed it? Hasn't he been with those three and feeding itself lately? Why does it suddenly want me to feed it? Lin Kiao was even more confused. At that point, Mo Yan came over with a hand on his chin. His approach made the young tiger and the three grow alert immediately. However, because of his emperor's vibe, the four didn't dare to growl at him, and only stared at him vigilantly. They knew Mo Yan, but still did not want him to come close. Mo Yan looked at the four and said, Are you going to start a zoo or an animal farm? You have a tiger, a snake, goats, and roe deers. His voice was hoarse like the voices of all zombies. However, it was also uniquely clear and attractive. It was not beautiful, but not unpleasant to hear either. It was a special voice that could give people a special feeling. On hearing him, Lin Kiao gave him a glare and said, running a zoo is not bad. What? Do you have a problem with it? Mo Yan immediately shook his head as he turned up one side of his lip corners and said, no, number. This little tiger of yours is interesting though. What does it want? That's what I want to know, said Lin Kiao. Why don't you help me and make a guess? Why would I guess what a tiger is thinking about? Said Mo Yan, I don't know it well. Why don't you ask your little brother to talk to it? He knows about the little tiger more than I do, doesn't he? On hearing that, Lin Kiao had her eyes glowing. Yeah, I'll bring Lu Tani out and let him figure out what the little thing wants. She flashed into her space right after she said that. A short while later, she came back out together with Lu Tani and her son. She took Teng over, then asked him and the little boy, figure out what this one wants. It pushed the rats to me but didn't let me put them in the space. Why did it give them to me then? At the sight of the little tiger, Lutani happily walked to it and scooped it up as he said, Whoa, flower, you've grown bigger. You're so heavy now. Oh, wow wow. The young tiger struggled briefly, then put both four paws on Lutani's shoulder and lay in his arms. Lin Kiao looked at Lutani and said, When did you name it flower? A long time ago. Lutani smiled. Lin Kiao looked at him as if he were retarded. Seriously, she said, why on earth did you name a tiger flower? Oh, oh. As soon as she said that, flower started struggling again. The tiger was strong, so Lutani failed to hold it tight and let it leap back to the ground. Flower hadn't realized how girly its name was. What it cared about was food. Once again, it ran back to the rats and patted them. Oh, oh. This time, it didn't howl at Lin Kiao. But at Lutani, it's hungry, it's hungry, Lutani and Teng said in one voice. With confusion, Lin Kiao looked at Lutani, then at Teng. Teng glanced at the young tiger, then said to Lutani, is it hungry, uncle? Lutani walked to the young tiger and squatted to rub its fluffy head, then raised his head to look at Teng and asked, Teng, how do you know? I felt it, Teng scratched his chin with his fingers and said, it's hungry. So why did it give the rats to me? Lin Kiao asked. Lu Tani stood up and said, it wants the meat to be soaked in your lake water. I guess this little tiger is no longer as excited about playing outside as it was before. Now, it has probably found out that the raw meat isn't as tasty as the meat soaked in the lake water. The meat soaked in Lin Kiao's lake water was delicious. All of Lin Kiao's zombies and pets liked it. In the space. Lin Kiao's pets sometimes even stole the meat that she soaked in the buckets. Lin Kiao hadn't noticed that, but Lu Tani had. After hearing what he said, Lin Kiao turned to the four pets and said with surprise, Really? Is it like what he said? Wow! Boao happily barked at her. He was able to understand Lu Tani's words. Black could understand some of Lu Tani's words too. However, unlike the dog, he had been quiet all the time. Watching the dog's reaction, Lin Kiao said knowingly, I guess you're right, I'll leave them to you then. I'll put them in the space, and then you'll be doing the rest of the work. I should hurry on with my journey. While speaking, she glanced at Lutani. Currently, the four pets wouldn't let anyone but Lin Kiao and Lutani get close to their prey. Don't run about in the space. I'm telling you guys, Lin Kiao warned the four then put them into the space along with those dying animals, leaving them under Lutani's care.
Chapter 1230 Here came another one right after Lin Kiao put the dog, the snake, the mushroom, the tiger, and the bunch of dying animals into her space. She got into the car with Teng and prepared to leave. But, a red figure suddenly landed before the motorcade. Then, along with a thunderous bang, a huge object fell from the sky. Oh, here comes another one, people said in their heads when they clearly saw the red creature and the huge thing. Lin Kiao stuck her head out of the car and looked at the enormous red cat, then at the huge, black, mutated ball which was thrown to the ground by the cat. Before she could react, the weird red cat turned around, wagged its tail, and disappeared again. Lin Kiao didn't know what to say. She looked at the enormous bull. The vehicles wouldn't be able to pass if she didn't take the bull into her space. Well, this one is really here to deliver food, Tang crawled onto her lap and stuck his head outside the window too. Then, the boy shrank back and stood up on the backs. It looking at the bull through the rear windshield. The four caught the prey for themselves, but the red cat caught the bull for his mama. Du An Wan, who was preparing to drive, rested her hands on the steering wheel, then turned and looked at Lin Kiao. It was the second time. What did the weird cat want? It was like a ghost. The ones in the other vehicles all stuck their heads out of the car to look at the black bull which had barred the road. So huge. How many tons do you think it weighs? Three? It's twice the size of the hairless cat, right? It's definitely heavier than three tons. It's even larger than an adult elephant. Tang carried Tang off the car and walked toward the bull, which was probably dead already. After making just two steps, she stopped and turned around, then wore a helpless look on her face. One more? Is this ever gonna stop? What is this one coming for? Lin Kiao looked around and said. Tang held her neck and looked around as well. He sensed the creature much more clearly than Lin Kiao did. M. Have you met this one already? I don't think it's coming close to us. On hearing what he said, Lin Kiao lowered his head and glanced at the boy with surprise. How do you know? I felt it, Tang said after two seconds of silence. Lin Kiao didn't know what to say. She looked around again then found the creature which was hiding in darkness really showed no sign of coming out. So, she turned and walked to the black ball, then put the mutated black ball, which had shiny fur, into her space. It was still alive, but not for long. On the clearing before Lin Kiao's house in the space, Lutani was busy cleaning the prey that the four had hunted. The four were gathering near the stairs before the house, staring at him. The mushroom had no eyes but it was looking at Lutani as well. All of a sudden, a slight thud was heard from nearby. Lutani and the four, as well as all the zombies who were working in the field, all turned to that area. No way. Do I need to skin and cut this one too? This is a huge one. It's much bigger than the ones you guys caught. Lutani was surprised to see the black ball. Then he turned and complained to the four about how large it was. Wow. From the balcony, Boa barked at Lutani unhappily. It clearly detected the scorn on Lutani's face. Black, who was coiling on the roof, reached down his head, then wriggled down to the ground, toward the black bull. He took a few circles around the bull, then crawled back onto the roof. Lutani glanced at the big rat which had just been skinned by him, then at the pile of prey near him. After that, he turned to the huge black bull which was thrown into the space just now. Suddenly, he felt so tired. He had just started feeling better, and Lin Giao already gave him a ton of work to do. How cruel was she? What made him speechless was that the four wouldn't let anyone else touch their prey. He couldn't even find someone to assist him. The four didn't catch the bull though. So, it would be okay for him to find someone to help him to cut the bull, right? He thought for a moment. Then yelled at Pesticide, who was catching bugs in the vegetable field, Pesticide, come here. Pesticide raised his head and looked at Lutani without doing what the latter said. Come here. Do I need to go over there to guide you? Lutani waved at him. On hearing that, Pesticide slowly stood up and moved toward him. Go over there and kill the bull. Lutani handed him a knife, then pointed at the bull. Roar. Pesticide was immediately confused. He did not know how to kill a bull. The bull was so huge. Would it suddenly move its hooves and kick him into the sky? It's dying, said Lutani to him impatiently. Go over there and poke the knife into its neck. 
Then it'll die. Are you afraid that the dying bull might kick you? How weak are you? With hesitation, Pesticide took over the military dagger and moved toward the huge bull worryingly. After throwing the bull into the space to Lutani, Lin Kiao turned and went back into the car. The team finally left that area and headed toward Huaxia base again. Mo Yan was sitting on top of the last car with the zombie girl in a white dress standing beside him. He glanced at the black figure that was flashing across the forest in the back from time to time, then said to the zombie girl, I wonder why the zombie lady is so attractive to these mutated beasts. They all want to follow her. Is it because of her scent? Lin Giao's scent was indeed different from the scents of normal zombies. She had a faint aroma. Mo Yan had no idea how Lin Giao's scent could affect mutated beasts. For zombies, it just smelled nice, it was refreshing and sweet. The zombie girl quietly glanced at him. Mo Yan knew that she had no answer to that question either. So he continued, those two have been following her all the way. The cat even brought her food, but the dog isn't doing that yet. Is the dog not as smart as the cat? The zombie girl stayed silent. How was she supposed to know if the dog was smarter or the cat? She wasn't a dog or a cat. If anything bad happens to me in the future, you should just follow her. Mo Yan abruptly added, it's safer for you. Currently, Mankind wasn't the only enemy of zombies anymore. Those underground creatures were dangerous for zombies too. Roar. The zombie girl gave him a deep roar and shook her head determinedly. You told me not to leave you before. Are you going to leave me now? Mo Yan sighed as a trace of gloominess was added to his pretty face. Don't worry, he said. I won't go and find him now. I'll go when I have regained all my power. You won't be going with me. The zombie girl popped her eyes and lowered her head staring at the back of Mo Yan's head, roar. She didn't understand. Mo Yan raised his head and smiled as he looked at her in the eyes and said, I don't want you to go with me. I don't want you to die. That smile of his wasn't as wickedly charming as his usual smile, or that naughty kind of smile with one side of his mouth corners curved. It was warm, containing a slight bit of tenderness. Chapter 1231 their heads look like flowers. About a mile behind Lin Giao's vehicles, a dark figure flashed across the forest from time to time. It was a huge, long-haired dog, nimbly leaping through the trees and following behind Lin Giao and her friends. Further away on a mountain, a large, red figure was seen from time to time. Lin Giao sat in the car, holding Teng. She could sense the vibes of the two beasts. Strangely, Neither of them showed any intent of launching an attack. For that reason, she didn't do anything to them but kept observing them. She had no idea why the two followed her. I want to get into the space to see my uncle. Tang spent quite a while crawling on the back seat from side to side. He had no interest in the deserted view outside the window at all. He has no time for you. He's busy. Lin Kiao looked at the boy. In the space. Lutani was indeed busy cutting the meat. Teng would have to stay aside and watch him if he went in. He wouldn't disturb Lutani, but would definitely distract him. M, Mama, you are so cruel. I've just made him feel better, and you immediately gave him tons of work to do. He's like the manager of your farm. Aren't you worried that he might get angry? Teng thought of the pile of dying animals. There were about thirteen of them not including the enormous bull. It would take Lutani great efforts to cut them all into pieces. His poor uncle was forced to work hard. I made him work, so he'll have no time and energy to do the unnecessary thinking, Lin Giao sighed and smiled as she turned to look outside. It might be better if she had told him the truth at the very beginning, but in that case, he might dislike her for possessing his sister's body. Thankfully, he didn't hate her after he started doubting her. That really made Lin Kiao feel relieved. Teng sat down on the back seat and folded his little arms, my poor little uncle. His sister was his only family before, but she never saw him as a little brother. Then she died, and now he has a fake sister. After saying that, he gave Lin Kiao a meaningful glance. Lin Kiao dropped her head to look at the boy helplessly, I didn't want to be his fake sister. I didn't ask to possess Lutani Wu's body. I don't know what happened and how I ended up wearing her skin. Besides, I'm not seeing Lutani as my fake little brother. I'm nicer to him than I am to even Lin Hao. You're right, 
Tank thought for a moment and responded, his mama was really nice to Lutani, she possessed Lutani U's body and identity now, but she didn't steal them. Also, Lutani U had died. What could be done to change that fact? While Lin Qiao and her team were heading toward Huexia base, Wu Cheng Iu left C City base together with Xiao Liking, Kong King Ming, and some other people. He had also brought Wu Yuling with him. Daddy, when can we see Tang and Mama? Wu Yuling was sitting in the back seat, holding the large fluffy grey rabbit. She turned to Wu Cheng Iu and asked him that question expectantly with a small voice. Wu Cheng Iu smiled at the little girl as he rubbed her hair and said, They're not joining us for the journey so we probably can't see them until tomorrow. Oh, Wu Yuling's glowing eyes instantly dimmed a little as she dropped her head with disappointment. Meanwhile, she was stroking the fat rabbit slowly. She had had the rabbit for a year. The rabbit was growing fast, and it was already large. It was fat and fluffy, as warm as a little stove. Feeling the girl's disappointment, Wu Cheng Ayu pretended to be sad and said to her, doesn't Ling Ling want to be with Daddy? Daddy is sad. Wu Yu Ling raised her head and found her father still smiling. She gave her father a glare, then dropped her head again and mumbled, It's not like that. Xiao Liking, who was driving the car, asked Wu Yu Ling jokingly, Ling Ling, you saw them just a few days ago, didn't you? How come you miss them already? Wu Yu Ling looked at him from the back seat and said, I don't want to separate with them. Sadly, your father hasn't won your mama's heart already. It won't take long, though. Be patient, Ling Ling. Xiao Liking smiled. Before, Wu Cheng Ayu and Lin Giao spent a few days lying on the bed hand in hand absorbing energy. How could their relationship be improved by doing that? At that moment, a beast vibe was suddenly sensed from the front, seeming like a huge herd of animals. Wu Cheng Ayu and Xiao Liking adjusted their expressions and looked ahead seriously. King Ming? Go and see what's going on over there. Before Wu Cheng Iu made a sound, Xiao Liking slowed down the car and picked up the interphone, talking into it. I get it, Kong King Ming's voice was heard from the earphone worn on Xiao Liking's ear. Then, the head car sped up forward. There was still a distance between the beast vibe and the motorcade. After about 10 minutes of driving, Kong King Ming saw a herd of black creatures covering the road. He didn't know what those creatures were but the vibe told him that they were not kind. He got off the car, hopped onto the car roof, and looked at those creatures. After giving them a close look, he found that they were a bunch of weird-looking creatures with short limbs lying on the ground. Those creatures looked very strange. Their heads looked like flowers, and in the middle of each flower was a long, tongue-like thing, wagging from side to side and looking extremely disgusting. Their bodies were flat without tails. On both sides of their waists or bellies were a few rows of thorns. They each had four feet, about half a meter long. They also had long and sharp claws. The smallest one among them was about a meter long and wide. They had their flower heads reared up, and their tongues were pointing at Kong King Ming. Kong King Ming and his people parked the car about 400 meters away from them, but those creatures soon sensed them. They raised their heads and paused briefly then suddenly charged at them. Drive. Kong King Ming leapt off the car and said to the others. Then, he raised both arms and swung forward. Following his movement, the plants on both sides of the road started growing rapidly, reaching toward those weird creatures. The plants rolled up those creatures, strangled them and crushed their bones. Damn. What are these things? They look so disgusting. Zheng Xionian got off the car and saw those creatures causing his face to twist immediately. Their bodies looked relatively normal, just being a little too flat. However, their heads looked utterly unpleasant to the eyes. Those heads looked like flowers, each with a hole in the middle. By the edge of the hole were teeth, and coming out of the hole was a swaying tongue, which looked like a greasy rope. One could really feel uncomfortable upon looking at those creatures. Chapter 1232 Take a detour, Kong King Ming told his people to drive back, and also to report to Wu Cheng Iu about what they found. To go through the area, they had to remove those creatures first. However, there was a massive herd of them occupying a long section of the road, 
and they were actually rather strong. Kong King Ming controlled the surrounding plants and tied up those creatures with veins and branches. It was hard to kill them though, he was able to crush the bones of the relatively small ones, but the larger ones soon escaped. The creatures caught by Kong King Ming's plants screamed shrilly, their voice is highly unpleasant to hear. The other people didn't use their superpowers. Instead, they leapt onto high places for a wide view and each took out a strange gun. They had only one of those guns each. The bullets in those guns were customized, containing catmint juice. This newly invented gun will work more or less, right? Even though it's not yet the finished version, Liu Jing raised the gun and aimed at the middle of a creature's flower face before pulling the trigger. Puff. Liu Jing was good at shooting. He was able to hit the target from 200 meters away. The creature's flower head was as large as a water tank. The bullet flew into its mouth, and the creature immediately let out a deafening scream. After that, it froze and fell. It didn't die instantly though. By the time the catmint juice inside the bullet all flowed into its body, its body suddenly exploded. Boom. The creature was blown into pieces. Hey, it worked. Liu Jing shouted excitedly. He heard that even grenades would fail in those creatures' mouths. Through observation, scientists found it was because of their self-protection system. When a bomb was thrown into their mouth, their body would sense the danger and react automatically, releasing their energy to deactivate it. They were also able to spit out the bullets that were shot into their mouths. Recently, Sea City Base developed a few guns. The fluid inside the bullets would be injected into the target's body once the target was hit and paralyze it. After the injection, the mini bomb in the bullet would detonate. In fact, those few guns were only half finished products developed in a flurry. Only about 10 of them were produced as the first batch, only for the people who left the base for Huexia Base this time. When the flower head creature exploded, the other flower head creatures near it all moved away from it, seemingly avoiding its blood and flesh. Kong King Ming was controlling a massive number of plants. It was quite energy consuming, but he wasn't able to kill many flower head creatures. He thought for a moment, then tied up some flower head creatures with his plants and took out a catmint gun before shooting those creatures which were disabled from moving. Every single bullet from his gun hit a flower head creature in the mouth. Bang, 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 ski eek. All the flower head creatures hit by the bullets exploded. The other creatures were avoiding the dead bodies of the dead ones, but didn't stop charging at Kong King Ming and his people. Meanwhile, Huang Xiu drove back to the others. On the way, he reported to Wu Cheng Iu through the interphone, Chief, there are a bunch of strange creatures jamming the road five miles in the front. At least a thousand of them are gathering here. We can't get through the area now. Xiao Liking pulled over and asked, What are they like? A. Their heads look like flowers, and their bodies are flat. They have short limbs, no tails. They are around a meter and twenty centimeters wide three to eight meters long. They don't look like any creature on the Earth's surface, said Huang Xiu. Those flower head creatures look definitely not like anything from the Earth's surface. They were also ridiculously huge. They should be from the underground, like the ones that the base leaders were talking about a lot lately. Xiao Liking ended the conversation with Huang Xiu, then turned and said to Wu Cheng Ayu, a herd of underground creatures have blocked the road five miles in the front. It'll take us some time to clean them out. Should we take a detour? There was a massive number of those creatures. To clear the road, they needed to kill all of them. It would be troublesome, because those creatures were not easy to kill. How long will it take us to take a detour from here? Wu Cheng Ayu asked him. Xiao Liking checked at the map and said, about an hour if the road condition is good. If there are obstacles, we might need to spend about two hours. After the apocalypse, almost all the roads were jammed by abandoned vehicles. Except for the roads which had already been cleared, there were obstacles on almost every road. Wu Cheng Iu glanced at Wu Yuling, then said to Xiao Liking, tell King Ming and the others to come back. They were going to take a detour. Xiao Liking nodded, then said to Huang Xiu through the interphone, tell your boss to come back. We're going to take a detour. Yes, sir. Huang Xiu responded, then turned the car around. With curiosity, Xiao Liking said, I think they've used the catmint guns. I wonder if those guns worked. Wu Cheng Iu smiled and responded with, you can ask them about that when they get back. They're a few miles away from us, 
Xi Aoliking said, I wonder if those creatures are fast or not. It would be troublesome if they followed us. If they follow us, I'll kill them all, said Wu Cheng Ayu. Xi Aoliking turned and glanced at him as he said, Why are we taking a D2N? Why don't you just go over there now and kill them all? Wu Cheng Ayu looked at him with a smile and said, I don't want Ling Ling to see those things. Based on your description, they are really ugly. What if they scared Ling Ling? He didn't want to leave Ling Ling in the car. Among the other people, Xi Ao Liking and Kong King Ming were the strongest, but, they were only at level 6. He didn't trust them with her safety. Wu Yu Ling heard him mention her name, so she turned and looked at her father, then started thinking about the monster that the adults talked about earlier. She didn't understand what exactly it was, but she felt them to be scary. She didn't show her fear to Wu Cheng Ai though, and only kept stroking the rabbit. Before long, Kong King Ming and his people returned. How did the new guns work? While turning the car around, Xiao Liking asked Kong King Ming through the interphone. Not bad. The explosion happens less than three seconds after the shooting. The shooting range is a little short though. It won't work if the target is over 300 meters away, Kong King Ming said. Are you sure they are from the underground? Xiao Liking asked another question. Yes. We can't pass even if we kill them all because the road in the front is broken. The earth cracked, so vehicles can't get through. We have to take a detour, said Kong King Ming. I guess we have no choice then, Xiao Liking sighed. Chapter 1233, Green Mountain Base Needs to Move. 300 meters is already the best we can do right now. There won't be enough impact force to push out the fluid inside the bullets if the bullets flew over a larger distance. Xiao Liking responded to Kong King Ming, then continued, Do you know how hard it is to make those bullets? What gave you the right to complain? All right, 300 meters is fine, Kong King Ming said helplessly, it's not a long range, but not too short either. The flower head creatures grasped the scents of Kong King Ming and his people and followed behind their car. They weren't moving fast though. They had no eyes but their swaying tongues were able to sense the scents from the air. Thankfully, the car was much faster than those creatures. Soon, Wu Cheng Ayu and his people moved out of the flower head creature's sensation range. After that, those creatures stopped moving and swagged their tongues from side to side to search for scents. In Green Mountain Base, Lan Lu was reading a report with a deep frown, sitting on the other side of the table. Shang Qingqing and Hu Daba also wore serious looks. Do you think Si Kongjin really wants to share what he has found out with us? He's not such a kind man. Shang Qingqing dropped the material and sighed, then raised her head and said to Lan Lu, Even if he won't share what he knows with us, the others will. I don't know what Si Kongjin is planning on. It's not gonna be anything good anyway. Lan Lu responded to her expressionlessly. I wonder if Wu Cheng Ayu and Lu Tan Yu are on their way to Huexia base yet. Since they're both attending the meeting, I think they already have plans, said Chang King King. After all, those two must have thought of what she and Lan Lu could think of. Hopefully, those creatures won't make any moves before you guys come up with a plan, Chang King King thought for a moment, and then said worryingly. Some other underground creatures had been found near Green Mountain Base recently. Apart from the disgusting multiple-eyed creatures that the zombie lady chief found the last time, some other different types of weird creatures were seen in some other areas as well. As those creatures emerged massively, the dry and deserted land in the west grew even worse. Fewer and fewer plants could be found. The desertification and drought had been worsening and the air quality had dropped drastically. In many areas, people had to wear face masks. I wonder when will Chief wake up? Thinking about Dong Xiao Ai, who was still unconscious, Shang Qingqing felt even more depressed. Don't worry, he'll recover. I heard that both All Beings Base and Sea City Base are developing the medicine to cure out of control superpowered people. We can ask them for help when there is no better way said Lan Lu. We don't have a lot of food left in storage. The soil condition isn't getting better. What should we do when we are run out of food? Are we gonna purchase food from Huexi Air Base? Chang King King thought of the fact that the food left in her base could only last for less than half a year. Currently, 
only Huexia base still had rich food storage. It was said that they did have the soil less cultivation technology. That was the reason why they weren't as short in food as the other bases. Chang Qingqing also knew that making deals with Huexia base was not easy. They were not only greedy, but also unreasonable. Their unreasonable requirements could really give people a headache and one could easily fall into their traps. Why do we have to make deals with them? We can do it with Sea City Base, Lan Lu didn't care much about the food problem. Chang King King looked at him and asked, Sea City Base, isn't it too far away from us? That is not the main problem. The problem is, do they have newly produced food? Based on what we know, they don't have the soil less cultivation technology. Even if they are able to grow food, they can't possibly be expecting rich harvests. The food they grow might be barely enough for their own people. Will they sell their food to us? Green Mountain Base had a small population. However, if Sea City Base were in shortage of food itself, the ones who ran that base would, of course, not sell their food to Green Mountain Base. Not to mention the long distance between Green Mountain Base and Sea City Base. That would be a dangerous journey. The longer the journey was, the more dangerous it could be. Don't worry, doesn't Wu Chengai who always have a plan B? How could he possibly turn against Huexia base openly without having a few cards saved? I think he's not worried about food. I'll talk to him and find out, Lan Lu smiled. He thought more thoroughly than Chang King King did. Then, he continued, besides, Traveling a long journey to make sure that our people don't starve sounds better than falling into Si Kongjin's trap. Raw. Hudaba, who had been quiet the entire time, let out a sound to agree with Lan Lu. Why don't we move then? If we have to always travel from here to there, we might as well move to somewhere closer to both Sea City Base and Huexia Base. After all, the environment in the west isn't going to allow us to survive for many years. The life here is getting harder and harder, Chang King King pondered briefly, and then gave her suggestion. On hearing that, Lan Lu stopped short, then turned to Hu Dabba and said, Dabba, what do you think? Lan Lu had been wanting to move the base since long ago. After all, the environment in the west wasn't suitable for human beings to live anymore. He just never had a chance to bring up that idea. There was always so much work to do. Hudaba fell into deep thoughts after hearing Chang King King's words. As Lan Lu asked him for his opinion, he raised his eyes to look at the two. Roar. He gave a roar. I'm fine with it. If we are going to move, we should start as soon as possible. Lan Lu smiled and said, Okay. Since you both agree. I'll be looking for a suitable place on my way to Huexia base. We'll make the decision after I have found the place that can be a new base. The other two both nodded in agreement. I need to get ready and get on the way. This time, I think I'll take ye. Lei Cheng will stay here. As the two nodded, Lan Lu clapped his hands and grinned. As same as Wu Cheng Ayu, Lin Qiao and her people also ran into a group of weird-looking creatures after spending a few hours on the journey. Before most people saw those creatures, Lin Qiao and Teng had both sensed them. Mama, guess what they look like? Are they insects? Teng's eyes sparkled with curiosity and excitement. He was excited to see some underground creatures with his own eyes. Well, I think they're not going to be pretty. Lin Giao said to herself, judging by the extremely ugly creatures that she had seen before, Lin Giao believed the ones which would show up soon would be ugly too. She didn't sense the vibe of those creatures on her way back to her base. It seemed to be a new type of underground creature. Why were there so many different kinds of them? Why weren't they all the same? If they were all the same, it would at least be easy to study them. Chapter 1234 Lin Qiao was wrong. While Lin Qiao and Teng were making guesses about the number of those creatures, a red figure flashed across the air and darted before her car like a shooting star. Hey, the cat pulled ahead. Teng said with surprise as he reached his head outside the window and popped his eyes to look around, as if he were really able to see the cat. It's been following behind us quietly, Lin Qiao was also confused. How come it suanly went ahead of us? Duan Wan who was driving joined the conversation, 
Why is the cat not like the other underground creatures? All the other creatures emerge in herds. They ruin the environment and attack other animals once they come out. Why is the cat alone? Is it a rare species? Lin Kiei outended to agree with her. Rare species? It's indeed largely different from the other underground creatures. It's strange indeed. It affected the environment when it came up from underground, but it's not affecting the plants anymore. What was even stranger? the cat had fruits instead of meat. But, why did it always bring meat to Lin Kiao? Was that because the cat had seen Lin Kiao catch quite some mutated animals? It was not so smart, was it? Why does it follow only you? Since the cat visited all being base and dropped the bird, people were sure that Lin Kiao was its target, because only when she showed up did it react. How am I supposed to know? Lin Kiao had no answer to that question either, baby. Do you know why? She lowered her head and asked her son. Teng gave her a glare and said, The cat is following you, not me. How am I supposed to know why, when even you don't know? The cat is following you, and the large Tibetan Mastiff is too. Why? Du An Wan was so curious. Lin Kiao thought for a moment and said, Who knows if the dog is following me or not? It hasn't done anything to me yet. It's probably following you. At that moment, Waves of bee straws were heard from the front. Roar. Oh woo oo oo oo. Lin Kiao, Teng, and Du An Wan immediately turned to the front. Teng blinked his eyes as he leaned forward to look at the frontal area. Why are you popping your eyes like that? Can you see what's over there? Lin Kiao was amused by the look on the little boy's face. She laughed and reached out to pinch the boy's cheek. The boy was about 45 days old. His cheeks had grown chubby and his eyes were bright all the time. He had delicate nose and mouth, and pink cheeks. His body temperature was much lower than that of normal human babies, but still, he had been very healthy and energetic. He had plump and short limbs. He might have been crawling too much lately, which caused his knee skin to be a little coarse. Tang felt a slight pain, so he raised a little hand and slapped off his mother's hand, then ignored her as he stared at the frontal area through the windshield. Meanwhile, he said, I can feel it, I have a very keen intuition, wait and see, the big red cat will solve the problem for us, Lin Kiao looked at him with disbelief, how do you know that, the cat has gone ahead of us, but you don't know for sure that it's able to drive the whole group of underground creatures away, the big cat was only at level 7, the vibes coming from the frontal area were faint, but clearly stated the great number and power of those creatures, reasonably speaking, those creatures wouldn't be afraid of just one level 7 mutated beast. After all, a level 7 vibe was sensed from the herd too. As I've said, I can feel it, Tang raised his chin and said proudly, I won't be wrong. Lin Wenwin looked at him and said, Really? Do you have your auntie Wenwin's power? Tang shook his head and said, Number. My superpower isn't awakened yet. I have a nature power, not my auntie's power. My intuition is just a faint feeling. I need to be close to the target to field them. Lin Giao smiled at him. Seeing the proud look on his face, she had her heart softened. She couldn't help but scoop the boy up and bury her own face in the boy's soft and elastic cheek to give him a kiss. All right. I'll wait and see. Let's see if you're right. Teng quickly wiped his face with his hand and said, You. Why do you leave saliva on my face every time you kiss me? Lin Kiao lowered her head to look at the boy with an innocent look. That's not true. There's no saliva on your cheek. You're so young. But why are you a clean freak already? A. Hey. Teng made a face to her grumpily and said, You're wrong. Du An Wan turned back and glanced at the boy and his mother, then said with laughter. Wen Win's second power is special, but our Teng is special too. Our Teng is a special little baby. Exactly. Auntie Duan knows about it clearly. Mama, I can't believe that you don't trust me, Teng said, then crawled back to his own seat. Meanwhile, the car moved closer and closer to those creatures. After entering the dangerous zone, Lin Kiao told everyone to get off the car, then put the cars into her space. After that, she carried Tang and moved toward relatively tall hill, with the others following behind her. Soon, they found a few trees on the hill to hop on and looked ahead through the distance. Oh woo oo oo oo, roar the enormous red cat was attacking a group of rat-like creatures rampantly. Every time it bit a rat to death, 
it threw the dead body to the side. Whoa, Tang was right. What are those rats? They don't look like rats. They have no hair. Are they earth rats? Du An Wan stood on another branch on the tree that Lin Gia was standing on and exclaimed. They saw a herd of brown, hairless creatures, which had large and round ears and pointed noses. They looked like rats, each as big as an adult pig. As same as regular rats, they had sharp noses as well as large and round ears. However, they didn't have any hair. Their forepaws were large and strong, and rear paws were relatively small. They also had short tails. Their number wasn't very large. Only thousands of them were seen, not even one in ten thousand as much as the rats that Lin Giao had seen in their zoo area. They all seemed panicked under the cat's attack, running desperately in all directions. Only the enormous, level 7 one among them which was about half the size as the cat, had been attempting to attack the cat. However, the cat dodged nimbly every single time and turned to leave a few deep scratches on its body. By now, the huge rat was already covered in wounds. Roar! The cat pounced on the huge rat, and the rat darted underground within a blink. After that, the cat turned and went after the other rats, seeming reluctant to go underground. Lin Kiao looked at Teng and said, So, the cat is catching rats. All right, you won. She felt as if she were slapped in the face. Chapter 1235 The Weird Rat That Barred the Road Lin Gia wasn't expecting those newly emerged underground creatures to be a herd of rats. Did the biological chain exist underground as well? The level 7 rat was defenseless under the cat's claws, and the cat was twice the rat's size. Soon, the rat had to flee into the ground. The rat had a rather strong vibe, but it ran into its natural enemy unfortunately. Because of the cat, the herd of rats were running away in all directions. Lin Kiao and her people didn't need to do anything, and they could go straight through the area. Suffering the cat's attack, the huge cat was probably agitated. Not long after it crawled underground, it sprung out before the cat as it brandished its claws and jumped at the cat's face. A woo oo 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 the cat scornfully bared its teeth and narrowed its red eyes. It raised a paw and easily slapped the rat down to the ground, or a rat screamed and quickly made roll on the ground. After that, it adjusted its posture and landed all four limbs on the ground. Lowering its body, it looked at the cat and fiercely bared its sharp teeth. Unlike the teeth of normal rats, its teeth were all sharp. Roar. The cat didn't take it seriously at all. All it did was swing its tail toward the rat who dodged nimbly. Meanwhile, the other rats either ran away or went underground. They created a few holes on the ground, but thankfully, the road could still allow the vehicles to drive through. Lin Kiao and her people spent a short while watching the cat and rat game, and then those rats were gone. The cat had killed a lot of rats. It failed to catch the level 7 one though. The big rat couldn't defeat the cat, but it was good at escaping. Awagugu as the road was clear, the cat opened up the heads of a few relatively high-leveled rats and dug up a few nuclei before eating them. Then, it turned and leapt into the air, disappearing and leaving the dead rats behind. See, we can just go straight through, right? Teng held Lin Giao's neck and said. Lin Giao was standing on a branch, leaning against the tree trunk with Teng held in her arms. She nodded and said, I think you are right. Let's go. While speaking. She leapt off the tree and showed up on the road. There, she took out the vehicles from her space. After that, she threw a few dead rats into the woods in her space. She would bring those back for experiments. Soon, she and her people got into the cars and continued driving toward Huexia base. Teng's intuition was amazingly right. Lin Kiao wondered if the boy could always foresee the near future so accurately. Your intuition is so accurate. Can you feel anti Wendwin's current condition? Lin Kiao couldn't help but ask him. Teng sat in the back seat, from where he said, I've told you about that many times. She will come back. I'm not worried about her at all. I just can't see Uncle Yu An's condition. Spoke of Yu An Tanxing, Teng wore a troubled look. Lin Kiao looked at him and asked a little nervously, How can we help him? An infected fresh cat mint might be helpful for him. But where can we find that now? Don't you have any feelings about that? Not even bad feelings. Teng was having his head slightly dropped, thinking deeply. On hearing Lin Giao's words, he raised his head and said, 
no, no feelings at all, no bad feelings, nor good feelings. However, I do feel an indescribable connection between him and Auntie Wenwin. Maybe I'll know when Auntie Wenwin comes back. Is that so? I guess Wenwin is the key. Lin Kiao thought for a moment and said. Teng looked at her and said, Don't worry, Auntie Wenwin will upgrade successfully and come back to us. We might figure out how to save Uncle Yuan when she comes back, because her second power is amazing. Lin Kiao nodded in agreement. You're right. Will she see the future even more accurately than before when her second power enters level 2? Or, maybe it'll become easier to control. The vehicles moved closer and closer to Huexia Base while large batches of people from Sky Firebase had been heading toward Huexia Base too. Their journey wasn't as easy as Lin Kiao's. In cities, they were surrounded by great numbers of zombies, and in the suburbs. They were attacked by mutated animals and plants. What was even worse, they even ran into giant herds of underground insects sometimes. As a result, half of them died on the way. Small numbers of people who weren't welcomed by the group had no choice but to head to Sea City Base. If they attempted to go to Huexia Base, the other Sky Fire Base people would kill them. They might die before they could arrive in Huexia Base. Therefore, they were forced to go to Sea City Base. Those people also suffered heavy casualties on the way. Where are all these monsters from? Are they from the underground too? How come so many strange creatures are coming out of the underground lately? If they keep coming out, I think not even Huexia Base can survive them. Do you think we can survive by joining Sea City Base? Where else can we go? Those bastards would find us if we went to Huexia Base. They'd kill us. No base can survive these massive herds of monsters. I don't think we'll survive them in Sea City Base. Those creatures will break the fence wall. Is there still hope of survival for mankind? I don't know. Right now, we can only try our best to survive. At least. Sea City Base has Wu Cheng Ayu. He is a level 8 man. He'll be able to deal with those monsters. With him, we'll have a better chance to live. You're right. He's a powerful level 8 man. As long as he's in the base, those monsters won't be able to break into the base easily. Those people saw Wu Cheng Ayu, a level 8 man, as their last hope. As Huexia Base wasn't an option, their only choice was Sea City Base. In Huexia Base, C. Kong Jin received the reports about the newest movements of the leaders of the other base. After spending a short while reading the report about Wu Cheng Ayu, he turned and said to Xi Long Yun, who was standing near the window, Are you sure you can do this? There will be consequences if you fail. Xi Long Yun was wearing a tight military top and a Martin hair cape. Her thighs were exposed in the air. As always, she was also wearing a pair of knee-length boots. She leaned against the window frame as she lazily turned around and glanced at Si Kongjin. Relax. She said, I won't fail. Doesn't Wu Cheng Ayu care a lot about that woman? He will fall into my trap if he really cares about her. You just need to do your part. Can you really stall that woman? She has a space. Her space is alive. Si Kongjin responded to her with confidence. Don't worry. I've confirmed that her space isn't mobile. She needs to exit her space on the exact same spot where she enters it. I will disable her from coming out of her space. Xi Long Yun shrugged and said, Your plan better work. I won't take the responsibility if any problem occurred on my side due to you. Chapter 1236 the scheme of Si Kongchen and Xi Yunlong, Wu Cheng Ayu isn't gonna be gullible. Just do what you have to do. Xi Long Yun's words made Si Kongchen frown. He warned her, then stopped talking. Xi Long Yun turned up her sexy red lips to give a faint smile and said, Even a smart man will panic in front of his beloved girl, unless he doesn't love her sincerely. Si Kongchen looked at her questioningly. How do you know he's sincere to her? What if that woman isn't so important to him? Xi Long Yun raised her eyebrows and smiled confidently. Based on what I know about him, he wouldn't possibly spend a whole year on her unless he really loved her. Believe me. Xi Kong Jin stayed silent as he looked at her. How are you going to stall that woman? Xi Long Yun asked him. She seems smart too not to mention the fact that we attempted to steal her prey not long ago. She's certainly alert against you already. Si Kong Jin responded expressionlessly, so what? In my place, 
I have plenty of ways to deal with her. Haven't we received the strong version of the superpower a straining drug from a foreign country lately? It's effective even on me. I don't think she can be an exception. Xilongi unfurrowed her pretty eyebrows slightly and said, I know you have the drug. But, how are you gonna use it on her? Don't tell me that you're going to mix it in her food or water. It's too hard to get close to her without being suspected. Who said I'm going to make her eat the drug? She doesn't need to eat it. Only inhale it, see Kong Jin sneered and dropped his eyes to look at the file in his hand with a grim face. Xi Long Yun stopped short, then looked at Si Kong Jin with surprise and said, Really? Is that drug so powerful? I've tried it. Si Kong Jin raised his head and gave her an expressionless glance. Once again, Xi Long Yun raised her brows as she looked at him and said, You've tried that? How did it work? You are at level 8. Is the drug really effective on you? Si Kong Jin turned his head slightly, said, I paid a huge price for that drug. It wasn't easy to get it. My people have figured out its recipe. Sadly, a few special ingredients can't be found in our country. To get more of that drug, we have to keep working with them. He sounded a little excited, as if he had gotten a true treasure. Oh. Xi Long Yun said, I guess you did pay a big price for the drug. Since they've already created a drug like this, I assume they're much more developed than we are. If you have the drug, why don't you just kill that woman? Si Kong Jin lowered his head and started reading the file again. Meanwhile, he said, I will certainly kill her when I can. The drug can only be used at special periods of time because its effect isn't strong. It can only disable the superpower of a level 8 being for 5 seconds. Within that short period of time, her superpowers will be limited, but not her activity. She would die if no accidents happened. But, I'm not sure if she has other ways to save her own life. But at least, her power will be limited, and your plan can be carried out. Xi Long Yun nodded and said, If you have something that good, give me some so I can use it on Wu Cheng Ayu. Won't that be easier? Si Kong Jin sighed as he leaned against the back of his chair and looked straight at her. I'd certainly give you some if I had more. The problem is, I only have two doses. They wouldn't give me more. One dose is already used for experiments, so there's only one dose left. So, I can't give you any. Xi Long Yun turned down her lips and complained, Why didn't you get more? I wanted to, said Si Kong Jin, but, they can't produce it in large batches yet. So, they refused to sell more to me. Alright then, we'll stick to the plan. I got to go. Xi Long Yun said, then turned and left. The next day, Lin Giao sensed the vibes of Wu Cheng Ayu and his people when she was still tens of miles away from Huexia base. Daddy is here. Teng had also sensed his father's vibe. He excitedly put both hands on the window frame and looked outside. Wearing thick clothes. He looked like a baby bear. Lin Giao smiled faintly as she pinched his cheek and said, Why are you so excited? You saw him just a few days ago. Because I don't need to eat poorly tasted porridge when daddy is around. I want daddy's porridge. Teng glanced at Lin Giao scornfully, straightforwardly criticizing her poor cooking. He was used to Wu Cheng Ayu's food. Wu Cheng Ayu had raised him into a picky boy. You're just picky. My porridge isn't so bad. Lin Kiao argued with him. Your porridge always tastes the same. I'm so sick of it already. Tang turned down his lips with dislike. Indeed, Lin Kiao's cooking wasn't as bad as he said, but her porridge had only one flavor. After trying all kinds of baby porridges that Wu Cheng Ayu made for him, Tang felt that living on Lin Kiao's porridge was pure torment. Enduring her food for so many days was already the best he could do. Lin Kiao didn't know what to say. The boy was still so young, but he was picky already. How was she supposed to raise him? You got to get used to my food too, because you can't stay with that guy every day. What are you gonna do when you're with me? She thought for a moment and decided to try to make the boy less picky. Ten agreed with her, Sog looked at his mother and fell into silence. At last, he decided to be nice to himself and said, Can you at least try to create a few more flavors for me? Having the same flavor every day is really exhausting. I'll try my best. Allow me some time, Lin Kiao grinned at him. For some reason, her grin gave Teng a not so good feeling. After returning to all beings base from Huexia base, 
Tang had truly learned what bad cooking really meant. Lin Giao had to spend a very long time to learn how to make edible food without blowing up the kitchen. Could someone like that possibly learn how to make different types of delicious food within a short span of time? Tang was forced to try her creative dishes every single day. He regretted asking his mother to cook something different for him so much but there was no way back. He had a strong stomach that allowed him to survive on any food. However, the awful tastes were killing him. Chapter 1237, Visiting Huexia Base the Third Time Lin Qiao and her people had pulled over when Wu Cheng Ai saw them. She was sitting on top of a car, holding Teng. The others were also quietly sitting on car roofs. Of course, the zombies and humans were separated. I can't believe you brought Ling Ling. What were you thinking? Seeing Ling Ling running toward her, Lin Giao put Tang on the car roof and leapt off the car. Then, she bent over and scooped Ling Ling up. Then, she turned and put her together with Tang. Because you're here, you can put the kids in your space. Wu Cheng Aiu walked up to Lin Kiao and said to her with a smile. Lin Kiao turned and picked up the two kids from the car roof. Then the three of them disappeared together. After spending the whole night working, Lu Tani finally cut all the meat into pieces. By the time he finally soaked the meat and internal organs in the buckets, Lin Kiao's pets already couldn't wait to eat the meat which was soaked in the buckets the first. The meat soaked in the water first was from the rats that the young tiger caught. The two rats were only enough for the tiger itself and the other three all had large appetites. The rats could barely satisfy them. Except for Boa, who attempted to steal a piece of rat meat, the other two had been patiently waiting for their own food. A woo -oo -oo -oo. As the dog reached his head toward the tiger's food, the young tiger immediately rushed at him and roared ragingly, with all its hair standing up. If the dog dared to dip his mouth into the water, the tiger would slap him on the face. The dog drooled at the meat. He sniffed at the meat in the bucket then looked at the small but fierce little tiger. At last, he licked around his own mouth and reluctantly turned around to sniff at Black's food. As a result, Black swung his tail over and gave the dog a slap on the face, warning him not to drool over someone else's food. But, Boa had super thick skin. As Black refused to let him sniff at his food, he turned to someone else. In the next few hours, he sniffed at his own food sometimes and approached the other's food when they weren't paying attention. The young tiger bared its teeth and growled at the dog every time. Lu Tani didn't know that Wu Cheng Ayu had arrived until Lin Giao put Wu Yuling and Ten into the space. So, we're arriving at Huexia base, right? After finishing his work, Lu Tani didn't feel tired, only relived. He sat on the couch in the living room to keep the two kids company watching them chase the fat rabbit all over the place. The rabbit hadn't returned to the space for a long time. At the moment, it was excitedly bounding in the living room. Wu Yu Ling wanted to catch it, but the fat rabbit was actually fast and nimble. Before long, four, old go, and the other zombies were all brought into the space by Lin Kiao as well. Oi, ye, you've cut all the meat already. You are now chief's exclusive pet feeder. Congratulations. Old Go came in and saw Lutani sitting on the couch leisurely. He instantly hunched his back and talked to the other with a grin while brushing his beard with his fingers. Except for Four and Old Go, the other zombies didn't dare to come into Lin Giao's house without permission. They stayed outside, standing, sitting, or strolling in the field. Lutani didn't know the old man well. As the old man seemed rather friendly, he smiled at him politely and said, I'm honored to be able to help her. Mo Yan and his zombie girl didn't enter Lin Kiao's space. They weren't planning on joining Lin Kiao and her team, so they went missing during the journey. Lin Kiao put her vehicles into the space, then sat in Wu Cheng Ai's car. Together, they headed toward Huexia base. According to Xi Dong, Lan Lu was also arriving at the Huexia base. The leaders of Heilong Base and Mongols Base arrived a day ago. Huexia Base had the gate opened since long ago to welcome them. Why He Chao was the one to welcome them at the gate? It used to be Hu Guizhong's job, but the latter never woke up after being attacked by Lan Lu. So now, Why He Chao took his place to welcome the guests. What a surprise to see you again so soon, Chief Lu, Chief Wu. Did you two have a safe journey? Why Hichao stood in the middle of the road. As the cars were stopped, 
he greeted the guests as if he was an old friend of theirs. He was actually talking to Lin Kiao. After all, the two of them had seen each other not long ago in the northwest. Lin Kiao responded to him with a small smile. Yeah, she said. I wonder if Deputy Chief Hu is getting better. Chief Lan was really heavy-handed. I'm worried that Deputy Chief Hu might never be able to wake up. She said those words smilingly and made them sound like a joke. But in fact, she was implying that Hu Guoshong and his people should not attempt to get something which did not belong to them, and that Hu Guoshong had gotten exactly what he deserved. Hu Guoshong was Si Kong Jin's right-hand man, as a deputy chief. He needed to do a lot of work for Si Kong Jin. Putting him down equaled cutting off an arm of Si Kong Jin. Of course, the latter brought that to himself. The smile on Wai Hichan's face froze briefly, but he managed to keep his facial expression under control. I believe our doctors will soon cure him. Miss Lu, thank you for your concern. He did not plan to simply endure Lin Kiao's verbal attack. Instead, he launched a counter-attack. Lin Kiao's base had no skillful doctors currently. Aside from doctors, her base was also in short of all kinds of technicians. At least in Wai Hichao's eyes, all beings base relied on Sea City base for survival. Lin Kiao didn't react strongly to what he said. She gave a polite smile and said, Yeah, I guess my concern is unnecessary then. I'll be expecting the good news about Deputy Chief Hu. All right. We are done with the small talk. Shouldn't you be guiding us in? Of course. Please. Why Hichao's vibe was completely suppressed by Lin Kiao's, and his words barely affected her. With a grin, he guided Lin Kiao and Wu Cheng Ayu into his base, but he sulked deep inside because of her. Seeing the composed smile on Lin Kiao's face, he sneered in his heart. The woman was good at maintaining a calm look. He had had interactions with her a few times. She was definitely not easy to deal with. Before, when she was still at level 7, she already had the guts to disable an arm of a level 7 chairman from Huexia base. Now, she was at level 8, almost as powerful as Si Kongchen himself. Why He Chao couldn't imagine what she might do when she was infuriated. Chapter 1238 Are You Guys Crazy? When Lin Kiao and Wu Cheng Ayu arrived at Huexia base, Lin Wenwin was receiving the last batch of goods that she had ordered online while the Dong family was preparing to head to Sea City. When the last batch of goods was put into her space, her space would be totally filled up. The money she used to buy all those things was borrowed from Dong Lijia. That didn't cause her any difficulties to purchase all the supplies that she wanted though. Are you done packing yet? Are we good to go? Dong Lijia was able to clearly differentiate Lin Wenwin from Dong Xinxin now. Lin Wenwin was counting the goods in her exclusive storage. The goods were in paper boxes, piling on the ground. Dong Lijia walked over and glanced at those goods, wearing an embarrassed look. All those boxes were marked by the brands of sanitary towels. All kinds of brands could be found. He turned to look somewhere else and said awkwardly, Ahem, we'll leave tonight. Do get ready. After saying that, he quickly turned and left. Oh, I get it, don't worry, I'll be ready before it gets dark. Lin Wenwin was busy counting those goods, so she responded to him without thinking at first. But, as the young man ran away, she gave him a glance. After that, she turned back to find the sanitary towel brands on the boxes, and couldn't help but roll her eyes. As she finished receiving the goods and returned to Dong Family Mansion, she saw Dong Lijia sitting on the couch in the living room, looking around in a daze. He seemed to be a little reluctant to leave. Lin Wenwin stopped walking and asked him, Didn't you warn Deng Chenfei and Liu Yuan Jun? Aren't they your best friends? Dong Lijia turned to her and said, Xinxin said that they will both survive. In the first few years after the apocalypse, their lives won't be too bad. So, she wants to find herself a strong foothold first. We will be helping them after we settle down ourselves. They won't die within two years anyway. Telling them about what will happen would cause unpredictable changes to their lives. We don't know if those changes would be good or bad. So, we decided not to do it. Lin Wenwin looked at him and stayed silent for a second, then said, Xinxin is right, but have you guys ever thought that ever since Xinxin and I came back here, your lives have been changed already. Those are the direct changes. There are also indirect changes, 
which might affect some other people. Everyone related to you and your family might be affected. The return of Lin Wenhuin and Dong Xingxin had already changed the lives of everyone who was a part of Dong Xingxin's life. Their future lives might be or might not be the same as Dong Xingxin already knew. On hearing her words, Dong Liji stopped short, then looked at her and said with a serious look, what do you mean? Lin Wenwin looked at him and said, never mind. You won't understand. Even if you're not going to find them, they'll soon find you. I've told you, their lives have already been changed because of the return of Xingxin and me. Their lives won't be the same as what had happened once. Earlier, Dong Xingxin mentioned that she didn't want to do anything to help the people who would survive the first apocalypse, and would let them live the original way. However, she never thought of the fact that her return had already changed the lives of the people who had made contact with her. Dong Ligia furrowed his brows. Neither he nor Dong Xingxin had thought about what Lin Wenwin just said. They were focusing on how to keep their family safe and create a better life after the apocalypse. They paid all their attention on gathering supplies and how to face the dangerous post-apocalyptic world. They did think about their friends. Dong Xingxin believed that they would survive because they survived last time. But before Dong Ligia said anything else, a guard knocked on the door and told him that young Master Luo and young Master Deng had come to visit him. Lin Wenwin spread her hands and said, See, in Dong Xingxin's previous life, Deng Chenfei and Luo Yuan Jun shouldn't have been visiting your family at this time. But now, they are here. I guess the two of them won't let you leave unless you give them a clear explanation. After saying that, she smiled as she turned and went upstairs. Dong Ligia looked at her back. She now looked much slimmer than she was two months ago. Soon, the noises of sports cars were heard from the outside. Dong Ligia, what's wrong with your family? Why on earth did you sell all your stocks? Luo Yuan Jun's voice could be heard before he even came in. And you have sold your own companies too. Are you guys crazy? What is going on here? I spent only one month abroad and I heard about that once I came back. Are you trying to freak me out here? Luo Yuan Jun stormed in as he asked a series of questions to Dong Lijia, who had just stood up from the couch. Deng Chenfei followed him in. He stayed silent, but as same as Luo Yuan Jun. He also stared at Dong Ligia with confusion. Lately, he had been busy, paying little attention to the news. Earlier, Luo Yuan Jun suddenly gave him a call and told him that the group company run by Dong Ligia's family had switched owners. The stocks held by the family were sold out. Apart from that, Dong family had also sold most of their properties in the quickest way. He immediately searched online about the news which was reported by several media outlets. No one knew the reason why Dong family suddenly sold their company yet. Many people attempted to approach Dong family to see if any internal information could be found. However, after selling the company and properties, Dong family people had been hiding in their mansion all the time. There were more guards in the mansion than before and all those guards were very capable. The reporters couldn't find any chance to take even one useful picture. Currently, the media and the people in business were all making guesses about what had happened to Dong family. After reading the news, Liu Yuanjun and Deng Chenfei headed to Dong family mansion without even giving Dong Lijia a call. They heard about the big news a whole month after it happened. They spent a lot of time with Dong Lijia before, but the latter never leaked even a trace of the reason why his family would sell their business. The three of them grew up together and were like brothers. Why was Dong Ligia keeping such a big matter secret from them? Why? The two rushed straight into Dong Ligia's family house to find out why. Seeing the look on their faces, Dong Ligia realized that the two wouldn't give up until he gave them a satisfactory explanation. Chapter 1239 The Questions That Had Been Asked Dong Ligia glanced at Liuo, then at Deng Chenfei. Then, he looked at them both and said, Would you guys believe me if I told you the truth? Liu Yuan Jun made eye contact with Deng Chenfei, then said, Of course, I just want to know what made you guys sell the huge group company of yours. Has someone been threatening you? Is there a serious problem with the company? Why did you sell all the stocks? Don't tell me the company is dying. Deng Chenfei looked around, then blinked and said, all the valuable things in your house are gone. What's going on? Are you going to run? He looked around the living room carefully, 
the house used to be decorated with some really valuable art pieces, antiques, and other objects. Now, it was almost empty, except for some furniture pieces. Nothing valuable could be found in the living room. The place even looked larger than before. On hearing Deng Chenfei's words, Liu Yuanjun paused briefly with surprise, then started paying attention to the house. After taking a glance around, he gave a start and said, No way. Are you guys going to run away? What kind of crisis made you sell out all your stocks and everything in your house? You didn't sell your little wife to did you? Dong Liji sighed as he raised a hand to stop him from keep imagining. It's not like what you think, but I have sold my little wife already indeed. Liu Yuan Jun popped his eyes with disbelief and said, it's not like what I think, if it's not like what I'm thinking. How could you possibly sell your beloved car? If you needed money, you could ask us for help. We're like your brothers. We might not be rich enough to save your family company, but we would help you as much as we could. We can figure out something together. Isn't that what friends do? Or, do you think that we're the kind of friends that you can only have fun with? Deng Chenfei nodded with a serious look. He didn't say a word, but he clearly agreed with Liu Yuan Jun. Seeing how agitated Liu Yuan Jun was, Dong Lijia hurriedly put an arm around his neck and said to him, I've told you, it's not like what you think it is. The situation is probably worse than you imagined. You definitely can't imagine it. On hearing that, Liu Yuan Jun furrowed his eyebrows, then closed his eyes for a second. After that, he reopened his eyes as he pointed at Dong Lijia and said, Just tell me what happened. Dong Lijia looked at him, then at Deng Chenfei. Next, he walked to the couch and took a seat as he waved at the two, Chenfei. Do you remember the question I asked you at the beach? Deng Chenfei stopped short as he looked at him with slight confusion and asked, The question you asked me at the beach? Liu Yuan Jun and Dong Lijia were both looking at him. Before Dong Lijia could say anything, the impatient Liu Yuan Jun asked his own questions. He asked you a question, what is it? Did he ask you that question when we were at the beach? Is that question special? Deng Chenfei spent some time thinking. Did Dong Lijio ask him a question a month ago at the beach? He had a good memory. He thought hard, then recalled that question Dong Lijio asked him when they were strolling on the beach. Abruptly, he blinked his eyes as he stared at Dong Lijio and said, that question? I thought it was a joke. Dong Lijia nodded as he gave an unconfident smile and said, Would you think that I'm crazy if I told you it's gonna happen for real? Once his voice faded, Deng Chenfei gawked at him with disbelief. What? What are you guys talking about? Chenfei, what question did he ask you? Liu Yuan Jun hurriedly urged Deng Chenfei to explain to him, as he didn't even understand the conversation between Deng Chenfei and Dong Lijia. Seeing Deng Chenfei stare at Dong Lijia as if the latter were crazy, he grew even more curious. He was so desperate to know the truth, and his curiosity was killing him by now. Oh, he asks me what would I do if the apocalypse happened someday. Then, he said it was just a joke. I asked him what kind of apocalypse it would be. Would it be a volcano eruption, or a massive earthquake, or tsunami? or some other kind of natural disaster Den Chenfei couldn't finish his words. Huh? Apocalypse? What the hell? Liu Yuan Jun was utterly confused. He didn't understand why Dong Lijio asked a question like that. But in the next moment, an idea crossed his mind. He immediately turned to Dong Lijia and said, You're not gonna tell us that the question you asked Chen Fai is gonna happen for real, are you? Under the gaze of the two who clearly didn't want to believe him, Dong Lijia nodded helplessly. Are you okay? You didn't lose your mind, did you? Unlike Deng Chen Fai who was merely staring at Dong Lijia with disbelief, Liu Yuan Jun said the words out loud. He widened his eyes so much in surprise that his eyeballs even seemed to fall out of his face. Dong Lijia spread his hands and said, See, I've told you that you wouldn't believe me. You wanted me to tell you the truth, and now you think I'm crazy. I really wish that I'm just crazy. After saying that, he gave a sigh, then leaned against the back of the couch and continued with, when my sister comes downstairs, you'll know who's crazier. They're talking about you. Why do you mention me? A silvery voice was heard from the upstairs. The three turned to the stairs and saw a small-sized, adorable girl walk down the stairs with a bland face. She wore no expressions, 
but her voice sounded a little cold. Her words didn't make the three react strongly, but her body shape did. Liu Yuanjun and Deng Chenfei both popped their eyes in shock. They stared straight at her as if she were a ghost. Oh my god. Dong Xinxin. Are you Dong Xinxin? Liu Yuanjun sprung up and looked at Dong Xinxin who had already lost over 15 kilograms. She not only looked much slimmer than before, but also had full breasts, a beautiful waist, and straight legs. Those legs weren't super slender though. Her face stayed round, but was much less fleshy than before. Her face looked delicate and lovely. Her small size made her look like a cute little bird. Without seeing her chest. One might think that she was only about 14 years old. Liu Yuanjun was honestly dumbfounded, and so was Deng Chenfei. After all, they remembered Dong Xingxin as a very chubby girl, who looked literally like a ball. As the boys were gawking at her, Dong Xingxin suddenly put on a frosty face and swiftly darted down the stairs. She rushed up to Liu Yuanjun and grasped a hand of his, then turned and bent over putting forth her strength through her legs as she raised her round and strong hip. Ah! In the next second, Liu Yuanjun was thrown to the other side of the tea table. Chapter 1240 Liu Yuanjun got his butt kicked. Thud. Liu Yuanjun was thrown to the area before the tea table. Deng Chenfei stayed silent in shock. Dong Lijia didn't say anything either. Liu Yuanjun sat on the ground with his mouth gaped without even knowing what just happened. That was not the end though. Dong Xingxin lunged up to him with big steps, clenched her fists, and punched him right in the face. Ouch. Wait wait. Why did you hit me again? Liu Yu and Jun, who just sat up from the ground, didn't even manage to react before being punched in the eye. He covered that injured eyes and screamed out loud, then looked at Dong Xingxin as if she were a ghost. Xingxin? Dong Lijia finally realized what was happening. The one who punched Liu Yuanjun was probably his sister. But, why did Dong Xingxin punch Liu Yuanjun at the sight of him? After giving Liu Yuanjun that punch, Dong Xingxin stood up as she turned to Dong Lijia and said, It if weren't for him, I would never die and end up back here. After saying that, she gave Liu Yuanjun a cold glance, then snorted as she turned and sat down on the couch. What? It was because of him? Dong Lijia's expression changed the moment he heard Dong Xingxin's words. He immediately rolled up his sleeves and walked to Liu Yuanjun, seemingly wanting to punch Liu Yuanjun too. Oi, wait, wait. Dong Lijia, what are you doing? Dong Xingxin, what did you mean? Why did you hit me? What did I ever to do you? Seeing Dong Lijia coming at him aggressively, Liu Yuanjun hurriedly struggled up from the ground and reached out one hand to stop him as he kept covering his eye with the other. With deep confusion and anger, he looked at Dong Lijia and his sister and asked them, You don't believe what my brother said, do you? Wait and see in half a month. Don't blame us for not warning you guys. You think I worked out so hard just to lose weight? He he Dong sinks in tittered scornfully at them. Wait a second. What does what your brother said have to do with the fact that you hit me? Wait, do you believe what he said? Also, what did you mean by you died and ended up back here? I am so confused right now. I don't understand what's going on here. Chen Fai. Do you have a clue? Liu Yuanjun widened his one eye as he looked at Dong Xingxin and her brother, and then at Deng Chenfei. Deng Chenfei stayed quiet. He looked at Liu Yuanjun expressionlessly, then at Dong Xingxin and Dong Lijia. With his eyes narrowed, he looked at Dong Xingxin and said to her, How can you guys prove what you said? Only by selling your family business and losing your weight? Dong Xingxin shrugged and said, Believe it or not. As I've said, you wait and see in half a month. Come here. Now tell me, what did this guy do before you came back here? As Liu Yuanjun had created a safe distance from him, Dong Lijia gave up on kicking his ass and asked Dong Xingxin a question. Oh, I went to save him. I told him to go back to the base without me, but he refused to do it. In the end, we both died. I tried so hard to save him, but ended up getting myself killed as well. Recalling what happened back then, Dong Xingxin glared at Liu Yuanjun angrily. Liu Yuanjun had absolutely no idea what she was talking about. What the hell? 
He looked at her and said with confusion, Dong Lijiao reacted in a different way. What? Why did you tell him to leave without you? Weren't you trying to save him? The two of you should be leaving together. Dong Xingxin looked at Dong Lijiao and said, I had one broken leg. Taking me with him, he couldn't possibly survive in that kind of circumstances. So, I told him to leave without me. If he survived, my life wouldn't be lost in vain. But in the end, he wasted his life. I consumed up all my energy to save him, but he chose to die together with me. You, how dare you waste the opportunity of survival that my sister earned for you by giving up her own life. I'll kill you. Hearing Dong Xingxin's words and sensing her grievance, Dong Lijia was infuriated instantly. What on earth are you guys talking about? I don't even understand a word you said. Luo Yuan Jun hurriedly moved to the side to dodge Dong Lijia's attack. Dong Lijia rolled up his sleeves again, prepared to give Luo Yuan Jun a serious punch. But, after making about two steps, he paused and struggled, wait, actually, if he abandoned you and ran, I'd truly kill him. Dong Xingxin looked at him speechlessly. So, exactly which side you're on? She wanted to ask him that question. Deng Chenfei, who had been ignored by the others, couldn't help but join the conversation. You guys haven't answered my question yet, haven't we? Dong Lijie turned and looked at him as he said. What I wanted to say is the same as what Xingxin has said. It's your choice to believe it or not. As your friend, I am now telling you this, even though you might think that I've lost my mind. In half a month, you guys can meet us in Sea City. As for the company, just stop thinking about it. My brother is right. Since you don't believe us, don't ask about the reason why we did what we did. We are all friends. We have no reason to lie to you guys. But Liu Yu and Jun, if what I said is gonna be real, remember, you owe me a life. Dong Xingxin's pretty face wore a very serious look. She really didn't seem to be joking at all. When she looked at Liu Yu and Jun, actual anger could be detected from her eyes. I, I Liu Yu and Jun looked at her in the eyes. Under her strong vibe, he almost believed her words. However, his sanity told him that it would be impossible. However, the punch that Dong Xingxin gave him was not gentle at all. It hurt like hell. This is why I didn't tell you anything. I knew you wouldn't believe me. Relax. In half a month, almost half of all people in the world will die, but you guys will survive. Remember, go and find us in Sea City. Dong Liji sighed then turned to Dong Xingxin. What? You make this sound like a real thing. I don't even know what this so-called apocalypse is gonna be yet. And Dong Xingxin, you actually hit me. Liu Yuan Jun looked at Dong Lijia bewilderedly, then at Deng Chenfei, and at last, he turned to Dong Xingxin grumpily. Dong Lijia walked back to the couch and sat down as he looked at him and laughed. I've told you that you'd be hit by Xingxin at some point. You wouldn't believe me. She's rather short-tempered now. Deng Chenfei looked around, then glanced at Dong Xingxin and said, So, Xingxin's strange behaviors, and you guys selling the family business, were all these because of the joke that you told me? If that's really gonna happen, what did you guys need money for? The money would be useless, wouldn't it? Seeing the look on his face. Dong Lijiao realized that he had already started to believe the apocalypse. You had given the answer yourself, haven't you? When I asked you that question, Deng Chenfei thought for a moment. Dong Lijiao asked him what he would prepare in advance if the world was going to be occupied by zombies and virus. His answer was, food, water, vehicles, and gasoline. Chapter 1241 you guys can feel it, recalling the answer that he had given, Deng Chenfei looked at Dong Lijia with surprise, uncertainly, he said to Dong Lijia, was what you said true, how how did you guys know about it then, it's not happening yet, is it, were they even able to foresee the future, Dong Lijia pointed at Dong Xingxin and said, oh, she told me, don't you guys feel that she has changed a lot, come on, you guys can feel it, while speaking, he stood up and pulled his sister up from the couch. Dong Xingxin didn't know what he was going to do. With confusion, she was dragged to the middle of the living room. Then she saw her brother make a posture preparing to fight. Only after that did she understand her brother's meaning. Really? Dong Xingxin said to Dong Lijia. Yeah, 
Dong Lijia nodded. The other two bewilderedly looked at Dong Lijia and Dong Xinxin. Were they going to fight each other? At that moment, Dong Xinxin suddenly made a movement. She lunged and lowered her body to launch a sweep kick, while Dong Lijia nimbly leapt backward. She made a swift step forward and punched his stomach at a lightning speed. Ouch! Dong Lijia gave a muffled moan. He already reacted very fast, but still, he suffered that punch. However, Dong Xinxin hadn't stopped yet. After giving Dong Lijia a punch in the stomach, she launched a heavy kick. This time, he managed to dodge that attack. Meanwhile, he quickly punched at Dong Xinxin. She dodged that punch easily by tilting her head and also raised an elbow to push his punching arm upward. Their movements were simple but very fast. Deng Chenfei was able to read their moves. But unlike him, Liu Yuan Jun could barely see their movements clearly. He popped his eyes as he watched Dong Xinxin throw Dong Lijiao into disadvantages. They even created a series of swishing noises. While fighting, they stared at each other with serious looks and both of them gave out strong vibes. Luo Yuan Jun was dumbfounded watching the nimble and fierce Donk Sinksin. Was she still Donk Sinksin the fat ball, who would never attack him when he called her fat, no matter how angry she was? He knew her for more than ten years, but never knew that she could actually fight. She wasn't only fighting her brother now, but was fighting skillfully. Ch Chen Fai, have you discovered anything yet? He asked Deng Chen Fai the fighting master among his friends. Meanwhile, the look on the latter's face grew more and more serious. Ooh! Dong Lijia was a step late, and ended up being punched by Dong Xinxin right on the nose. The pain made his tears gush out of his eye sockets, and also made him scream, Stop! Stop! It hurts! Dong Lijia immediately covered his nose. Within a blink, he stepped back to three meters away from Dong Xinxin as he looked at her with tearful eyes and yelled. You said you wanted a real fight. Dong Xinxin shrugged to him. Oh, it hurts. You hit me too hard even for a real fight. You nearly broke your brother's nose. Dong Lijia closed his eyes and said with a painful look. Deng Chenfei didn't answer Liu Yuan Jun's question but narrowed his eyes as he walked up to Dong Xinxin. He slightly turned his body and made a preparing posture. Fight me. Whoa, really? Seeing Deng Chenfei, who was taller than six feet, stand before Dong Xinxin, who was barely five feet tall, Liu Yuan Jun couldn't help but pop his eye again. Of course, he was still covering his other eye. Covering his nose, Dong Lijia moved to Liu Yuan Jun's side and said, do you want to try? You were already beaten twice, weren't you? Doesn't your eye hurt anymore? Liu Yuan Jun didn't say a word. Dong Xinxin raised her head as she looked at Deng Chenfei. He gave out a fierce vibe, and so did she. Carelessly, she nodded and said, Sure. While speaking, her vibe changed a little, and she grew slightly alert. She was confident about her combat skills which were developed during her battles against zombies. But after all, Deng Chenfei was much stronger than Dong Lijia. You first or me? Dong Xinxin showed no fear toward the tall and strong Deng Chenfei, but stared at him in the eyes as she asked, You first, Deng Chenfei would, of course, not attack the girl, who was much smaller the size than himself. He only planned to defend. Dong Xinxin suddenly bent her legs and charged at him. Her fists were small, but her punches were swift and heavy. Within a blink, she sprung up and punched at Deng Chenfei in the face. Deng Chenfei immediately crossed his forearms to shield his face against her fist. As her fist landed on his arms, he sensed a severe pain and numbness, and then he made a slight step backward. But before he could think, Dong Xinxin turned in the air and launched a sideways kick toward his neck. Ordinary people couldn't possibly make that kind of movement. It not only required an agile body but also all kinds of training. Donk Sinkson's move was perfectly smooth. Hearing the swishing noise caused by her foot, Deng Chenfei automatically raised an arm and clenched his fist to protect his ear. Thud. The arm that Deng Chenfei raised to block that kick of Donk Sinkson was thrown to the side by Donk Sinkson's heavy kick. Thankfully, he had moved his head in advance, or that kick would also land on his head. Dong Xinxin's punches and kicks were all especially heavy. Normal girls couldn't possibly have that kind of strength. She was even stronger than some men. After that kick, 
Donk sinks and nimbly flipped backward and landed back on the ground steadily. As she prepared to charge again, Deng Chenfei suddenly stepped backward and raised both hands, stop. All right, I get it. Donk sinks and stopped moving. Through that short combat, Deng Chenfei could tell how good she was. His judgment might not be accurate though, because she might be stronger than what he had seen. However, he did discover something from her moves, speed, strength, and her way of attacking. One couldn't possibly learn to fight like that within three months. So, how did this happen? He looked at Dong Sinksin and asked. Chapter 1242, Deng Chenfei and Lin Feng. Even after fighting Dong Lijia and Deng Chenfei in a row, Dong Sinksin wasn't out of breath or sweating at all. She turned and sat down on the couch while speaking. Didn't you ask me why I know about the apocalypse already? It's because I'm from seven years in the future, after a rebirth. I've died once, because of him. While speaking, she pointed at Liu Yu and Jun, who was now utterly shocked and confused. WH what? You died? Rebirth? Seven years in the future? Fat ball. You didn't have your brain damaged, did you? Liu Yu and Jun gave a start and said to her with disbelief. Without those seven years, where do you think I learned all these from? Why do you think I lost weight? Also, if you call me fat ball again, I'll turn your other eye black. You can give it a try, Dong Sinks and stared at Liu Yu and Jun and said. At the point, Deng Chenfei already believed 80% of what Dong Sinks and Dong Lijia said. He wore a slight frown that was rarely seen on his expressionless face, and fell into thoughts. He walked back to his seat and sat down. Then looked at Donk Sinksin. So, what do you mean by you and him dying together? Are you saying that you now have extra seven years of memory and experience? Donk Sinksin nodded, said, Yes. My superpower is special, so I came back, brother. Before she could finish her words, she suddenly closed her eyes and furrowed her brows as she raised a hand to support her head, seeming very uncomfortable. Both Liu Yu and Jun and Deng Chenfei were surprised to see that. Unlike them, Dong Lijia nodded calmly and said, I get it. As he said that, Dong Xingxin abruptly leaned against the back of the couch and stopped moving. WH what's happening to her now? Liu Yu and Jun dropped his hand which was covering one of his eyes as he looked at Dong Xingxin and asked that question while blinking that injured eye of his. Deng Chenfei turned to Dong Lijia as well. Oh, it's nothing. Dong Lijia responded to them. It's just a daily thing. Her body is switching owners. Switching owners? Deng Chenfei squinted at him with confusion. Yeah, what does that mean? Liu Yu and Jun looked at Dong Lijia, also confusedly. Then at Donk Sinksin. At that moment, Donk Sinksin slowly opened her eyes and sat up. Seeing Dong Lijia's nose, she smiled and said, Sinksin hit you much harder than I did. After saying that, she raised a hand and clenched her fist. But this time, she stayed for a longer time after the fight than she did the last time. Yeah, she did stay a little longer than the last time. Dong Lijia nodded in agreement. Deng Chenfei and Liu Yu and Jun had just received a massive amount of new information, which caused their brains to work a little unwell at the moment. Hearing the conversation between Dong Lijia and his sister, they were once again confused. Dong Xingxin seemed to have suddenly changed. Her tone of speaking became weird. She called her own name as if she were talking about someone else but she made that sound natural. The ones who heard her felt truly strange. Dong Lijia's attitude toward her was also different. He seemed to be talking to someone else, and not his sister. The one who woke up this time was, of course, not Dong Xingxin, but Lin Wenwin. She stood up and looked at Dong Lijia as she said, all right, I'm going upstairs. You guys carry on. Ooh. As she prepared to walk upstairs. Her eyes scanned across Den Chenfei. At that very moment, an image suddenly popped in her head. When, seeing that Lin Wenwin nearly fell, Dong Lijia gave a start and sprung up from the couch. Lin Wenwin only felt a little dizzy but didn't fall. She stopped moving and sat down as she closed her eyes. In the meantime, she raised a hand toward Dong Lijia and said, I am fine, don't worry. With her eyes closed, she focused on that image in her head. She saw Deng Chenfei in it and some other people, 
who weren't supposed to be together with him. The image was moving. She heard Deng Chenfei talking to another person. That was what we saw. It was too dangerous, so we didn't manage to get close enough. I'm really sorry, he said. While speaking, Deng Chenfei's cold face actually wore a look of guilt. The one standing in front of him was no one else but Lin Wenwin's big brother. Lin Feng. Lin Feng seemed agitated. He suddenly put both hands on Deng Chenfei's shoulders as he stared at the latter with red eyes and said, Are they still alive? You did nothing wrong. You don't need to apologize to me. I just want to know if they were still alive when you saw them the last time. Deng Chenfei nodded and said something. This time, Lin Wenwin couldn't hear what he said, and the image soon faded. Abruptly, she opened her eyes then turned and stared straight at Deng Chenfei. She wanted to know what exactly was happening to Lin Feng and Deng Chenfei in that image she saw, and what they were talking about. However, when she looked at Deng Chenfei again, nothing emerged from her mind. What was that? What did Deng Chenfei see? Why was her brother so nervous and agitated? What happened? When, are you okay? Dong Lijia looked at her and asked. He saw her stare at Deng Chenfei as if something serious had just happened. Earlier, Deng Chenfei and Liu Yuan Jun watched Dong Xingxin suddenly become like another person. They were already confused. And now, hearing Dong Lijia call her when instead of Xingxin, the two of them honestly felt as if their brains had stopped working. I'm fine Lin Wenwin spent a short while looking at Deng Chenfei. After confirming that no other image would occur, she turned her eyes away with disappointment. Wait, seriously? What are you guys doing here? Liu Yuanjun gave up on trying to figure things out by himself. Instead, he asked the question out loud. Oh, she's not Xinxin. Let me introduce her to you guys. She's Wen, the other um, soul that exists in Xinxin's body. We don't know her real name, identity, or age. I think she's a year older than I am. She's a girl too. She came from the future together with Xinxin. Dong Lijia introduced Lin Wenwin to his two friends. Seven years ago, Lin Wenwin was 21, one year older than Dong Lijia, who was 20. Oh, I think I'm gonna lose my mind. What on earth is happening to this world? Why do I feel that all I've heard and seen today isn't real? At last, Liu Yuan Jun looked at the ceiling and gave up on thinking about anything that had something to do with Dong Lijia and his sister. Deng Chenfei looked at Dong Lijia and said expressionlessly, The Apocalypse, Rebirth, Seven Extra Years of Memory, and now another soul. Your sister is such a magical being. Even as an aloof and cold person, he, at that point, couldn't help but complain. Chapter 1243, Believe It or Not I'm not feeling well. I'm going back to my room. Lin Wenwin stood up from the couch and walked upstairs. Are you okay? Is there's a problem with Xinxin's body? Dong Lijia stood up as well and looked at her with concern. What he was more worried about was Dong Xinxin's health of course. Relax. Your sister is perfectly healthy. It's my problem. This won't happen again when I leave. Lin Wenwin took a deep breath and then responded to him with a frown. She was thinking about the image she saw about Deng Chenfei and Lin Feng. Wondering what happened to her brother and what was his relationship with Deng Chenfei. What she saw was the future, so Deng Chenfei, Dong Lijia, and his sister should all be able to survive. The conversation she heard was short, but it contained a massive amount of information. What did Deng Chenfei see? He mentioned something too dangerous to be approached, and he seemed guilty. His words delivered a message that something bad had happened and it was too late for him to save the situation. Lin Feng agitatedly asked him if they were still alive. They and alive were two key words. Lin Wenwin had no idea who they were. Those people that Lin Feng was worried about might have encountered some kind of life-threatening danger. That was why Lin Feng asked Deng Chenfei so nervously if they were still alive. After watching Lin Wenwin leave while thinking about something seemingly so important, Dong Lijie turned to the other two as he sat down and said, do you have any other questions? Ask all your questions now, because we'll be leaving tonight. Leave? Where? Liu Yuan Jun immediately asked him. Sea City, said Dong Lijia. Liu Yuan Jun and Deng Chenfei glanced at each other. They felt that they needed to go back home and take some time to process what they had learned today. Should they believe Dong Lijia or not? 
What he said didn't sound possible at all. But, what if it were real? What if the apocalypse would really happen? They would certainly regret not believing their friend. You said there'll be a virus infection so I assume it should start from only one region. How come the whole world will suddenly be infected? Deng Chenfei tried to believe it, but he had to figure out exactly why. According to Dong Lijia, the whole world would be occupied by zombies. It would require a certain span of time for the virus to spread, wouldn't it? Oh, the girls said the virus won't be leaked from a lab. Instead, it'll be some kind of gas coming from the underground, mixing with the air, and causing all living creatures on the Earth's surface to mutate. Dong Lijia didn't know what exactly would be happening yet, so he told the exact words that Dong Xin and Lin Wenwin said to his friends. From the underground? What does that mean? Not man-made? Are you saying that it's gonna be a natural disaster? Deng Chenfei looked at him with surprise. That was different from what he thought. Not man-made. What kind of man-made disaster can destroy the whole world within just one night? Dong Lijia waved a hand at him. Luo Yuan Jun looked at Dong Lijia, then at Deng Chenfei. After staying silent for quite a while, he finally started talking again. A natural disaster? How will it happen? Really? Dong Lijia gave him a glare and responded, believe it or not but I've talked a lot. I'm done talking now. Since you don't even believe me, why do you care how it will happen? Liu Yuan Jun looked at him and struggled, but, who would believe something like that? It doesn't sound like anything that can happen for real. He wanted to believe it, but how could he? Some kind of gas coming out from the underground, turning into virus, and then ending the world? What the hell was that? He would believe it if Dong Lijie told him that the world would end in a relatively normal way. If that kind of gas existed underground, the geologists would have discovered it long ago. Then you tell me, how did Dong Xingxin become like this within such a short time? I believe my sister, she wouldn't lie to me, nor make this kind of joke with me. As Liu Yuan Jun still didn't believe him. Dong Liji started losing patience. His tone of speaking grew cold as well. I'll go home and think about it, Deng Chenfei suddenly stood up and said to Dong Liji. He wasn't so sure anymore. He wanted to believe Dong Liji, but still had some questions. Only after he had figured everything out could he make his judgment. After saying that, he walked outside. Seeing Deng Chenfei leave, Liu Yuan Jun looked at Dong Liji with hesitation, then said, I'll go back and think about it too. We still have about two weeks, right? I'll have two strings to my bow, okay? Let's see if what you said will really happen in half a month. He didn't know if he should believe Dong Lijia or not, so he decided to do some preparation as he waited. While leaving Dong Lijia's place, Deng Chenfei was thinking about the same thing as Liu Yuan Jun. However, after spending a night pondering, he decided to believe the former. He started purchasing food gasoline, and replacing his vehicles as quickly as possible. In the meanwhile, he also began to sell out his properties. He was from a super rich family. It took him less time to do those things than it took Dong Lijia, however, the processes were still very complicated. In order to get the money as soon as possible, he had to sell his properties at very low prices. Anyhow, two weeks were still not enough. Liu Yuan Jun didn't have so many works to do because his family business wasn't run by him. Instead, it was all under the management of his father and big brother. He had no way to dip fingers in his family business, so he didn't have any business to sell. He took out his own money. He never worked hard, but he was good at investing in stocks. Hence, he was rich as well. After withdrawing the money from the stock market, he spent some time imagining the post-apocalyptic world, then took out a piece of paper and made a list of food, weapon, vehicles, and some daily supplies. For vehicles, he wrote down off-road cars, trucks. Gasoline was, of course, in his shopping list. For weapons, he would need Deng Chenfei's help. Sadly, he didn't have too much money to spend, and could afford only one helicopter. After making the list, he suddenly thought of what Dong Lijia had done. Damn. No wonder he told us to look for them. I'll definitely do that. Dong family had sold out their business and everything valuable owned by the family. The mansion was probably mortgaged to the bank for a big sum of money too. They had used all the money to buy food, weapon, 
and other supplies. They were fully prepared already. The apocalypse was not a threat to them anymore. Liu Yuan Jun decided that if the apocalypse happened for real, he would go directly to Sea City to find Dong Lijia and his family. Chapter 1244 The Last Day As time went on, half a month soon passed. The day before the apocalypse, Lin Wenwin suddenly had a feeling about the coming future. Xing Xin, I think we're gonna say good goodbye to each other. Lin Wenwin stood on the balcony of Dong Xing Xin's new bedroom, which was located in Sea City, and looked at the setting sun as she talked to herself. Why, do you feel anything? Dong Xingxin's voice was heard from her mind. Recently, Dong Xingxin had been growing more and more energetic, and she was able to stay in her own body for a longer and longer time. She could control her body for days without doing any intense exercises. However, as intense exercises could boost her mind power, she chose to shorten her time of controlling her own body and use the time to exercise, then let Lin Wenwin take over the body and continue exercising. Lin Wenwin hadn't told Dong Xingxin about her own superpowers. However, by sharing the same body with her, Dong Xingxin had felt her powers more or less. One of them was able to travel through the time to the past, while the other one was able to foresee the future. Yeah, I saw it. Tonight, you will fall into unconsciousness again, and your superpower will wake up. I guess the awakening of your superpower will pull some kind of trigger and send me back. I think I can go back to where I came from. Lin Wenwin smiled. Dong Xingxin's face looked chubby and young. When she smiled, a pair of tiny dimples could be seen on her cheeks. However, there was a sharp contrast between that face of hers and her current character. She was quite violent now. She wasn't gentle at all when she practiced combat skills with Dong Lijia, and when she was facing Deng Chenfei and Liu Yuan Jun. As same as her moves. Her personality had grown strong and fierce. She was now a violent little girl. She looked small-sized, like an adorable little animal. One might think that she was a timid little girl, but the truth was not like that at all. Her appearance was too deceitful. My power will awake tonight. This is indeed different from the last time. Last time, my power woke up a few years after the apocalypse, Donk sinks inside and said with a complicated tone. This time? you don't need to do anything. This body will belong to you only when you wake up the next time, said Lin Wenwin. In the three months that she spent with Dong Xing Xin, Lin Wenwin learned that the other was actually a nice girl. She was just forced to be cold and selfish by the apocalypse. Lin Wenwin took a nap after lunch, during which she had a dream about tomorrow morning. As same as last time, the world was weirdly quiet that morning. Usually, Many breakfast places would open about 6 in the morning, and the streets would gradually be crowded by the people going to work or school. But that morning, only a few people could be seen outside. The stores that opened early every day wouldn't open, and the roads were almost empty. Lin Wenwin wouldn't be there to see that morning. She foresaw the next morning, but when she opened her eyes again, she would be back in all being base in the future. In her dream. The cold morning suddenly became blurry. Then, she found herself in a hospital room. She walked to the window and looked outside, seeing some reconstructed buildings. The sky was grey, and the air was pressing. Moreau ever, many familiar vibes could be sensed. Yeah? Don't I need to do anything? So, I won't be doing what I promised you. Dong Xingxin wasn't very happy to hear what Lin Wenwin said. She saw commitment as an important thing. She promised someone something, and she intended to fulfill her word. If her effort was no longer required for the thing that she promised to do, she would feel as if she had failed to keep her word. If she failed to do what she promised, she would keep thinking about that. What does it matter? As long as I can go back to where I came from Lin Wenwin didn't care about it. It matters said Dong Xing Xin, I brought you back here against your own will, and I made you exercise my body. I didn't do anything for you in return. I took advantage of you. I don't like taking advantage of people. Hearing the girl's stubborn speech, Lin Wenwin smiled and said, I don't think so. I borrowed a lot of money from your brother, and I don't intend to pay him back. Also, I've collected so many supplies from the pre-apocalypse world. I think I've gotten more than I expected. She borrowed money from Dong Lijia more than five times during the past few months, 
and she actually felt a little guilty about that. Dong Lijia clearly understood that the money would not be returned, yet he had no choice but to give her the money. Every time, the struggling look on his face amused Lin Wenwin. Do you think Deng Chenfei and Liu Yuan Jun will burn incense and worship you after they see what will happen tomorrow morning? Thinking about tomorrow and how people would react, Lin Wenwin wondered what Deng Chenfei and Liu Yuan Jun would feel when it really happened. They would feel lucky, wouldn't they? At least, they were smart enough to do some preparation. Burn incense and worship me? Why? I'm not dead. Dong Xingxin complained on hearing Lin Wenwin's words. Who said you have to be dead to be worshipped? In the temples, people worship Buddha. Lin Wenwin smiled. I'm not a Buddha, said Dong Xingxin. You now know everything that is going to happen in the coming seven years. You are exactly like Buddha. You can see the future, Lin Wenwin made a joke. The sunlight grew dimmer and dimmer with a rarely seen purple red color. It was so beautiful. Many people raised their heads to look at the stunning sky without knowing what would happen to them in the night. In the room next door, Dong Ligia was also standing on the balcony, looking at the sky. The beautiful scenery couldn't be seen every day. However, the splendid sky didn't ease the depression that was brought to him by the incoming disaster, which he already knew clearly about. The peaceful era was going to end soon. Tomorrow, the whole world would fall into chaos and panic. He and his family had made some arrangements. The ones that they kept by their sides were all selected by Dong Xingxin himself. Those people were kind and reliable. Facing life-threatening situations, they would not do anything immoral. Tonight, everyone stays indoors. Stay in your own rooms and lock the door up. From tomorrow morning on, do not come out, no matter what you hear. If you want to know what's going on out there, Look outside your window. Come to meet the others in the hallway in three days. After it got dark, Dong Ligia gave a strict order to his people. They rented the entire building, replaced the wooden doors and windows with alloy products, and added a double layer anti-thief door to every unit. Normal zombies were probably able to break wooden doors but not the metal ones. Dong Ligia gave everyone food and water that could last three days. Each unit in the building included a small balcony and a bathroom. They lived on the top three floors and left the lower floors empty. The front door leading into the building was locked up, and all entrances of the building were sealed up. Chapter 1245 the first morning of the apocalypse. Dong Ligia and Dong Xingxin chose a relatively remote area in the city to settle down. A few modified off-road cars and three trucks were parked downstairs. Except for the four members of Dong family, no one else knew what they were doing. However, since they were hired by the family, they had no choice but to follow their employer's command. About ten people were caught by Dong Ligia and Mr. Dong, and put under confinement. It had been over a month. At the moment, those people had either calmed down or grown numb about their own situation. Dong Ligia had told them that they could choose to leave after the coming night. So far, those people had no idea why Dong family caught them and locked them up, and then provided them with food and accommodation without asking them to do anything. They were treated well, but their freedom was limited. They tried to resist at first, but no matter what they did, they could not free themselves. Over time, they calmed down and accepted Dong Ligia's explanation. After the coming night, they would be able to make choices anyway. Why do they have to stay with us? Dong Ligia went to Dong Xingxin's room and asked her. After giving Dong Xingxin her body back, Lin Wenwin stayed in Dong Xingxin's weird small space, reading a book. The small space was very unusual. She could feel it, but not put anything in it except for Lin Wenwin. She wasn't able to put other people in or out of that space either. She had no idea about the nature of the small space. Because they'll be helpful to us. Just stop asking me about that. Don't forget to check every entrance, and make sure it's sealed off. Tonight, people might not feel anything. Donk Sinksin waved at him and reminded him. In the coming night, people would fall in deep sleep, and then their bodies would start to change slowly. If one left the door open, their zombies might get into that person's place in the morning before he or she woke up, which would be troublesome, I know. Didn't you say that all the people here won't turn into zombies? No other people live near this building. If anyone here would have a problem, that'd be someone inside this building. 
Dong Lijia nodded. I remember those people and what happened to them the last time. However, I can't guarantee that things will stay exactly the same as the last time, Dong Xingxin shrugged. What if she didn't remember rightly, or, what if there were to be an accident? They needed to be prepared for all possible situations. The sky grew darker and darker. The moon was supposed to be seen that night. It wouldn't be a full moon, but still there would be some light to illuminate the world. But for some reason, the moonlight was very faint, and even that faded at last. Donk sinks and locked the door and window, then turned on the light and lay down on the bed. She didn't sleep, but stared at the ceiling. Click. The light flicked and died. The room instantly fell into darkness. Donk sinks and started to have a weird feeling. She felt as if she were falling. Her eyelids grew heavier and heavier so much so that she could barely keep her eyes open. Here it comes. The people who had fallen asleep already weren't feeling that. Only the ones like Dong Xingxin, who stayed awake to wait for it to happen, had that feeling. Dong Lijia and his parents stayed awake as well. They realized that something was happening when they started feeling as if they were sinking in water. In Dong Xingxin's space, Lin Wenwin was also feeling something different. She felt a pressure from Dong Xingxin's space. She raised her head and shone her flashlight on the wall, only to find the wall coming closer and closer to her while twisting in a strange way. She looked around and then realized that the space was shrinking. All four walls and the ceiling were both coming close to her. Why did the space suddenly start to shrink? Would it crush her? What should she do? Despite those thoughts, Lin Wenwin wasn't really worried. She felt that Dong Xingxin's space was the key for her to go back to the future. Xingxin? Watching the twisting space, Lin Wenwin called Dong Xingxin, yet no response was heard. Dong Xingxin? She called her again. Still, Dong Xingxin didn't reply to her. Lin Wenwin figured that the mutation of Dong Xingxin's body had begun. That was why the small space started changing too. As the walls came closer and closer to her, she felt a stronger and stronger pressure. She closed her eyes and felt as if something was pressing on her chest, disabling her from breathing. When she started feeling suffocated, her head grew heavy. Then, her mind was blurred and she gradually lost consciousness. After Lin Wenwin fell into unconsciousness, the space squeezed her entire body and twisted into a swirl along with her. Next, both Lin Wenwin and the space disappeared. Donk Sinksin, who was also unconscious, didn't know that Lin Wenwin was gone. Everyone in the building was lying quietly in the dark room, with their eyes closed. Of course. The people in the whole world were all in the same state at that moment. Some of them gradually stopped breathing and died. In the darkness, their faces started turning pale and bluish. Their eye areas became dark, and their hair grew dry and lusterless. Their nails started growing long and sharp, and their joints became stiff. Soon, dawn arrived and a dim, grey light spread from the edge of the sky. In a building, a couple were lying together in a bedroom. The man's face was pale, and eyes strangely dark. His black and shiny hair had become like straws. The woman looked the same as usual. She woke up and rolled her eyeballs slightly as she opened her eyes. After spending a few seconds in a daze, she focused her eyes and then turned to look at her husband. Ah, darling. She turned to see her husband's pale face and huge dark circles under his eyes. His lips were blue, and hair were yellow and dry. The woman gave a start, then automatically moved backward as she screamed out loud. Hearing the scream, the man opened his eyes. His eyeballs were purely black, looking terribly creepy. Ah! Chapter 1246 Lin Wenwin returned. When Lin Wenwin opened her eyes again, she found herself lying on a bed. She sat up and looked around. The room looked a little familiar, she felt that she had seen it somewhere before. She turned and scanned the room with her eyes, then realized that it was exactly the room she saw in her dream. So, she was back. With that thought, she quickly got off the bed and ran to the window side barefooted to look outside. The buildings she saw were reconstructed. She sensed some familiar vibes then raised her head to see the grey and pressing sky. All those were familiar and strange to her at the same time. She was back. This time, it wasn't a dream. It was real. While Lin Wenwin was sighing with relief, Lin Hao, 
who was on the other side of the building, suddenly sensed a familiar vibe. He immediately dropped the medical materials in his hands as he sprung up from his chair and ran out of his office, toward Lin Wenwin's room. Something crossed Lin Wenwin's mind after she spent a short while looking outside the window. She closed her eyes to feel her space. After confirming that everything in her space was still there, she relaxed, then turned and walked to the door. The door wasn't locked, so she pulled it open easily. Wenwin. She heard someone call her name from the other side of the hallway. She turned and saw Lin Hao running toward her nervously and excitedly. Lin Hao rushed up to her and pressed both hands on her shoulder as he looked at her from head to toe while asking her nervously, Where have you been? What happened? Are you feeling okay? What about your superpowers? Lin Wenwin was two years older than he was, but he rarely called her sister. Normally. He called her by her name. Seeing the nervous look on Lin Hao's face, Lin Wenwin asked him, How long have I been gone for? About half a month, Lin Hao looked at her and answered the question. He spent some time observing Lin Wenwin. Finding that she seemed healthy, he finally gave a slight sigh of relief. Then, he looked at her in the eyes and said, We thought you were taken away by someone, but they checked your room so many times and then said that no other people had ever been in that room. We searched through the base too, but, not even a trace of yours was found. After that, they made a guess that you were probably in your own space. We couldn't prove that though. Where on earth have you been in the past half a month? Lin Wenwin looked at him and said with a mysterious smile, You may not believe this. Look, while speaking, she took a bag full of catmint out of her space and threw it toward Lin Hao. Lin Hao was waiting for her answer curiously. He saw her throw a bag full of grass out of her space. He was confused first, but when he gave the grass a closer look, he suddenly popped his eyes with surprise. This is surprise, said Lin Wenduin. I foresaw the future when I was over there. I thought this might be important, so I managed to get a lot of it. So. What exactly can Catmint do? Is this an infected Catmint? Really? Lin Hao had already squatted and opened the bag. He picked up a handful of Catmint and carefully observed it. He focused his sensations and surprisingly, he didn't even sense a trace of the virus from the plant. That was the purest Catmint. It's really uninfected. Great. This is amazing. Wendwin, where did you get this? No, I mean, how did you get this? Where did you find them? After repeatedly confirming that the cat mint was really uninfected, Lin Hao stood up and said to her excitedly, he even failed to organize his language. After all, it was almost impossible to find even one uninfected cat mint plant in the post-apocalyptic era, not to mention a whole bag full of them. From before the apocalypse, Lin Wenwin looked at Lin Hao and said with a smile, as she expected, Lin Hao paused with surprise, then looked at her and said with confusion, before the apocalypse. What does that mean? He didn't understand. What did she mean by before the apocalypse? Did she go back seven years ago? How was that possible? Lin Wenwin had foreseen that funny look on his face, so she laughed and said, yeah, before the apocalypse. Where else could so many uninfected plants be found? On hearing that, Lin Hao stayed silent for three minutes, then looked at her and said, is this a joke? Lin Wenwin found the look on his face very interesting. She had hardly seen her smart brother wear that kind of look ever since he grew up. So, she covered her mouth, tittered, then explained, You asked me where have I been, right? I was back seven years ago, before the apocalypse. Lin Hao folded his arms as he looked at her and said, Have you lost your mind? You are not a time traveler. How could you possibly go back to seven years ago? As her brother refused to believe her. Lin Wenwin rolled her eyes, then snorted and said, believe it or not, I didn't lie to you. Where do you think I found these catmint plants? Look, I also have these fresh fruits and vegetables. To prove that she had really traveled through the time to the past, Lin Wenwin showed Lin Hao some of the fresh fruits and vegetables that she had stored in her space. Lin Hao looked at the tomato and cabbage in her left hand and the apple and pear in her right hand. Those fruits and vegetables were all as pure as the catmint on the ground. They did seem uninfected. He still wasn't sure. He took over those fruits and vegetables and carefully felt them with his hands. Those were pure indeed. No complicated energies or virus could be sensed from those fruits and vegetables. Is, is this real? 
Lin Hao looked at Lin Wenwin. He was both confused and shocked. Lin Wenwin was happy to see her little brother being dumbfounded as she nodded and said, It's real. You said I was gone for half a month, but I spent three months there. I relived the three months before the apocalypse. Lin Hao popped his eyes in shock. He looked at her, then at the fruits in his hand, then turned back to her, and then looked at the fruits again. At last, he spent a long time staring at the bag full of catmint on the ground in silence. Isn't it magical? At first, I didn't believe that I've traveled through time to the past either. I felt as if I were in a dream. Also, I landed in someone else's body instead of my own. Lin Wenwin walked to the side of the hallway and leaned against the guardrail as she said with a smile. Then, something else crossed her mind. She instantly furrowed her brows and said, Oh? who in our base has turned purple. Is he poisoned? Who is he? Chapter 1247, Who is that person? Lin Hao stopped short, then looked at her and responded with, How do you know? Can you guys do telepathy? Clearly, she was talking about you Aunt Tanxing. He was the one whose body had turned purple entirely, seemingly poisoned. Who's that person? What does that person have to do with me? This time, Lin Wenwin was the one to be nervous and anxious. That man was definitely very important to her. Except for Lin Feng and Lin Hao, the only one she could think of was. With that thought, she blinked her eyes as she rushed up to Lin Hao and grasped his collar before he could say a word. Is it Tang Xing? Is it him? She widened her eyes, and a complicated look could be detected from her eyes. She had figured out the answer but didn't want to believe it. She couldn't accept it. So she asked Lin Hao, hoping to hear a different answer from him. With regret, Lin Hao nodded and said, Yes, it is Tang Xing. Earlier, he encountered something not good when he went down into the underground cave to search for important clues. He got hurt. Lin Hao's words confirmed Lin Wenwin's guess. For a moment, despair flashed across her mind. She blinked and froze for two seconds. How is he now? He's still alive, right? In the scene that she foresaw in her mind, the man was still alive. She could sense his life force. Lin Hao nodded and said, he's still alive. But we couldn't cure him. What do you mean by you couldn't cure him? Lin Wenwin's expression changed when she heard what Lin Hao said, and she anxiously interrupted her brother. Lin Hao hurriedly comforted her, calm down, calm down, can you just let me finish this? I was trying to tell you about the most important thing. Tell me then. Lin Wenwin couldn't help but grip his collar and shake him. All right, all right. Tang Xing's condition is serious. We couldn't cure him, so our big sister put him in the lake in her space to suppress the harmful energy inside him. The destructive energy inside his body has been spreading, and we couldn't stop it. But now, you brought back uninfected catmint. This is the cure. That's why I told you we couldn't cure him before. But now, he can be cured. Oh. How much catmint have you brought back in total? Don't tell me this is it. While explaining to Lin Wenwin, Lin Hao suddenly thought of something very important, so he looked at her nervously and asked, I tried my best to collect more. I've visited quite a few planting bases, and got about 500 kilograms of fresh catmint plants, as well as many seeds. We can grow them in our big sister's base. Lin Wenwin said the first part with slight frustration, but mentioning the seeds, she sounded expectant. 500 kilograms. That's a lot. And you've also brought back seeds. Great. Seeds are even more important. On hearing Lin Wenwin's words, Lin Hao instantly had his eyes glowing brightly. He was so excited that he even held her hands and looked at her with a huge smile on his face. The catmint will cure Tanxing. It might also help us to deal with those underground creatures out there. Underground creatures? What underground creatures? Those eye less, gorilla-like ones? The first thing popped in Lin Wenwin's head was those underground gorillas. Lin Hao shook his head as he let go of her hands and also conveniently pulled her hands off his collar. After that, he picked up the bag full of catmint and walked out of the room toward his office. In the meantime, he said, not those ones. Let's go to my office. I still have a lot of questions for you. Not those underground gorillas? Are there other underground creatures? How is Tanxing now? What exactly can the catmint do? Can it really save Tanxing? Lin Wenwin cared only about you aren't Tanxing right now. So she followed behind Lin Hao and asked a series of questions. 
He's in Big Sister's space now, but she is not in the base at the moment. We we have to wait until she comes back. When she comes back, we'll start Tanxing's treatment. The catmint juice can paralyze the underground creatures. More and more of them have been coming out of the ground. Even the mutated catmint is harmful to them, so the pure catmint is definitely more effective. Lin Hao explained to her while walking, Wendwin, it's really you. A small figure suddenly showed up before the two. Earlier, Kulilai had sensed Lin Wenwin's vibe from Mount Wu area, so she headed straight to the hospital. Only when she saw the latter standing beside Lin Hao in a hospital gown was she sure that she was right. Yeah, I'm back. I'm sorry that I couldn't come back earlier. You guys must have been so worried about me. Seeing Kulilai look at her with surprise in that pair of big red eyes, Lin Wenwin comforted her smilingly. Wh where have you been, why did you disappear? Kulilai calmed herself down, then finally asked the question that she had been harboring for such a long time. Let's go, I'll tell you guys everything when we sit down in Lin Hao's office, Lin Wenwin smiled at her. Oh, Kulilai followed her toward Lin Hao's office, still gawking at her. As the three of them almost arrived at Lin Hao's office, Lin Kui showed up. He was with Kulilai, actually. However, he really couldn't catch up with Kulilai, who possessed level 7 wind power. That was why he showed up later than she did. With surprise, he looked at Lin Wenwin from head to toe. But soon, the bag full of plants in Lin Hao's hands caught his attention. What's that? On hearing that question, Lin Hao grinned and said, Oh, no way. Are you sensitive to this? Really? You have panther's power, but you're not a real cat. The cat mint can't really make you high. Can it? Lin Wenwin and Kulilai heard what Lin Hao said and immediately looked at Lin Qiu in an indescribable way. The look on Lin Qiu's face grew complicated too. A cat mint. A? Eh? Are you feeling something? Kulilai spent a few seconds thinking after she heard Lin Hao's words, then couldn't help but ask a question out of curiosity. Lin Qiu turned his eyes away awkwardly, then replied to her with, a little bit. Chapter 1248 could that really happen? Being stared at by Lin Wenwin and the other two, Lin Kui tried to stay calm, but he still couldn't help but want to look at the bag full of cat mint. Kulilai sneakily moved closer to Lin Hao and took out a cat mint plant from the bag, then walked to Lin Kui with a wicked smile. Then, she abruptly put the cat mint plant right before his face. As she expected, Lin Kui's eyes were immediately stuck on the plant. As she moved her hand from side to side, he started moving his head to follow her movement. He couldn't control himself at all. Ha! Huh. Seeing the man act like a cat, Lin Wenwin couldn't help but burst into laughter while Lin Hao watched their interaction with great interests. All right, stop. After realizing what was happening, Lin Qiu immediately held Kulilai's hand and stopped her. It's real. He is actually attracted to the plant. This is so interesting. Said Kulilai with excitement as if she had found out something extremely funny. The others kept walking toward Lin Hao's office. While walking, Lin Hao talked to Lin Wenwen about what had been happening on the outside recently, something strange started to happen when you fell into unconsciousness. For some reason, different kinds of weird creatures came out of the ground all over the country. Some creatures that look like both crocodile and lizard emerged from the Lake Tai area, which you visited the last time. There are a few things in common among those creatures. They showed up in big herds, and they all brought out highly harmful gases. They are not only dangerous for living creatures on the Earth's surface, but also for the plants. No wonder I saw that kind of scene in my head. Why did they suddenly cop me out of the ground? Is there a cause? Lin Wenwin furrowed her brows. At that moment, Kulilai looked at her feet and said, Wenwin. Aren't you feeling cold leaving your feet bared? Kulilai was a zombie, so the air temperature could barely affect her. However, she felt chilly watching Lin Wenwin walk on the cold floor with bare feet. Lin Wenwin stopped walking and dropped her head to find that she was wearing no shoes. Oh, I wasn't paying attention to my feet. I can't believe I forgot to wear shoes. While speaking, she took a pair of shoes out of her space and put them on. As a superpower possessor, she was rather healthy and strong, so she barely felt the chill. Were you able to see the things here when you were in the past? Has your second superpower upgraded successfully? As she put on the shoes and walked into the office, 
Lin Hao asked her a question. I think so. I'm no longer feeling a headache or dizziness, and my space power is recovering. I guess my second power has upgraded already. I did see some future scenes Lin Wenwen nodded and said. Where have you been? Weren't you in your space? Kulilai had a problem understanding their conversation. Well, I wasn't in my space. I was in another timeline. Lin Wenwin spent a moment thinking before answering the question. Unlike Lin Hao, who had already heard her explain her experience, the other two both looked at her with confusion. Lin Hao held the bag full of catmint as he sat down behind his desk, then started observing it closely. Hearing what Lin Wenwin said, he raised his head and said, she said she went back to seven years ago. Look at this. She brought this back from seven years ago. Huh? Hearing that, Kulilai and Lin Kui were as shocked and confused as Lin Hao was before. Lin Kui stayed relatively calm while Kulilai was almost gaping. Lin Hao found the looks on their face amusing, but then he figured that he must have looked the same earlier. Yeah, I did go back seven years ago. I didn't do that voluntarily though. Instead, I was accidentally brought to the past by someone else. But, I don't think it was a bad thing. Lin Wenwin sat down by the other side of Lin Hao's desk as she pointed at the bag full of catmint and said. On hearing what to she said, Kulilai glanced at the big cloth bag, then at the catmint plant that was taken from her by Lin Kui. Really? Could that really happen? Is it because your superpower has upgraded? Are you not only able to foresee the future, but also travel to the past? Kulilai thought about it in a very simple way. She believed it had something to do with Lin Wenwin's superpower. It's not like that. Lin Wenwin shook her head and said, Haven't I just told you that I was accidentally brought to the past by someone else? No wonder you suddenly disappeared. Kulilai looked at her with surprise. We spent half a month looking for you, but didn't even find out why you disappeared. Lin Wenwin smiled and said, I couldn't control it. I didn't even know how I went to the past. Where's my sister? Isn't she in the base now? She was so worried about you aunt Anxing. Knowing that he was in Lin Kiao's space, she wanted to bring the catmint to Lin Kiao right now and ask her to save him with it. Kiao Kiao went to Huexia base. Kulilai looked at her and said, Why did she go to Huexia base again? Lin Wenwin was surprised to hear that. She thought her sister left the base to deal with those underground creatures. How come she went to Huexia base again? Because Huexia base called a grand meeting about those underground creatures. I guess they just want to know what other people know about those creatures. Kulilai turned down her lips scornfully. Hearing that, Lin Wenwin roughly guessed out about what was happening. She furrowed her brows and said, I wonder what Trixie Kongjin is going to play this time. Her sister had left for Huexia base. She couldn't go there too, because she might cause an extra problem for her sister by doing that. So, the only thing she could do now was to stay home and wait for her sister to come back. What about Tang? Is he in my brother's place? She thought of Tang. The adults had left, but the kid should be in the base. He was most likely being left in Lin Feng's place by his mother. Lin Hao shook his head and said, Number. His mother brought him to Huexia base. That was unexpected. Soon, Lin Wenwin stopped thinking about that and continued with, When will she come back? Can't Anxing still wait? He'll be fine. Don't worry. Chief will take care of him. Even though her space can't cure him, it can stabilize his condition. He'll be safe as long as he stays in the lake. Lin Hao said to her a little impatiently, She seemed to only care about you aunt Anxing. All right. Since you've brought back so much catmint, you should go to Big Brother now to make some arrangements about the catmint. You need to first send some to Leng Zhu and Tong, then some to Sea City Base. Chapter 1249 Meet with Leng Zhu and Tong. Oh! Lin Wenwin was soon kicked out of the office. Then, she got changed and went to see Lin Feng. But before she left the medical department, she saw Lin Feng come to her hurriedly in their lobby. Wenwin? Lin Feng called her name with disbelief. Brother. Lin Wenwin smiled at him and walked to him. It's really you. You're back. Lin Feng walked up to her with big steps. As same as Lin Hao, he pressed both hands on her shoulders and then looked at her up to down. Only after confirming that she was perfectly fine did he sigh with relief. Great. You look fine. Tell me, where have you been? Do you know how worried we all were? You just disappeared. Let's go to Leng Zhu Antong's place. I'll tell you everything on the way, 
Lin Wenwin held his arm and walked outside. Have you met with Lin Hao? Lin Feng said while being dragging outside. He figured that she wanted to see Leng Xuantong for something important. Of course, this place is run by him after all. We were done talking before I came down here, said Lin Wenwin. The two of them walked out of the building and got into Lin Feng's car before heading toward base number two. Brother, I brought back some uninfected catmint. I heard from Lin Hao that catmint is very important, is it? After sitting down in the car, Lin Wenwin took out a catmint plant and showed it to Lin Feng. Lin Feng stopped short, then fixed his eyes on the plant and said, Where did you get this? While speaking, he took over the plant from Lin Wenwin's hand. He couldn't believe his own eyes. After spending quite a while staring at the green plant, he turned to her with confusion. He felt the vibe of the plant and clearly sensed that it was truly the purest plant, which was never seen in the post-apocalyptic era. It was completely uninfected, as if the apocalypse never happened to it. You may not believe this, but I brought it back from seven years ago, said Lin Wenwin with a grin. Seven years ago? Have you been keeping this since seven years ago? That's not right. If you picked it seven years ago, it should have dried a long time ago. If you grew it recently, it should be mutated. Lin Feng failed to understand her meaning. He thought she accidentally kept the plant seven years ago. However, how could the plant stay so fresh after seven years? That wouldn't be possible unless it was planted in the soil. It's from seven years ago indeed. However, it didn't experience the past seven years. I put it in my space seven years ago and then brought it straight back here. It was picked merely about two months ago. Thankfully, my space was able to keep it fresh. Don't you want to know where have I been during the past half a month? Lin Wenwin explained. It didn't experience the past seven years. It was picked two months ago. What does that mean? Lin Feng looked at the catmint bewilderedly, then continued with, Haven't you been in your own space in a coma in the past half a month? He tended to believe what Lin Hao said earlier. After all, Lin Wenwin was a space possessor, and similar cases had occurred indeed. After failing to find clues about her so many times, he chose to believe that she was in her own space. Number. I am. Um, well. I traveled through time. I went back seven years ago and relived the three months before the apocalypse. I spent three whole months there, until the day the apocalypse came. I came back here that day, Lin Wenwin thought for a moment and said, You travel through time? Lin Feng looked at her expressionlessly. Seeing the look on his face, Lin Wenwin nodded smilingly. Meanwhile Lin Feng stayed expressionless, staring at her. Seeing that, she didn't know what to say. They both looked at each other and stayed silent. The atmosphere in the car suddenly grew weird. Even the driver couldn't help but keep raising his eyes to observe their expressions from the rear view mirror. The driver was utterly confused too. What did he just hear? His boss's sister said that she traveled through time. That was an amazing power. She went to the past and then came back to the future. How unbelievable. After spending about seven seconds looking at Lin Wenwin in the eyes, Lin Feng finally broke the silence, really? Seeing that his brother seemed to fail to maintain his standard serious and calm face, Lin Wenwin wanted to laugh. She didn't laugh for real though, and only nodded blandly as she responded. Yeah? It was real, not a dream. Do you think I could bring this back from a dream? While speaking, she pointed at the plant in Lin Feng's hand. Lin Feng didn't know what to say. By the time they arrived at Leng Xuantong's lab which was located in base number two, Lin Feng still didn't want to believe what Lin Wenwin had said. However, he had to believe her, because the catmint proved her words strongly. You said that you've brought back quite some of it. How much did you bring back? How do you know that we were right in need of this? After getting off the car, Lin Feng finally thought of some important questions to ask. I saw it with my second superpower. I didn't know exactly what was going to happen, but I felt that this could be important. So, I bought as much as I could, Lin Wenwin said. The guards outside the building quickly guided Lin Feng and Lin Wenwin to the lab, then went in to inform Leng Xiu and Tong. How much did you bring back? Lin Feng asked. 500 kilograms and about 80 kilograms of seeds, Lin Wenwin answered the question. You also brought seeds back? Great. You're so smart. Hearing that, Lin Feng turned to look at her excitedly. Lin Wenwin gave a proud grin and said, Sure. I, your sister, have always been smart. At that moment, 
Bauxiogo and Bauxioying walked out, said, Deputy Chief, Director is in the lab now, he said that you two can go straight in, M, let's go. Lin Feng nodded, the group of people walked to the lab together, Lin Feng pointed at the series of test tubes in the lab and said, these are all body parts from the underground creatures that we found, Leng Xuantong has been trying to find out a way to kill these things, Lin Wenwin carefully observed those test tubes, every test tube was marked with the name and nature of the creature, and the time when the experiment was done, A, eh? Wenwin, you're back, this is great, Leng Xuantong, who was bending over to look at something on the experiment table, heard the noises and raised his head. He turned to see Lin Wenwin and greeted her delightedly. She just got back. She brought us some good stuff. With a smile, Lin Feng handed the cat mint to Leng Xuantong carefully, as if he were presenting a treasure. Chapter 1250 Send some to see city base as he expected. Leng Xuantong popped his eyes at the sight of the plant, then rushed up to him and grasped the plant with excitement, this is uninfected, this is uninfected, Leng Xuantong held the plant and carefully felt it with his hand, it was unbelievably pure, where did you get this, do you have more, Leng Xuantong looked at Lin Feng, thrilled, Lin Feng pointed at Lin Wenwin and said, she brought it back, she has 500 kilograms of fresh plants and some uninfected seeds, as long as those seeds are planted in chief's space, we'll never be short of uninfected cat mint again, really, oh, this is amazing, but, Wenwin, where did you find so much of it, Leng Xuantong was overwhelmed with joy at first, but he soon turned to Lin Wenwin questioningly, I'll keep that secret for now, Lin Wenwin said to him with a smile, then took a step backward and waved a hand, following her movement, three large bagfuls of cat mint showed up on the ground before her feet, Leng Xuantong's eyes glowed brightly when he saw the three bagfuls of plants, he even wore a greedy look on his face, like how some people might react when they saw three huge bagfuls of cash before the apocalypse, are these enough for your research, I have more, should I be sending some to see city base? Lin Wenwin first talked to Leng Xuantong, then to Lin Feng, yes, yes, these are all uninfected, these will be more effective than the ones were used before by a hundred times over, it can be diluted before being used for experiments, Leng Xuantong nodded quickly, Lin Feng nodded and said, see city bases produce encampment weapons, we can send them some of these, I think they'll be able to make better weapons with pure catmint, see city base had been working together with all beings base to produce the weapons, all beings base provided catmint and information while see city base was responsible for developing the weapons, 30% of their products would be given to all beings base in return, after leaving the lab, Lin Feng sent Lin Wenwin straight to see city, Jiang Anan, Kin Yu, Sun Lunan, Du Yunfan and Jiang Anan, who were recently trained in the base, formed a squad together with Zombie Number 3, 6, and Jin Yin, to escort Lin Wenwin. Jiang Anan joined the army once she followed Lin Kiao to All Beings base, as a level 4 earth power possessor, she was considered as a capable one, moreover, she was familiar with Sea City base, ever since she experienced what Bei Aixia had done to her, she became even more aloof than before, she cared about her missions only, in the army, she was always alone, training herself, her scarred face was always as cold as ice, her fierce vibe grew slightly soft only when she went home to see her mother, the journey from all beings base to Sea City base was peaceful, apart from a few mutated beasts, no trouble occurred, and no underground creatures were seen either, soon, they arrived at Sea City base safely, the zombies didn't enter the base, but stayed outside and found a place to rest as they waited for Lin Wenwin to come out, meanwhile, Jiang Anan, Kin Yu and the others followed Lin Wenwin, the one who was responsible for the development of catmint weapons was a weapon scientist, he was a grey haired old man who was respected by the entire base, even Xiao Yunlong didn't dare to talk loudly to him, of course, Xiao Yunlong wouldn't take Lin Wenwin and her people into the research base for weapons, Lin Wenwin was an old friend, so he conveniently guided her into the reception room, you look good, I guess Lin Feng and Lin Hao were so worried when you disappeared, they just couldn't find you, 
The first thing Xiao Yunlong did when he saw Lin Wenwin was to observe her. Lin Wenwin only smiled silently in response. Why did Lin Feng send you to deliver materials to us this time? He usually sends someone else for the job. Xiao Yunlong had no idea what Lin Wenwin was delivering. According to Lin Feng's message, it was some important material, because it's safer to keep it in my space. Also, the quantity isn't small, Lin Wenwin looked around, then gave Xiao Yunlong a nice signal. The latter soon understood her meaning. Clearly, it needed to be kept secret. He waved a hand and signaled for his men to leave. Then, Lin Wenwin told Qin Yu and the others to leave too. At last, only Xiao Yunlong, Meng Yue, and herself stayed in the room. Lin Wenwin stood up from the couch and walked to the middle of the room, then took a hundred kilograms of cat mint out of her space and put them on the floor. There is a hundred kilograms of pure cat mint, completely uninfected. I think it'll be very helpful for you guys. She looked at Xiao Yunlong and said. Xiao Yunlong stared at the pile of bags full of cat mint. Hearing Lin Wenwin say that the plants were all uninfected, he looked at Lin Wenwin with disbelief and said, Uninfected? That's impossible. Can you still find uninfected plants now? Lin Wenwin shrugged as she stepped back to the couch and sat down, check them yourself if you don't believe me. Before Xiao Yunlong made a move, Meng Yue, who was sitting by his side, stood up and walked to those bags. She then touched a bag with her fingers and said, she's right, they are all pure, not infected at all. No way. Really? Xiao Yunlong was surprised. Meng Yue was a green power possessor. She said those plants were uninfected, so they were certainly uninfected. She couldn't be wrong. But, how was that possible? The plants that now existed in the world had mutated twice, and uninfected plants had probably died out. How did all beings base people find so much uninfected cat mint? Xiao Yunlong walked to the bags with disbelief and opened one to find some fresh cat mint plants. Indeed. He didn't sense any virus energy from those plants. Meng Yui was stunned too. She looked at Lin Wenwin and asked her, where did you find these? That's a secret. Lin Wenwin smiled and said, we'll be able to keep providing it to you on one condition. I want 10% more of the weapons. Meng Yui and Xiao Yunlong didn't react strongly to her request and only glanced at each other as they fell into thoughts. Lin Wenwin's requirement was reasonable actually. Catmint was the main raw material needed for the weapons, and uninfected catmint could certainly deliver the best effect. If all being base could provide such catmint, giving them 40% of the finished products would be fair. Sea City base wouldn't suffer any loss by taking only 60% of the finished products. After all, Sea City base only needed to provide the metal, 